What? Marshall, the famous plumber. Yeah, Marshall, the plumber. Who? What's he from? Um, Spain, as opposed to Italy. I don't. I don't know. Espana. You should have kept that going as best you could. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. I thought this okay, might have been like a cartoon, like a, a Bob's Burgers or something. Where I was like, oh yeah, you know, Marshall, the um, he's the plumber. Marshall, he's a famous plumber from plumber. the show. Bob the Builder. He'll unstick all your pipes. He'll unplug <laughs> all your pee uh, or or your. It's the, he'll make sure that your flushing is okay. <laughs> and you, they watch the show. I think your kids are like, "I want to be a plumber when I grow up." And you're like, "Okay." With an ass like that, honey, I don't think so. Yeah, you gotta... yeah, they make pretty good money. Yeah, they do, as far as I'm aware. And it's not like they deal with shit constantly. I, I guess that's the trade-off, and that's probably why it will always be a job that makes a lot of money. <laughs> I suppose, because, yeah, I mean, as much as I just said what I said, at the same time, when they're clearing some stuff, they probably see things that are just like, ugh, wrong with you. It's Well, you have things like mold, too. Well, you have to make sure that there's, there's probably different kinds of pipes that you use for different kinds of things. Of course. And you have to make sure that they're tightened. You have to get into all those spaces. There's probably a bit of engineering involved with making sure that everything's, you know, working. It's not like, oh, it, it, here's... It's not like Garbage Man or something like that, or like a, a fry cook at McDonald's. You're just like, you know, when the button goes off, you lift the fries up. You know, there's there's probably some, you know, some science involved with it. Doctor Who recently ended uh, the new season, and um, the, there's there's like a perception of it, okay? So episodes come out, and what you'll have is your standard sort of People who know what the fuck is going on are like, what the hell is this? This makes no sense. This is terrible, blah, 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 blah. And then you'll have people being like, uh, actually, it's all going to make sense at the end. That that has been a repeated sort of uh, notion the entire season. The final episode came out and it answered all of the questions. Um, there was There was a question that was running throughout the whole season where the main companion of the Doctor, when she was... Uh, it, born, she was left at a doorstep by a figure who wore a cloak and pointed directly at the doctor when he came back in time and saw saw her being dropped off. That was very mysterious. Very like, oh, what in the world does that mean? What could that possibly relate to? The whole season is going around trying to push and pull at what that could possibly mean, including wherever she goes, it will just sometimes snow. And we're talking magically, like she could be in a room, uh, or rather at the bottom of the cave, and it'll just start snowing in the cave. And that like, sounds what? like just some weird thing that happens for the sake of it being weird. That doesn't sound like it's ever going to have any sort of payoff or that's reason. That's crazy rags. Because I just hear that, and I know. That's just a goofy, dumb thing that happens. So, the I'm going to get into the villain of this fucking season too, but for now, we'll just say the at the end of the season, they're able to solve this mystery because... Uh, turns out, in the distant future of 20, I think, 46 or something, um, Britain elects a hyper-evil prime minister who wants to find out what everyone's DNA is and, I think, uh, boot anybody who isn't directly from here. Like, you know, I don't even know. It, it's It's so cartoonish and, and the guy has to be defeated by a magical I'm not even going to get into it, it's just too complicated in any case they have uh, her mum's DNA on record as a result of this prime minister in the future so they discover the the, uh, the truth of the matter because they can find her with, with DNA flimery and uh, she is uh, shockingly a normal woman who dropped her baby That's off in order to uh I don't know, there was like a thing of, I guess she was trying to protect the baby from being in a bad family, I think is the implication. And and it's like, wait, but why was she cosmically special then? Why, why was this huge mystery happening? Why was all the magic surrounding it? And why, which I'll get to in a second, was the, the god of death uh, obsessed with her? And uh, they explain it. They say that, well, it's because... The, the nature of things being special is simply us thinking they're special. Uh. So you might be okay. thinking, well, uh, but she's like, she's like objectively special because of the snow magic and the weird pointing at the doctor through time and what's with the spooky cloak. And uh, 
Luckily for us, we've got our answers for those, so... She points at the doctor, not because she was pointing at the doctor, but because she was pointing at a sign behind him, and the sign read Ruby Road, and that the, her pointing at the sign meant that she wanted to name the child Ruby. Is she mute, by any chance? Or can um, she not just shout that at him? I... Did, well, I don't even understand that at all. She doesn't even know the doctor is there, I think. She's just not... She, Imagine yourself dropping off a baby, and then, I guess, you you just ominously point at a sign to show the name of the thing, the, the name of the road being the, the the inspiration for the name of the of the, of the the kid. That That's what the explanation for that is. So it's another your parents aren't special thing, right? That's what I... Well, I mean, there's that, but I just, I'm just blown away already by the fact that you have, you decided to have the explanation for doing the spooky point at a person who came from a time machine has nothing to do with anything other than naming the kid. But, uh, yeah, okay, so that explains that. Um, the, the reason she was wearing a cloak was, uh, uh, uh R Russell T. Davis was asked this, and he said... Uh -huh. Uh, she wore a cloak, which is, is pretty obvious why she wore the cloak. It was not her choosing, but it was time shrouding her. It you're, was what? You're, actually, you're joking. He's you're joking. Time? It, not only did he say uh? it was time shrouding her, he said it's pretty obvious. It's pr you're nah. D come on. How how does like how does time shroud you though? Like you're either <laughs> in a certain place at a certain time, or you're not, right? Or you're in that place, but you're in a big cloak because if somebody uses a super duper futuristic machine by putting a VCR in there that like recreates a place in the past, then when they see you, you'll be in a cloak because that's more dramatic. Um, it hmm. gets worse. <laughs> so so uh, <laughs> we find out that the parents being, you know, average people that have no universal significance despite the fact that everybody all over the world was obsessed with finding out this mystery apparently uh that was inspired by something do you, do you know what it was oh, no okay. can you think of another story where someone's parents turned out to be oh nothing oh special? ray oh uh, oh boy it's quite funny there's a little behind the scenes thing where russell t is like uh, there, there, was, there was the Star Wars trilogy. I, I, I don't remember the names of the films, but I thought it was very good, interesting that Ray's parents turned out to be, you know, no, nobody. And then the next film made it that she was uh, the kid of Palpatine, and I don't like that. But I, I like the other one where it's she's she, parents uh, nobody. <laughs> Why? I, but yeah, <laughs> everyone who says that just does, doesn't understand that race still needs to be explained then. Oh, I find it fucking hilarious that this awful, awful story, uh, the foundation for it was... based on the sequel trilogy's yeah. protagonist? One of those <laughs> forgettable, nothing, worthless characters in the history of fiction that was completely squandered and amounted to ultimately nothing except being a, a poster child for a doll Mary Sue? I, but does it mean though that in like Doctor Who season two of this renewal revival thing though we'll find out that actually she is the granddaughter of Davros? Well, uh, yeah, whoever takes over will um, make it more and more special. But uh, I I find it fucking amazing that this whole thing, th this season long explanation is uh, it, like th there are some people tweeting that it's like it's subversive. It's supposed to make you think it was something, but then it's absolutely nothing. It's surprising how many people try that and expect different results. Wow! Why, why so do, I don't. Where did the idea even come from that that was going to be successful? Obviously, yeah, it's subversive. Oh, there I was watching a, a whole <laughs> series worth of story, expecting something to happen. Oh shit! Nothing happened. That well, subverted my expectation for how stories are supposed to work. True, because it's easy. Because it's easy all you have to do is nothing and then you can be like oh no isn't that it's a, it's a, it's a no it's it's because it's really easy to do you don't have to do any work um i actually thought it took a lot of creative testicles to say time shrouded her in a spooky cloak and that she pointed at the side to name her child these things are just <laughs> you know like wow and that it's oh is by the time way an so agent? like you, time is a guy or yeah of course we know him he, he always fucks around and he has he has decisions to make like shrouding people and stuff um there is an explanation for the snow and that is uh there is no explanation that just happens 
It just is like a. It just snows wherever she goes. Yep, that's um. Or. Yep. Oh um, yeah, that's right. It just started snowing for some reason. Well, it does it in almost every episode with her. She, she just snow follows her around the world. Nobody knew why. Uh, uh, the the fans have just said, well, because when when she was left at the doorstep when she was super young, it was snowing. So. So how come that doesn't happen to the other people who are left on snowy doorsteps? Or does it in this universe? And that hap- that's just a power you get from being abandoned. It's nice to throw a bone to the orphans. Though actually, it's not a superpower. That's just a fucking disability. The villain of the season uh, is actually someone who they uh, brought back from a classic episode called Sutek. He's, um... Sutek? He's a big dog. He's a dog. He well, sits on it, the TARDIS. It, uh, from what I gathered, because I haven't seen the episode, apparently he's like... a dog like dog? Or an, like a dog person guy? He's an alien who came to Earth and uh, tricked, I think, uh, Egyptians into worship him, worshipping him. And he got more and more powerful, and his primary motivation is uh, bringing death to the world. He, uh, he, he likes things being dead. Um okay. Uh, I can't remember if we... Uh, well, I haven't seen the original episode, so I can't really speak to it. In any case, he um, he's defeated by being thrown into the time vortex, I believe. And uh, we find out... Yeah, you in... need to explain that would happens. defeat a lot of people, you I would to, imagine, right? You, you being thrown into the time vortex. No, Fringy, like, pay attention. Like, he's been defeated uh, in, by being thrown in the time vortex by Tom Baker's doctor. First, oh, I see. First time so, around, right. He's back... Uh, and and there, there's there's a whole episode I would argue that is all designed to simply say the 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 well get across to the the audience the notion that he's back. It spends like fucking forty plus minutes just baiting whether or not he's coming back, and he's back. Here he is. And instead of the original design, he is now um, a big CGI jackal, I guess, because uh, that's such a great capturing of like how you fuck everything up. In, in retrospect, because I could totally see the people who made it being like, "Oh, he's so fucking cool to have a big jackal," because they, they have him on the TARDIS all the time. He's like, sort of covering the whole thing. And uh, the doctor's like, "How did this happen?" And he says he's been he jumped onto like the back of the TARDIS ever since he booted him out in the Tom Baker era. And so, like, the fans are already upset because it means that Sutek, the god <laughs> of death, been has just hanging been hanging out the whole time. Yep, been this, there, for been every there. episode since then, he's just been on the TARDIS. Years, Thirty years. And it's like, wow. Okay. I guess yeah. It's been twenty years since New Who started. So how long has it been since Tom Baker? It's, so it's does that been mean that? <laughs> so they're saying that this whole time the Doctor has been bringing death everywhere he goes across space that, and time that is actually like a lie like like wherever you go death follows you and it's like oh, 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 oh. oh but what if death oh, was no. like a dog <laughs> well he's uh <laughs> he's now officially the longest term companion i think <laughs> like, i guess like, anubis <laughs> is a dog like a jackal that's, the, the, that's yeah, obviously the what they're going for. Like the the but like, is the god of death he's the god of mummification yeah. horus is the god of death isn't he no or, osiris or Shit. Okay, wow. I gotta brush up on my Egyptian. No, Set is a different god. So, Set is like the like evil, isn't he? Like just the, sure, the why not? concept of it. If uh, oh, if no. you if you understand all that, which I'm sure you do, you'll understand that uh, it, it, when he when he reveals himself, he's like, "Haha, Doctor, I'm the god of death, and you're fucked now." He uh, he releases the sands of death, and it kills the whole universe. Boom. What? Everything is dead. But why would it got it? But that would be stupid because then there's nothing left to kill. Well, he seems to be relatively happy, though. And uh, I knew you were gonna you were gonna ask about this. So I'm gonna cut you off ahead of time. He's obviously very upset because he didn't find out who Ruby's mother was, uh, the god of death who annihilated the whole universe after spending decades, if not millennia, on the TARDIS. Through the time vortex, he was very. He wanted to know who Ruby's mum was because she had that time shroud. He was like, "Who's who's Ruby's mum?" Why wouldn't he want to know who the dad is? Yeah. Also, if your plan is <laughs> just to kill everyone anyway, then why do you care? I was gonna say, why would you skip to why the fuck would he care about some random girl's mum? I, I don't know why. There's, there's nothing for that. But anyway, he's very obsessed with it to the point where he can't even kill the doctor because if he was to kill the doctor, that means he kills his best chance at finding out who who she is. So he wants the doctor to go find out. 
who, who she is. And so, um, I don't know how better to explain this. I mean, Fr Fringy saw this, he can confirm that I'm not lying. The Doctor, uh, does find out who the mum is and says we could probably weaponize that against Sutek. I, you know, why not? The knowledge of Ruby's mum could be weaponized somewhat. And, uh, so then he gets what he calls an intelligent rope and attaches it to Sutek and then puts the and, other... And, and just, just to help An intelligent out, rope? They, they, like they a magic it, rope? Like a so bat they rope? Call it, they call it that, but it, it looks like a rope you could just get from Bunnings, like for ten bucks. Well, yeah, any like intelligent rope, rope would want to seem maybe like it wasn't, you know, to blend in, perhaps. I No, I think it just looks cheap. Um, I feel like an <laughs> rope would look a little bit more fancy than this rope. So there's that. Uh, 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 they attach one end to Sutek and the other end to the TARDIS, and then they just go just, through the, the well, time no, vortex. Again, again, you need to understand. They put it on this big dog's neck, and then they just kind of pretty casually walk over to the TARDIS, and he's just sort of there like, Grr, uh, what are you doing to me? Uh, and he, he just kind of lets this happen. It's very bizarre that you just see these two people pulling on this rope attached to this giant doggo. And then they just big? Kinda, How like, giant? It, well, like ten feet tall or something, probably ten maybe feet even tall. Than that. He's he's a big he's a big fella. He's on, yeah, sitting he's, on the TARDIS. He's, he's pretty guy. big. Um, and 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 the way that they hook it to the TARDIS is so flimsy as well. It's like it's barely <laughs> yeah, like to this like nudging it would knock yeah. it off sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, it's not hooked on. Imagine onto... getting a ten foot dog to do anything would be very difficult if the dog wasn't on board. Well, but what if he just let you do anything though? Oh. Mm -hmm. And well, obviously, said, he's no, playing a trick on you then, right? No, don't do this. Because if the dog lets you it. do something that easily, it's like, oh, well, this is a trip. Uh, I, have a trip. Enough, I have enough trouble controlling a three-pound poodle. Well, maybe yeah. you need some intelligent rope, because the, the doctor is, like, really happy now, because he's like, I figured it all out. I know how to get everybody alive again. And it is because he, he drags Sutek through the time vortex and starts yelling at him from inside the TARDIS saying that uh, you're the god of death, you're like death incarnate, you're all about death, which means I'm I'm life, I represent life, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring death to death. And you know what happens when you bring death to death? You get life. It, it, it dies. Well, death that's dies? not true. No. <laughs> that doesn't Double even, like, negative. thematically... <laughs> well, minus one plus minus one. Yeah. It, yeah, that's totally how life and death works. And so everyone's alive yeah. again. Yeah, like I, like it seems like all the people who've like ever his, died? His hand, his hand like tears through this like vortex that they're going through, and then it looks like in No Way Home where like the universe is getting torn. But this is and a good thing that somehow. Makes, that just makes everything fine again. Like it, it saves everybody. Wait, so everyone lives forever now? Because uh, you killed death? So it's funny you say that. Did anything we, die? We assume when watching it, oh, he's going to undo all the people who got killed by him. But uh, there are people who come back to life, stated by the Doctor, who were just dead before from other things. Like Mark Twain? Maybe. Uh, it's unclear. Everyone's assuming that, but I imagine the writers aren't fucking crazy enough to just bring are, everyone who ever died back to life. Like Jeffrey Epstein and Hitler? It's just that everybody... <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, get, we'll get all of the singers of the grunge bands from the 90s back. I guess so. That that that's that's something. Okay. So you get Hitler on the one hand, but on the other or... hand, you get grunge bands. That is most of them. Are so dead. that that's a trade off. They yeah, they kind of counter each other, right? Like, they, that's yeah. So it, it all worked out. Um, and then the Doctor uh, drops Sutek into the time vortex as a sort of finisher move, fatality. Even though that's exactly how he defeated him, quote unquote, defeated him the first time, and I. I think everyone is is just sitting there, sort of being like, "Oh, oh I guess he's just going to come back then at some point." Uh, what was what's the idea there? Um, yeah, all we've really got to say is that he he beat him because he had intelligent rope. That's what he called it. So what what's the what's the distinguishing feature between rope and intelligent rope? Just remind me. You can hook it onto um, Gods of Death, I guess. Critical I mean, she thinking needs a, skills. The, the other part of the scene was the whole, like, him doing his whole kind of, like, Dark Knight, oh, I have to break my one rule thing as well. Remember that? Yeah. He can't he, rope he, dogs. So the Doctor doesn't kill people, and he gets really sad because he's going to have to kill Death, 
and by doing that, he, he, all he does is drop him into the time vortex, which is, I, I was under the impression he'd already done that before. Doesn't that just send you to a different time? Well, well he vaporizes. Because that's implied by... He disintegrates, he like but, turns into nothing. But I don't know why... Because I would... If you drop anything into a time vortex, I just am led to believe that it doesn't kill you, it just sends you to another time, right? Well, so what Mola was saying, that was apparently what happened last time, so why would he die this time? I have no but clue. He does. I don't know what... Maybe, maybe he was well, sent to a time when he was dead. Well, the thing is, the reality is, it's he died until the next set of writers don't have any ideas, and then they'll bring him back again, I guess. If they keep making Doctor Who. Well, hey, uh, <laughs> the one other thing that's worth mentioning is the reveal uh, is super clever, because we were talking about, uh, you guys remember me mentioning uh, Harriet Arbinger, right? Uh, Harriet Arbinger. How can I forget? So, uh, Sutak is his name originally, and in this new one they have this lady just keeps popping up called Susan, and she runs uh, Susan Technologies, and then you Susan? Have... Wait, what? Really? And then, and then at one point, the A N, or rather the the S A N of Susan glitches out, as does the knowledges of technologies glitch out. Oh, you're not fucking around! It's actually <laughs> Susan Technologies. I thought that was just you couldn't remember what it was. You were just referring to the no, evil lady. It's that, and, and they glitch together, and it becomes Sue Tech. Uh, what happened to Russell? What I don't know. <laughs> This is the man who wrote Midnight. Yeah, yeah, it glitches. Like, just like most it of the best Harriet Doctor Who episodes I've seen are him. So, it, what happened? Well, and telling me you he got like this is the result of being inspired by TLJ is so fucking funny. Like, That's of course. Funny. Did he say that? Yeah. Did he say that? The 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 primary Why? arc of the whole season is based after TLJ. Man, that's that's he shouldn't have said that. That's <laughs> that was that was silly. Um, that was a silly thing to say. I I I was really because I I didn't watch the whole season. I just caught a few episodes. Um, I was pretty floored by like how comical the sh the show is. It's like such a clown show. Mm -hmm. Like it's a goober clown show. It's just insane. But apparently, this is the one that has what the highest budget that they've ever had for like a Doctor Who show. Wait, are you saying that a really high budget didn't produce? <laughs> A great written TV show. Oh, well, what? I, I just mean, it, I mean, it had like clown qualities that even seemed to be like, like that, like that. It was kind of just this really sort of lame production. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It just has like this quality of being so subpar. Like it's really fascinating, just across the board. Well, see, the Doctor Who fans are eating well. Oh, absolutely. Like the Star well, Wars fans. But, uh, but, but this was, uh, people are generally disappointed with the uh, the finale, right? Yeah, so what I was struck by was that uh, with, without the, throughout the season, a lot of the episodes, the big cope was always just, this will make sense later because he's going to explain this, 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 and it'll recontextualize this, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so, you know, you're thinking to yourself, like, well, maybe, may maybe something will happen that will make it more bearable. Uh, those people were very disappointed today because there was it nothing. Is, man, it, it is crazy how consistently that's proven to be a problem for these bad shows um, yeah. uh, that have been coming out recently, that when the season starts and things don't make sense, um, it can get away with it because people expect, reasonably so, that they will get answers that it will all lead to a satisfactory conclusion that it's all going to make sense in the end. But then when it doesn't, it's like, oh shit, the whole, you know, you look back and the whole thing starts to collapse. This is the reason why... Well, there's no more cope available, is there? Well, it's just, remember when Obi-Wan Kenobi was coming out, people love that shit, and nobody likes it anymore. Well, maybe a handful of people do, but basically nobody likes it anymore. Why is that? The story's complete. There's nothing left to, uh... That's it, you know, you can look back on it from beginning to end and realize just how um, Could be messed up it was. somewhat of a difference between the, the people who were like, there, there is nothing more to this, this is the story, and the people who were like, no, I have hope, it's gonna happen, you're, you're gonna be, you're gonna have egg on your face. <laughs> then... It's almost like worse in this situation, because at least with something like Obi-Wan, if you were paying attention to it, that you could say pretty much from the off, this story it sucks, it's doing the wrong things, the story makes no sense. Whereas with something like Doctor Who and the Acolyte as well, they're both presenting themselves as mysteries. So you mm -hmm. can theoretically find yourself sitting there saying, no, 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 trust me, when all the pieces are in play and once you've got all the evidence, then it will make sense. You're actually stringing people along more by telling them it's a mystery arc. 
than you would be if you were just overtly incompetent like they were with Obi-Wan. Well, That's it true. reminds me of something else that came out semi-recently. Uh, the Fallout oh, show. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was like, wait until you get to the end before judging the big old mystery at the beginning. And it was like, <laughs> sure. It's, uh, turns out it's, I guess, not easy to nail those sorts of things. I don't and know. Basically, episode 8 was Indy chopping up that bridge, basically, while you were just sitting there. Why? <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... Doc Two season done. That's the new rebooted Disney money season, and uh, from what I'm gathering, Disney money season. Many people who are very in favor of Doctor Who generally, anyway, have been very disappointed, and uh, the ratings are catastrophically low. I think they had a record oh, low for uh, one of these ooh, episodes. A record low. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like it's lower than anything even in the Jodie Whittaker era. Um, Damn, and this is the most expensive one. That's uh. What what are the chances of Doctor Who actually like surviving as a series? I well, I well, guess they bought it and they tried to save it with those ratings. I imagine these new ones will be. I don't think it was that they bought it. It was like a licensing deal because it's on. Oh, Disney okay, Club, yeah. At least like internationally. But like it's it's uh it needs to stop. I think um, <laughs> if you can't save it by bringing back one of the most beloved actors to play the Doctor and one of the most beloved showrunners to write, and neither of them are. I mean, you know, bringing in the numbers. Not that I'm surprised at this point, of course. And uh, I, I don't know, like what what's left. You've done everything now. It's 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 time to say well, goodbye. What's what's next is to just write it better. But of course, they can't do that. Freaking, that's not an option. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really embarrassing because I watched the first episode of this new run um, and started doing a video on it, which I sort of ran out of time, so it's sort of sitting there, mostly made but not released. But like, it wasn't just, say, like, bringing Tennant back for the specials, and he's still around, isn't he? So if they do get really desperate, they can bring him back yet again, which they probably will try and do. But the way episode one just played on basically the same exact beats all the way through as, I think it was episode two of RTD's first run, the one with Christopher Eccleston. Mm -hmm. It's like, arrive on spaceship, a uh, conversation about where Doctor comes from, argument with uh, the distraught sidekick who, you know, worries about her mother. Phone your mum, fix your phone, now, now you can do it. It's like, Everything is its basically the same, just so much worse and more shallow. So yeah. it's not even like he's just bringing back popular people. He's kind of redoing stuff he's already done, which worked before. But he seems to have completely forgotten why it worked before and how to make it work now. Because there's no like character involved in these new ones. There's no actual proper conversations. There's no proper relationship dynamic. There's no real conflict or tension. There's no discovery. The Doctor is insufferably cheerful, certainly in that first episode. I don't know how he sort of gets... I, I gather he cries a lot later on. Maybe he becomes more miserable. Well, he but... set a record for crying in the last episode. I think I was up to like nine in terms of nose and tears. Nine separate instances of crying in the final episode. Yeah, yeah I was about to ask separate instances or just he was crying for nine minutes or something like that? <laughs> no, lots of crying. Uh, and it, it's just when you spam it, like... You know, at that point, you just, you just, yeah, that's something he just does. He just, he cries when he's making his tea in the morning. It doesn't really, whatever. Uh, apparently, Russell has said he has a two year plan for Doctor Who, as the two seasons they've already filmed uh, is year one, and year two will be the third that hasn't even been commissioned yet. And he says this that man once you have see... a one episode plan, convenient. <laughs> He says, once you see season three, you'll, you'll be saying to yourself, ah, oh, there you go. It was all heading there. Oh, okay. Sure, man. <laughs> oh, what? They'll they'll find some other goofy, weird character that's a concept that's anthropomorphic, like time or death, and it'll be like, oh yeah, that was me all along, and he, and then that'll be it. I just isn't it funny though that you get a whole season and you're sitting there saying, not only wait, give me another season, I'll fix it. It's give me another two, and then you'll see where I, I, I was going with all of it. <laughs> Yeah, how about uh, no, man? How about someone else, maybe? Why do they keep giving this guy <sighs> the ability to write this TV show? He's uh, well, as I understand got it, the biggest he's pedigree. The he's the favorite yeah. showrunner of he's, Doctor he's Who. He's the one that resurrected oh Doctor God. Who in 2005, but at this point, uh, a lot of people are wondering what the... Well, that was like that was 20 years ago. You know what reminds me of? I have friends who don't get it. They're like, what happened to this man? How is this possible? And it's... It's, he's not the only one. You got people with Dave yeah, Filoni oh. being like, how is this possible? You got people with, obviously, the Ridley Scotts, James Camerons of the world who just, they they just ain't what they used to be. That's just how it goes, I guess. 
with some people. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes people just get worse at what they do, and sometimes <laughs> yeah. people get better as well. Um, some people have they're... to get better. Well, from an incredibly low base, you'd hope they all do, but they always find new ways to be worse. That's like the only imaginative thing about them. But I mean, I guess like with RTD, you you could say that like, some of the germs of of his current problems were present from the beginning because like I re- looked it up a while ago, sort of in service of this this unfinished video. But like, if you go back to some of the the episodes that he wrote during that revival run, like they were quite expressly political, and he was kind of lecturing and hectoring. It was just that it was a much more sort of broad base universalist kind of theme. It was like warmongering politicians at the time of the like Iraq War, and it's like. Kind of like that, and it also works in the context of the universe as well. So, like, he's not obviously preaching at you from within. So, it's a more like universally recognized, popular premise: warmongering, corrupt politicians are evil, and it's set up within the context of the story. So, it never feels like you are being lectured. Whereas, like, my impression from like this new run is, it's very much like it is using this this new story to tell you a specific point. You sitting there in the audience, here is how you should use the correct pronouns to address whatever this fucking new villain happens to be, for example. Which is already way more particular, and less substantiated by the story, and less forgivable. Um, but it is kind of a development of something that he used to do. It's, it's more that he's just become less subtle about it. I guess he cares less about the story that, he's telling you more about. There's something to that, for sure. That he's been given full reign, complete freedom, and that it's, me- it's meant that he hasn't had to try anywhere near as hard. He's just gotten exactly to the point of anything that he particularly thinks or feels at the time. The thing I find fascinating is this three-season thing combined with uh, a lot of people saying they don't really get the Doctor yet, the new one, and the companion. She's already out, and nobody even learned anything about her. It was just, she's she's generic person that sort of has uh, values. <laughs> You're like, yeah, okay, cool. And she's already done. So compared, obviously, to uh, season one, or I guess the the first season of the reboot, where Chris Raggleson's Doctor is considered by many to be one of the best Doctors of all time. Just one season. Uh, I, 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 it's hard to sort of say what the fuck happened. Uh, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's, it, we'll, we'll check in with Doctor Who again in, in, what, like a year's time? We'll see how it's doing, because it'll have its... It's alive. ...next season, but uh, much like... Several other franchises, it feels it needs to be put on ice, needs to just just go away for a long time, figure out what the fuck you're doing. Uh, I just can't believe how much of a money mm-hmm. sink a lot of these things are. It's become kind of crazy. There is precedent for that working for Doctor Who. Yeah, there is. A lot of people think that that could be it, but I, I worry it might become a... Um, you know, it'll be like Simpsons, but it, it won't make any money at all. I assume Simpsons makes money still, you know? <laughs> Does it? It must do. It must it's, do. Right? Otherwise, uh, I yeah, mean, I feel like animation gone for so long. Yeah, you're right. Animation's probably the the minimum spend on a season of animation is much higher oh. than live action. I think um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, I think that the um, cast took a pay cut actually at some point to keep the show going. Well, I guess because I mean, even if they're making half the money, uh, ultimately, if especially if they're like recording from home, I mean, it's merchandise like that, is like, probably a huge part of it for The Simpsons at this point. Is, this, uh, yeah. The merchandise is so valuable. Is that? But correct me if I'm wrong. The the uh, pay for like actors as part of an ongoing TV show it does like just keep going up per year, doesn't it? It tends to keep going Typically, up. Typically, yeah. Up and up. yeah as time if goes it gets on, renewed, you know, but with a show that long, they probably said at some point, like, you guys are gonna have to redo these contracts in a specific way, otherwise, Simpsons is done. We can't. We're paying you more than. You well, know. I, I think it was that they chose. To, I think it was they chose to take less money in order to keep the show going. But yes, typically it's because you know actors get on for a certain amount of time, and then when they have to renegotiate their contracts, then it's like, well, you want to keep the show going, you gotta, you know, up those uh, up those mm-hmm. costs for the actors. It would be weird to to tell people, yeah, we're renewing your season. Um, you got to pay the actors less, though. Well, I mean, the thing is, is you you notice that animated shows retain their costs for a much longer time than you know live action shows tend to do, and it's because it's such a low time investment less, compared yeah. to filming. You just got to go, and, and you, know, you don't age out quite line. as obviously. That's true, but yeah. it's just more so that. A lot of shows will just have actors eventually leave because they don't want to do it anymore. Whereas with an animated show, if you don't have to work that long on a yearly basis to do it, then probably much more of a incentive to keep going because it's like, well, I mean, it's not doesn't take too much out of your uh, out of your day to day. 
Yeah, it's it's not like you have to go to an MCU training camp and get like a Greek you don't god have to shoot body for, for like, it. you know six, seven eight months. You don't have to you know six days a week, like week after week. So then again, I mean, some people, hour days enjoy, too, some people for... have been. You know, and for the record, voices do age uh, less typically, I think. But uh, at this point, it's really hard to listen to Simpsons as someone who is uh, much more familiar with the classic era and jumping. Oh, yeah. Instead of being even... smoothly walking into it from all the seasons to go straight into a new episode from... Still, I only ever rewatch older uh, uh, ones, so... Their voices are very specific it, it to is. me. <laughs> it's, uh... It is surreal, like, because everybody's aged. The the one who's aged the least is is um well cause cause Marge, she's a uh, man. She's sounding old. Like, yeah, in a really episode. sad way, in a way that's like let it let it but even Dan Cap let it let her sit like, down. Man, you're getting older. Harry Do you Shira, think and he you're gonna say let her die? <laughs> Do you think South Just Park's let her die. If that's a part of sitting down, then so be it. Do you, do you think South Park's managed to avoid that problem just by relying on Trey and Matt and like a pitch shifting no, program even, even to do sound, most of the even voices? They sound a little bit older, honestly. Like if you watching the later South Park specials, mm -hmm. even they're starting to sound. And they started really starting young. To sound old. Well, yeah, because they were in their twenties when they started on um on South Park, but they're in their uh, they are in their like late forties at least now, right? Or even their early fifties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, that, they, that would make sense. Yeah, I think still, they were about 10 years older than me or so, or like maybe even like five or six, honestly. So, if they, they, again, they still sounded, they still sound like normal, more or less, but you can tell that they're a little bit older as well. Yeah, the Simpsons cast have got 73, 66, 66, 59, 80 for Harry Shearer, who's a lot yeah. of voices. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it was, um, I can't, who was it in that episode like that we only watched a little characters. bit of and stopped? Was it, was it Skip, who, who, or was it Reverend Lovejoy? And he just, he just sounded. I think it was Lovejoy. Bit. He sounded fucking, yeah. he was dying. Uh, it, it's, it's just sad. <laughs> you feel bad. It is. Well, it's just, you know. It's oh, yeah, we, a comedy, I, we noticed a comedy it with Fry as well. Uh, with, with a few oh, drama yes, episodes. Drama. And, and Farnsworth as well, but mainly Fry. Fry <laughs> yeah, Farnsworth at least, you know. <laughs> are Farnsworth and Fry the same guy, or are those not yeah. both Billy yeah, West? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy yeah. West. Billy West plays uh, Fry, Farnsworth, Zoidberg, um, Zap Brannigan, and many more. Yeah. It, it was Zap Brannigan blew me away because, uh, the, like, the first time I saw him on Futurama, I I'd honestly thought they'd found a way to, like, get a guy that just, like, sounds exactly like Phil Hartman. I was Why like, do you say Futurama? Future, Futurama? Futurama? Uh, but... It does, it does make you want, I'm with Rags on this, like, right, how did you get to a point of saying this? Futurama when everyone says Futurama? It's like, how did you do yeah. that? Because sometimes if I hang around my, my, my blokes from across the pond, or my, my mates, I'll be like, oh, advertisement, aluminium, every once in a while it might just slip out, but I don't know where you got Futurama from. Oh, no one's I mean, about I, I, Futurama. I, I, I mean, my, my, you guys are the I. My brain just sometimes forgets how to say words properly. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. We'll allow it because we're we're uh, tolerant here. We're diverse. Um, uh, we're not. Don't let it get to your head, though. But uh, that, that that that's a good enough intro. It looks like everything's working fine, so we can we can get into the real the meat of of this this particular fabination. It's it's going to be we're taking a little look. See, we're going to have a little discussy of. Uh, of the acolyte, we got some information that's a bit meta, but we're going to look right into after just a little, just a little easy, straightforward discussion about the show itself. I wanted to ask some stuff, go over some stuff. It's going to be real, real chill. And now you in chat, you've seen every EFAP TV episode. I know you have because you've watched them more than basically anything we've ever put out. You guys are ravenous. You you must love the acolyte, and you love listening to us discuss it from a storytelling point of view. You know, that's that's your thing. It's up to you. I, I'm just saying, of all the things you could be interested in, this one's a, a special one. In fact, why don't we just start there? The interest levels for the Acolyte seem to be through the fucking roof, but in the the worst direction you could possibly imagine as a person who makes a TV show. What is going on there? Does anyone have any fucking theories to explain? I think it's... I think it's viscerally cringe. I think it's not like it's couched underneath characters that people really care about. It's not like, oh, Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi are going to have a show off. That's so really cool and everything. I think just on the face of it, the veneer is cringe. It looks cringe. It's just obviously cringe and trying to be like politically correct and everything. 
and we're getting to that point in the 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 woke culture whatever it is and i this stuff's lame but i think it's just an element of what the answer i think is it's this it, people are just like kind of like primed against this and it's so clearly flavored this way that the moment people see it a lot of people see it it's just like oh it's one of those shows I think um, the, isn't the simpler answer that we do, we just hate gay people and women? I thought that was sort of established. Well, yeah, but, that's we a always, given. but we've hated gay people yeah, that and women for to years. All of We're the trying shows. to find out what, yeah, what's what's different this time. Oh, and I'm it might be that they're even more gay. Mind, yeah. It could this be that. Time, it is, it is the gayest Star Wars of all time, apparently. <laughs> you said it, Rags, that um, that without the, I guess the gloss the of uh other characters that people actually have some amount of you know care for. This is like entirely, it's kind of like entirely has to stand on its own in a sense without being able to rely on the nostalgia that just gets invoked by hey look it's Obi Wan Kenobi oh look it's Boba Fett even though that didn't really help Boba Fett or even oddly enough Mando because people still hold a better view of the first season than the ones that came after. Better than they should, yeah. Definitely. Well, that's the thing is that the acolyte. It's not like it's these shows have all been really shit. Yeah. Um, acolyte's really no different. It has a lot of the same problems as uh the other shows, but this time it's not working. And I wonder how much of it is just because well, it has no leverage. It's an entirely new era with no characters that you recognize. Well, except for Kiati Mundi, no <laughs> characters that you recognize. <laughs> it has to stand on its own, and it can't do it. It just cannot do it. They don't have screen. anything that um I th we we see this a lot here in the sense that because I've been thinking about it a little bit is um if we kind of look at the Jedi in this show this is a new era of the Jedi that we've never really seen before it's a hundred or so years before the Phantom Menace we haven't really seen this this era of Star Wars and the Jedi so this is kind of their thing it's their new invention of sorts it's their new this is ours this is all us you know baby we're we're breaking away from the mold no more cameos um they don't have i mean this is sort of like the uh, i guess it's like an example of when they actually make something their own they don't have anything you know they they so don't they, they don't have any leverage behind. there yeah well, there's, there's their story and their they have to rely on themselves and on their own merits certainly an aspect too of uh you failed us so many times in a row that it's, it is surely is only a matter of time before people start using the pattern recognition that's built into all of us somewhat to be like, man, this is going to be bad. And then the first few episodes are already matching it completely. Uh, episode three being a yeah. you know startling example yeah. that set the world on fire for its horribleness. Which is the goodwill like... towards Disney. Like it's, I wouldn't say I'd say it's beyond just Disney Star Wars in general because it's the same problem that Marvel has now. Their shows just have a really bad reputation. It's funny that people still like, well, you know, the films, they have a better one. It's like, well, they shouldn't, but they do for whatever reason. But the the TV shows in particular have a really bad reputation. It all seems to be under the same umbrella. It's like the same general problem that these shows all seem to have. Like, they have a different formula that leads them astray, but there are similarities in the formula. I think the similarities are the interesting point, because like, the Acolyte sort of is like a tribute act for the worst aspects of every previous Star Wars show. So like all the other ones have done one particular thing incredibly badly, but they've usually had one particular thing that might elevate them or at least save them or, or may, maybe take some of the sting off when people watch them. Like Mando, I, I, they're always pretty contrived and silly, but you know it has some action sequences and it's got some pretty cool design work and some of the, the VFX looks pretty cool. So like it's not a terrible looking show at all times. Um, the Obi Wan show you know, has recognizable characters in it. Yes, we were basically murdering them all, but you know they're they're there. That's nice. What's you get new, to see yeah. Vader again. Um, Rest but the acolyte taller. has got none of it. The acolyte is it's got all of the terrible pointlessness of Boba Fett, all of the terrible writing of Mando, all of the sort of the stupid character assassination stuff of Obi Wan, and it's just it goes on and on and on, and it it and it looks so bad. It's so obviously cringy when you see those weird sort of catawalling witches screaming into the night that there's nothing about it which can ever take off the uh sort of the sheen of incompetence it is a, a it is like that multi-pronged element of it has no strengths and it has like all of the weaknesses no yeah. likable characters bad dialogue just bad plots all around everyone's an idiot i have nothing to root for i have nobody to there's there's no point for me to latch on to there's no thing 
There's no like, well, at least there's this character. At least there's this one plot line. At least there's this interesting premise. It has nothing going for it. There's well, nothing for me to latch on to. Within the span of the first two episodes, the show kind of um, gives up on essentially its pitch yeah. of like, oh, it's a mystery. Jedi are getting killed. Who's They got to investigate to find out who it is. Within the first episode, you know exactly who it is. You, you basically know why they're doing it. And you know that they're twins. And, and and from that point on, there is no mystery. You get the POV of the antagonist. Well, well, yeah, like, isn't oh, it? I guess the mystery okay. now is who Smilo Ren is. I guess. Is it, but the thing is, of the answers we have, which one of them provides anything for the story, even if it's true? Like, it, it could be Kiati Mundi. What would it mean for us? We'd be like, okay. I don't know. I guess right. he's a <laughs> psycho killer. Just... Like, sure, I guess. You know, I like mean, whatever. to me, it would mean the top of his head compresses pretty well. Hell yeah. It's a power that could be something that that species can power. do to survive and I mean, to hide under lower objects. <laughs> <laughs> if he does that, it lowers his intelligence temporarily. So that's why he doesn't want to do it for too long. But uh, it makes him angrier, though. That's why it works with the Sith sort of stuff. But yeah, I guess, well, you know, out of the options being uh, the lady with the horns, I've seen it entertained. It could be still the the Anasea lady too. It, it could be, it could be the 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 green lady. It could, it could even be here. And at this point, it just reminds me of what we were talking about with Doctor Who, where it's. Uh, I guess that'll keep the fans busy, but once it's answered, that's it. Well, I'm only interested in it from a purely meta perspective of like, oh, what do they think is worthy of writing? Well, you know? it, yeah, on, on, <laughs> on that note, it is something I want to know from a perspective of I can now understand what they were writing for the whole season once I get that information, as well as the information of the last four episodes. I can see a full picture of what the people in charge of this thought they were doing uh, in full as opposed to just in episode. Because uh, something we've talked about a couple of times, and I just think it's so applicable, uh, episode one is probably the only one that actually uh, somewhat makes it through this. The idea that with episodes you tell a story that's uh, you know complete, and then there's a season story happening at the same time. The first one, you get so many answers to arcs that have just started that it almost it's like it's like a movie that's been crammed down, and then obviously is very terrible. There's potential. We, we've talked about uh, on previous streams. The it's funny how much uh, apparently Frozen and Arcane. You know, be, be being brought up in relation to this just because of the fact that there's two sisters. It's like, okay, I don't even. You know what I mean? There's like such Kill a tenuous Bill. connection. <laughs> yeah, and Kill Bill. Kill Bill because she keeps. She flat out says, "You and I have unfinished business to her targets." I lost my shit. Ugh. I was like, "I you, you didn't just you didn't just actually do." Beatrix line, did you? Well, some of these things what are just you? overtly stated in interviews. Like, yes, yeah, so these were inspirations. You're like, it doesn't help when you say that at all. Uh, they, they always do it. Do you remember the amount of times people were saying about their movies for a few years after 2019, this is Joker plus something? Or this is, you know... Uh, yeah. uh, I'm trying to remember of a specific example, but they, they have combinations or they oh, just reference um, it. Cruella. The Cruella de <sighs> one. That was the... It's Joker meets, um, like, Devil Wears Prada. Devil Wears Prada, yeah. Absolutely fucking nuts, and and so the, the 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 failures are. It would actually be fun to see all of the different things they've plucked from the failures of other shows, because of course Smiler Ren evokes. Um, fuck, what was his name? The gas one. Uh, the Kylo Ren. Ren? Kylo Ren? <laughs> not <laughs> not even Kylo Ren. Uh, uh, the the monsters from Attack the Block. The 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 lad who turned out to be a fart in Ahsoka. It feels like we're going to be getting the exact same thing, except it'll just. You're going to literally have time. to be more specific. Is you there more the than one fart? The f oh, I thought you mean, oh, I thought you didn't mean literal Ahsoka. fart. I mean, mean like a fart of a character. It's no, Maroc. yeah, literal fart. That was the guy. <laughs> Maroc, yeah. The one that uh, I still remember everyone being like, oh boy, who's he going to be? It's that such was a... so funny. Like weeks of people saying, oh my God, is, is it going to be the guy from Force Unleashed? Is, is it going to yes, be, Dr. is it even going to be Ezra? Is it going to be this person? Is it going to be this person? It's like, nope, no, it's just green gas. And then the Which director coming out and saying, yeah, even I don't know what he was. Dave Filoni didn't tell me. Oh. I was like, oh, fantastic. Well, okay. Yeah, because it was magic made by... I, I remember with some people being like, that was satisfying. He was like a spell made by the witches. Like, yeah, that's satisfying. Because I was just thinking that's, to myself... Yeah, what you tell yourself. Those reveals for Morocco would at least... I could totally buy... Like, if it were Ezra, it means everything to people who've seen loads of Ezra content throughout other TV shows, and he's back and he's working for the bad guys. Well, how did that happen? You know, this story potential... 
Uh, obviously, Starkiller evokes a shit ton for fans of Force Unleashed 1 and 2, as well as some other third-party stuff. There's potential. But I was thinking, with the Acolyte, whoever Smilo turns out to be, we already know the motivation. It doesn't matter. That's what I mean. It's, it's, what does it really do? What, what, what happens? Nothing, really. And they didn't even take the, um, take the route of setting... Because there's a couple sort of... Well, let, let's take um, uh, Ahaning in Venice sort of as a, as a very general blueprint kind of guide, because A Haunting of Venice is very good, and that's kind of like, that. that's like a murder mystery. I don't say it's like a murder mystery, it is. Yeah, it's a, but, um, it's a Christmas, the, flat out. But you, you kind of have this very standard, okay, inciting thing gets our character to go to a place. Oh no, a bad, a calamity has occurred. We have to find out who did the thing. And we have our cast of characters, and then we have our investigation, and then at the end, we find out who it is. Very standard, nothing at all special about that kind of formula, but the execution's really good. No one will care if it's not breaking the proverbial mold mm. because it's executed well, and it's good to see that kind of a formula done well. But if you want to give us the premise of... I don't even know why I'm even bothering to act like this show is some sort of a murder mystery. It's just, I mean, all it is is who when, when they take off, when Smiler and takes off his or their mask, who, who, who is it going to be? Like, I don't know. It'll be some shitty character I don't care about because of a well, shitty so again, reason that was probably stupid. So what's the point? If we what's go the with, point in caring? It's the horned lady. It'd be like, well, yeah, she was mad at the Jedi. All right. So what if yeah. it's what if it's the potion seller man? It's like, yeah, I guess he was mad at the Jedi. <laughs> He just uh, yeah. seemed like he was dropping so many hints that it was him that he couldn't possibly not be a red herring. Well, yeah, and then if it turns out to be Green Lady from the Jedi, you'd just be like, I guess she was evil. That's that's the response to all of these. What do we do with that information? It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It's just like, well... I, I think to me it would say, I guess Leslie Hedlund had some pillow talk that said, you gotta make me a Sith Lord. I could totally this, see that, it, though. Being like, I want to be a fucking Sith. This is gonna be so cool. All the red lightsaber Well, if and it's anybody... If it's anybody in the Jedi organization who turns out to be Smilo Ren, then we're going to have to start asking questions about how come this is the way that you plan to go about doing your revenge. That is the you most interesting thing chick. that will happen as a result of the reveal is us looking back and being like, wait, but why did they do this, 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 you... this, this, this? Yeah, so you went back to the place, or you, you found this girl that everyone else thought was dead, but isn't, and she just happens to be Force-sensitive and connected to this, and then you spend all the time and effort to train that person secretly just in order for them to go and murder two of the people, but she only murders one, the second one drinks poison um, and kills himself, and then the third <laughs> one, well, I'm not even going to let her do that. I'm going to go to the oh my place gosh. myself and kill the Wookiee. I was going to say. And so, what, what's the point? What's the plan here? What are you doing? They've actually progressively gotten exists, worse though. each death, right? First one being this really bad fight that gives us implications of both characters involved that seem to be opposite of what the showrunner is going for. Second one kills himself. Third one dies off screen. This is a show where, where systematically several Jedi Masters are being slaughtered, and they made it this shit. Because I, I just I feel like someone handed that to you. Weird. You have to make a TV show about Jedi Masters being hunted down and killed in their era where they are at their strongest. That's just like, hell fucking yes. I just don't... Well, yeah, and then you have like a Columbo-esque character, you know, going around and examining mm -hmm. the crime scenes and kind of piecing things together and, and, and have... You know, then you can have really tense interrogations, right? Um, and, and it'd be interesting if it wasn't a Force user as well, right? Like, the idea that the detective who doesn't have any ability to read people's minds is actually the He's best at asking people's motivations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My name is Obi-Wan Colombo, and I'm here yeah, to investigate exactly. your crime. <laughs> like, that Just could be quite fun. Day. I'd like to see that, but like, but it's... it's um. I think okay, this is sort of why I'm leaning in favor of the the, the Kylo Ren being Timu Ezra Miller because like it's the most dramatically inert of the options available to them, which <laughs> will also create the most problems based on what they've already set up. Because the only reason he's still at large is because even though he made yeah. the poison that was directly implicated in the death of a Jedi Master, apparently that's only worthy of a caution, and they just let him go. In which case, maximum stupidity on the part of the Jedi, plus maximum amount of missed opportunity in not having it be one of, say, the Mothers, for example, or literally anyone else with a bigger motive. That probably means it's going to be him, because it's the worst decision they could make, short of just it being a random gun gun, obviously. I feel like that's an upgrade. 
uh, is, is double points if it were Jar Jar as well. He's just he's just here. Bring him in. <laughs> why not? Oh God, could that be the thing they do to actually make me like this show? <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. But uh, yeah, so because I was going to say the the nature of the story is being told right. Episode one and two. Uh, it's already, you know, degrading significantly. And then three, and uh, I think it was Ryan who mentioned this, like, anything that you're paying attention to in one and two will give you all the information they give us in three. It'll be the second flashback episode that will actually give us new information. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of three you could have figured out anyway. There was a big fire, the Jedi are obviously being blamed for it by May. May and Osha both thought that both of them were dead as a result of the event that happened there. Obviously, the new stuff was like, this is a thread, and we we made babies uh, to save our culture that was definitely not going to fucking survive anyway, because <laughs> they're making babies a little too slow. It's just not, uh, not going to work out. It takes a lot of time and effort in multiple generations to make one pure uh, force baby that isn't tainted by the presence of a male. Well, they, right. they, one of them went crazy anyway and tried to burn the other one down, though that, that'll probably have more context as well. Point being, three was kind of just... Uh, I'm trying to look for the... I don't want to use the word filler. I, I kind of talked about this in our latest EFAP TV. I use filler to describe good episodes of TV that don't progress the major plot. So we need a better word. Some, like, yeah, because filler is very neutral. Um, I think some people unfairly give it a negative connotation, but I think filler is treading? very neutral. Like, like treading water? No, like Dude. sinking but slowly. <laughs> <laughs> treading water poorly. Treading is like we're doing okay. It's like keeping pace. Well, you're also not going anywhere. I, I guess unless the tide's carrying you. Um, bottle episodes is the word you're looking for? No, I like bottle episodes a lot. No, like bottle me. episodes can be good. Uh, yeah, we're talking about a, a, a notion of it's essentially nothing. An episode nothing. that makes you want to drink? A bottle episode? <laughs> I mean, that would somewhat well, apply. I mean, a, a bottle episode is more about the amount of locations and um, like different different elements in the episode more so than it having nothing to do with the plot. I mean, because what about like the funeral episode of Hill House? Like, it mostly takes place in the funeral home, but a lot of stuff goes down. That's, like, one of the best episodes in history of TV. Anyway. Yes, it the, is. The premise of this whole fucking show, I'm assuming if you want, you want to add to this, go ahead. But from my perspective, it is, uh, before we get the next four episodes, I wanted to, to, to tell a story of, like, the two sisters who've broken apart and are coming back together gradually as a result of their family having been destroyed by probably misunderstandings gone completely wrong little actors like criticism of the Jedi overall and set groundwork to better bolster, this is from the perspective of the writers, I'd assume, uh, the prequels and the destruction of the Jedi, right? We're sewing in their flaws in an earlier era to, sh to show how they'll end up falling apart. Would that be what the goal of this fucking show is? It might Maybe. be another super... <sighs> hmm... It's tough to say, because they can pull it out of their ass at any time. Yeah. I mean, everyone's, you know, there's always a, there's always good in someone, even if they're really bad. Uh, I mean, you can always love your sister, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you go. I don't know. Like I said, it's like with May's motivations changing, like on a dime. At, it's basically at random. Like, fuck it, you know? Well, they, they just make it up. Trying to portray uh, a system that's at the height of its power, but with flaws, um, and, and how it's going to fall apart, and in this case, it being the Republic slash the Jedi, it's going to take someone with at least some brain power, because... There needs to be a difference between them acting with uh, flaws in their logic slash uh, bureaucracy to overcome or corruption versus your terrible writing. And and it's actually difficult to sort of tell the difference with a lot of this. Like, uh, if you had a list of the problems with the Jedi right now, a lot of it, if you presented it to the writer of the show, they, they'd be confused. Like, no, that that's... What do you mean? Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, how stupid they were with every single aspect of the investigation. That... That what they did was a good idea when they, uh, you know, didn't mind read Milo Ren, which in retrospect is going to get so much worse if he's actually the big bad guy, because either mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to, because he would stop them, and then that would make them go, "What the fuck?" 
or they could, and they just read straight up from him that he's super evil red lightsaber man. They're just like, oh. So uh, I guess it kind of makes me think that that might be the reason why such a such a um, I guess a big deal is being made about canon doesn't have to be something we need to adhere to because in order to write something as as complex as hey here are the failings in the Jedi system a hundred years before the prequels and you'll through this you'll see the seeds of what eventually led to the rise of Palpatine but to do that you need to know you need to know what the Jedi were doing and how they operate and how they would realistically um, try to investigate a murder and not just be like, okay, well, we're going to make them dumb and that'll be why they're bad. It's like, well, yeah, but that's not really, that's not really what everyone knows about the Jedi though. Things that like 80% the of the dumb stuff is not intended. I don't think. Yeah. And like the more stupid you make them here, obviously the more stupid they're going to seem in the prequels. But like to my mind as well, the longer term implication is the, you do also have to understand the position the Jedi are supposed to be in by the time of the Phantom Menace in order that you don't accidentally undermine it by preempting it. So like i my read of the Phantom Menace has always been like, this is the Jedi at sort of the height of their arrogance. And so their sort of overconfidence in their own position of power and authority. But this show is going around portraying them as actually being incredibly fearful of political maneuvering which is exactly what they are not sufficiently fearful of in the prequels, because if they were, they'd have seen Palpatine coming. So they, they, they have to sort of find a way throughout this show, because they keep talking about, if, if this gets out, our political enemies will use it against us, there'll be a scandal, we can't tell the Senate, right, yeah. all the rest of that. You have to get them to a position at the end of this show where they think they've won some big victory that actually entrenches their position and makes them more confident in order to get up to the point of the Phantom Menace to then tear them down again. But what it seems to be doing is tearing them down before the Phantom Menace, which will then make it very implausible if you try and read these as one consistent narrative, that the Jedi are not more cynical and weary and of politi wary of politics even uh, in the prequels when we finally get there. I don't think they understand anything about the world they're building here. Well, we get basically nothing on the Jedi, other than they're stupid, but that's everyone, because everyone's an idiot in this exactly. show. Exactly. So gets the, Je confusing. the Jedi aren't... Yeah, the Jedi aren't special in that regard. They're just as stupid as everyone else in the show. But we don't learn anything about the Jedi, period. Really, I mean, they, they show they, they, they have they, obligatory fucking training scenes where they just go. The force is like the wind or the ocean, or the, they always just say a thing like that. Oh yeah, the force is this feeling, and learn to harness it. But we never we. I want to get a fucking actual force training session. What do you do? How come they don't have like here two curtains? One of the curtains has a living, like a little animal behind it. You can sense the, the life, or the, the force in them, and you have to learn how to distinguish the two. And when you get really good at guessing, like that's really, really basic, like just learning to sense forces and just little things like that, stuff that you would well, expect imagine to see in training sequences. All the options we have for learning about someone who teaches how to use the force, but not from this perspective that we know, or rather yes. one that's more um, nuts and bolts. One that actually just does away with the philosophy and says, yeah, so it's like telekinesis, you can move stuff with your mind, it's pretty fucking cool. Like, just someone who's very by the numbers like that, like a Han Solo that does believe in the Force. And... We sort of had that opportunity, that was one of the most frustrating things, of many frustrating things about Episode 3, is that, you know, you introduce this new group of witches, these girls are, what, 10-ish years old? Um, no, it must be more than that. Well, anyway, they're old enough to be sort of beyond introductory lessons to what the witches think about the thread, which basically is the Force. Um, if you'd actually trusted the audience to sort of drop them in the middle of a, a more advanced training session than this is what we think, and it's basically the force, it's just that we've swapped a couple of verbs and a couple of nouns, otherwise it's the same. This is how we use it, to like float blue onions around the screen. But we, we've <laughs> seen this over and over again. Yeah. This was your chance to actually give us an alternate perspective, which would then have the effect of teaching us more about what the Jedi believe and some people's impressions of what their, you know, the flaws in their philosophy are. But the show thinks we're as stupid as its writers are, so it didn't do that. It does make me wonder if uh, it's a matter of caring about things that are like a, a part of the package as opposed to uh, things that you should actually be putting in with some care. If she cared solely about Osher and May's history and seeing where that goes, uh, being Leslie Heaven right now, then the, these scenes do come across the way they probably would by someone who's like, I gotta have the Jedi scenes. I gotta, I gotta have them in where they just say, yeah, it's it, you gotta think about it. And, and what does it make you feel like? What, what were the kids say? One of them said fire consuming everything. It was, it, at this point, I can only assume... All right, lesson's be, over. That's supposed to be foreshadowing, Someone I guess. I didn't even really address that, mm -hmm. either. Like, no. no you, I you, you, we you, might have another flashback, but you never know. It's kind of moved on. 
Well, and that's the thing, it's, it's, it's not dealt with properly, it's just sort of there. It's all floaty nonsense. It's like, um... We, rely on vague like we abstract... never get the... We never they're get the Harry all, Potter class. They're all Yoda copycats. None of them Pretty can much. do it as well as he can. Or did, I should say. None of them have their own developed perspective on the foot. You know, even down to whether or not they believe that the Force is an agent that gives advice that should be followed, or whether it is indifferent to the goings-on in the universe. And whether or not there anybody is more or less correct in their interpretation. And yeah, like you said, people who have a different approach to actually interacting with it, but they never do it. It's always the same vague abstractions that they kind of use so that they don't have to think about it too much. But like, yeah. why not embrace the challenge of presenting a new perspective on the force that's developed? Help us as an audience like sort of come to understand what is a central core element of what it is to be a Jedi, which is the understanding of the Force and what it is and what that might mean. There's no Harry Potter class where we have to think light thoughts or whatever. There is none of that. Well, nothing to denote a different era either. Uh, this, all, this all feels just like a really hollow copy of things I've seen before. It doesn't, mm. doesn't feel new, it doesn't feel interesting in any way, shape, or form. Um... And yeah, just all the all the minor delays, all the awkward places we send people to just to have the things that we're actually waiting for, the big conflicts between significant powers in the universe happen either off screen or really quickly. To the point where we're all wondering, what was the point of this? For the people who love this. Yeah, because we is never learn anything in these conversations. No, the they've None got of that these same problem are interesting. where the human beings don't fucking talk to each other like human beings. It's a huge problem a lot of these shows have. Hard to watch. Hard to listen to. No one's saying things that a, a creative, sort of active thinker might say or do. And then just jumps, right? Like like uh, episode four beginning to, it just establishes straight away, Osher and Jackie are friends now. It's like, <laughs> since fucking when? What, 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 what is this? And it's just like, shut up. It, oh, is that's the what implication it is not that they were Padawans together? No, they, they, I, I don't. I don't think so at all. It, it no, seems like they just know each other. Doesn't and... know who she is. In, in oh. episode one, Jackie doesn't know who Osha is because, like, oh, well, she does, and then she forgets the that she does. Because, like, in episode fucked. one, she walks in to see Sol looking at the hologram, and she says, "Why do you look at the hologram of your old Padawan?" And then on the ship later, she's like, "Huh, I don't know anything about whoever this person is. Can you tell me about her?" But like, you recognized her like five minutes ago. You knew anyway. No, the implication is no. They they've never met before. Huh. Well, and. uh... Not only am I absolutely baffled at the notion that they're friends, but I apparently should have skipped further than that, being that uh, th th their potential uh, relationship is going to happen or something. There's, um, th the way that it's played is that there's a crush occurring, which is just... Oh, barely yeah, even when you're kind of getting that. Lesbians in Star Wars, I'm out. Well, it, it's, it's just so strange. Like, <laughs> do you not know how this works? You can't they just... They even spoke to each other in episode two. Did they only... I think they only spoke to each other once, right? The fact that we have to ask that question. Yeah. Well, and it's not because, um, oh, she's a Jedi and they're not supposed to have, like, you know, relationships like that. So she, she might be interested in Osha because Osha's great, but she's trying to be coy a bit, maybe, and not you know, like, be a bad Jedi, so she has to resist it and pull away. None of that. That could be really interesting. There's a really potentially strong character story in there, but because it's a character story, they won't do it. It's maddening. It's like, <laughs> you, you can draw, like, these parallels all over the place. You know, there's the X-Men. Is it X2, where they have, like, the coming out scene, but it sort of works diegetically because you've got, like, mutants being oppressed as an allegory for various marginalized peoples in the real world. And you can tell a story like that in this situation. Young female Jedi Padawan who's, you know, told to shun all attachments, nevertheless meets Jedi, for, or meets a person who isn't a Jedi, who is incredibly kind of, you know, alluring and charismatic, and she has this tension between wanting to be dutiful, but also, you know, wanting to grow as a person and explore another side of herself and all the rest of that. Like, that's character stuff that I'd actually really like to see in a story. And we, none of it. No, they've just decided. And then you have to read a fucking interview to figure out what it's supposed to be about. Well, yeah, uh, uh, you know, I, I reference Arcane all day long, but having uh, Vi and Caitlin from two opposite ends of the world they live in, uh, both pretty specific on the goal they have that they share, and then they clash on operation and understanding of the world they're in all the time until they both save each other's lives in action-packed, crazy scenes. This is, I think, arguably one of the most obvious blueprints ever for how relationships sort of develop. As someone said in chat, well, you know, crushes can happen for any reason in real life. It's like, well, yeah, but this is what we call a story. 
They're trying to give us uh, relationships, characters. They bounce off. They connect over different things. They even start to play at it in episode four when you have them talking about the nature of death for about five seconds. These, these, you know, you're supposed to have conversations, uh, values that clash, cultures that clash, histories that they both want to discover about each other. I had no idea that that was something they were even interested in doing, uh, but apparently that's a thing. You know what I mean? Like to skip... I don't really know what they are interested in doing in general. Um, that's part of the problem. The thematics well. of this show are very floaty, and I feel like they could just. I feel like in every in any episode, a character could just say a thing. And that is now the theme of the show. And it just kind of comes out of nowhere, and it's only very tangentially or barely related to something that has been done well, we've or said had before by somebody else. Four episodes of this season. There's no build up uh, towards it. Who's everyone's favorite? And is the answer Soul? And is there any reason <laughs> other than. I, I guess like the actor. He's got a good yeah. actor. The actor. The actor's doing all right, so you know, despite not being able to speak the language, I, yeah, he can he speaks English? I, I thought he learned it for this part. So if you learn a language, you speak that language. No, no, but I mean, he does, He's not fluent in English. He's just like phonetically saying things. Oh wait, he's just like like the Indian guys in Temple of Doom. No, no, are we not talking about Soul? Like the, yeah, the he game speaks dude? English. Like no, but I don't think the actor does. Like like I'm so just, they, I'm he's, just he's just phonetically this. so he's just phonetically speaking what like the sounds on the card say. He doesn't That's actually I understand. Yeah, I thought well, I, I thought mean, everyone knew like that. I didn't know coach, the. Uh... But... Oh, I thought he legitimately learned English. Yeah, no, no, like, I've I, been told that he learned English for this role, so I assume that means that he learned English for this role. I think that might have been said on one of the EFAP TVs, and uh, it was not meant the way it was said. I can't remember who said it, but it it was. Yeah, he's he doesn't know he's not fluent in English. He is saying the sentences as he's described to them on set. I assume. Wait, so so he's oh, saying words that no he doesn't idea. know the meaning of. I think so. I, yeah, I suppose not. Well, all the not time. in the sense they it, probably have like a grasp of English. I'm sure they have someone on set to say you're saying this line for this reason, and it means this. But you know, mm -hmm. just say the sounds so that you say, and then they do it until like, it sounds good now, enough. I've been saying it's really impressive that a guy who recently learned English is delivering lines better than people who normally speak English. So that, if he doesn't that's actually the, know English, it's even it more impressive. Like, that's what the funny it part comes across is. is. He just has an accent, a he's really thick accent. The best performer out of the lot, and he's got the restriction of having a very big difficulty with delivering this language compared to anyone else. Uh, also, there was that hmm. tweet that said, uh, I think it was Grace Randolph, who said someone, an actor like him, isn't being welcomed into Star Wars, and that's a real shame because of the like, toxic fandom, blah, blah, blah. And it's just funny really? because if you talk, to, anywhere. you talk to anybody, he's and he's the one everyone he's likes. The one everyone likes. <laughs> he's the one everyone yeah. likes well, so get, much as an actor. They're doing the Finn thing again. Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah, they hate black people because well, it's, it's, whatever. It's, it's uh, made up because they're not actually paying attention to what up. people are saying and doing. If, if you're going to pick a character everyone hates... Probably our protagonists. People don't think much of her at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's taking up loads of screen time, and nobody cares. Uh, is, maybe that's part of the um, the reaction to the show is that there isn't even a character. It, it's all blah. It's all bland. Um, the reason that Soul you gets ask someone, well, who's your favorite character? Uh, and and it's not Soul. You got to pick someone else. What are they going to say about uh... him? Well, I like I like how the the guy with the yord. You know, he's like, he's kind of like, he's a bit, you know, awkward. Uh, the the, <laughs> that's the it. beaver, that's the beaver thing oh in, in the fourth episode. That's, oh, that's what the hell? Like, I, like all the, I would have picked like fucking, the um, like, uh, I, would, I would have easily have picked Keldaka. Unfortunately, we got zero wolf, from yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't do anything, though. Exactly. Ironically, yeah. If they it's simply had a scene of him there. being normal, I guess he cooked some grass. I just don't consider oh, that well, that normal. Yeah. It's because he was like, um, oh, there are some people with guns. I will use my force power to instantly pull the gun out of their hands and then break it. Yeah. Like, oh, that's that's just like a pretty that's a good use of the force. You're already leagues and bounds ahead of all the other Jedi who are never using their force powers when they need to. Um, he's a Wookiee, and he's a Jedi, and that's kind of fun. But in, in Dara was fifty fifty. That, that got more time. Uh Wait, uh, that Trinity? was uh, that was Trinity, right? Yeah. Oh, I yeah, mean, got it for a few seconds. She seems. Which one is that? 
The thing is, uh, but, like, I mean, I'm de- is very deliberately saying 50 50 because character? there are aspects of a character that were established in just those few seconds that I don't like. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was about to say, I was like, does anyone like anything about her character or is it just because it's Trinity? Uh, mainly Carrie Ann Moss again, coming across to me as a controlled individual and then trying to figure out the situation controlled. while dealing with it, but there's not much. You know, like, that doesn't go very far. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I do like Trinity, so it kind of tr- translates a little bit. I don't remember the fourth Matrix film on purpose. Let's never talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's just that um, there's so little to latch onto. The, these characters are incredibly thin. It is bizarre as well that Osha and May have so much screen time, but, like, they barely have any character. The idea that it's even like, oh, yeah, the acting's so good that you can tell, like, they feel like two different people. That's kind of silly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Before- Pretty, um, like there is average. a difference um, uh, the, that yeah, I feel you've v- definitely noticed. Um, that it's just their caricatures. One of them is like insane, and the other one's just normal. Well, um, I was actually going to say it. they're both exactly the same, except May. Uh, her approach with May is she will randomly shout lines. Yeah, exactly. And the delivery has been uh, the, the, the like you lie. It's like oh, geez, oh fuck. You want to try that one again? Ooh. Not good. That Not good. Really yeah, bad. there's been a couple where we were just like, oh wow, they went with that one. Sure, fair enough. <laughs> if you if you gotta, uh, it's but that's the thing though. She hasn't been. I don't think gotten. She hasn't gotten any particularly special attention. Uh, Amanda Stenberg for her portrayal of both Osha and. May, but at the same time, she, I assume you're all aware, released uh, her response to the racist backlash from the audience. Which at this is point is racist? like... Well, no, there isn't. Uh, well, that's, it's, it's just like the... Um, what's her name? Uh, Reva. Reva. It's, uh, and Ingram? it's just like the thing they tried to invent, as Rags mentioned, with Finn. It's not real. It's never gonna work, too. When does it ever fucking work? I guess it maybe dissuades... A lot of people from realizing how bad the show is if you just focus on that and pretend it's a real yeah, thing. Yeah, it keeps the spotlight on some non-issue instead of the issue. But we might um, even get a you know better employment opportunities going forward because otherwise, what's going to come out of this show without that? It's like oh, the protagonist was incredibly bland and you played her, and everyone will forget about you within six months of the show finishing. Whereas now, months, people will say, "Hey, way. look, you you had to put up with this terrible, terrible abuse." Um, somehow this is symptomatic of 400 years of oppression, which is all white people's fault, I guess, according to the song. Um, and it causes addiction and, <laughs> and criminality in black people. That's also according to the song. So now you can get a job because that, you've actually made a name for yourself based on inventing a backlash, which I'm not convinced even exists not, at all. I would all, be fucking surprised at this point bad DMs. if some of these responses are created before the shows are even out. They're just like, I got it ready on my phone. I'll hit send as soon as uh, enough episodes come out. It's, uh, it's so clockwork it level, it's cringe. It's 72 hours to make, apparently, but like the, the theme of the song, besides being like a, a, comp- like a tour of, of race history, was that she doesn't care about the discourse. But she did take <laughs> 72 hours to, to make that point, so, I mean, it sounds like she cares a bit to me. We have only one choice. We need to, by the end of this EFAP, write, record, shoot, and edit a diss track video. <laughs> record time. I, or must work. I find all of this to be a, a, a strategy that didn't work to begin with, but it's working less and less as time goes on as well. Uh, I think I mean, I whenever you're this predictable, like, you know, the average person will start to be like, wait, how did you know that they were going to say all this stuff ahead of time? It's like, they do it all the time. It's the thing I guess do. it's mostly... Not my first rodeo. If, if, somebody's, if somebody's coming out the show with just criticisms of, like, the writing, they're just saying, like, well, wait, why, why did this happen? How did this doesn't make sense in terms of, like, the, or this character's motivation is confusing. It doesn't, like, none of that addresses those arguments. So it's not, how's it going to work? It's not going to make him go, oh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess that criticism of the plot was wrong. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Like, <laughs> that's not how it's going to work. Which would be much better use of everyone's fucking time actually discussing whether or not the criticisms of the plot of the character were accurate, but never mind. Pretty much. Um, yeah, it's become embarrassing and insane, and the thing is, the knowledge of this show came in with the first four episodes. Nobody even knows what's happening in 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be catastrophic or not. I still have no idea whether or not Yoda will actually show up. Uh, one of the writers did... I don't did. think so. They would have teased him, surely, right? I think uh, he probably would have shown up by now, Maybe but you can still right. sort of speculate on what in the world could be the reason for why he would or would not show up exactly considering their track history, but 
You got this, for example. You got, uh, who wrote this episode? Oh, you wrote this episode. Well, then I have a question. Why is Kiadi Mundi in it? He wasn't even born yet. And two, he's not supposed to know anything about the Sith. And uh, they respond, he doesn't know anything about the Sith. Why would he? And we offered the part to Yoda, but he wasn't technically available. So a young Kiadi Mundi stepped in for the part. I assume oh that's kind God. of a Lucas meme. Film, fire your social but... media managers. I yeah, think well, she clarified the second point was supposed to be a joke. Um, yeah, well, uh, and, I, I think like, that's the show, the show is uh, like drawing this distinction right between the High Council and whatever the Lower Council is that Greenbean operates. So, like, that's their sort of diegetic reason for not having Yoda. Is that I guess Yoda is is like the top tier team that they're deliberately not telling for some reason. But the first part is just dumb, obviously. But like, the writer has said so many incredibly dumb things as well, and they deleted a lot um, of these things, right? I think so. I I did screenshot loads of them though. So yeah, it's, well, just in case, getting just an insight. Sneaky into the, suspicion they might not have lasted online for all that long. Getting insight into the people who wrote this is always fascinating, as it is with a lot of these projects, because you start to realize just how little they thought of almost anything. Like, oh yeah. Um, how, tell me more about how you uh, the obligatory. Oh, I've always wanted to work on Star Wars. Oh, I love Star Wars growing up. And yeah, that's Anakin that. blew up the Death Star. Yeah, yeah, and it can blow up the Death Star. <laughs> I, I love that the guy was just plagiarizing clerks, too. Like, the, or no, not the original clerks, but clerks as well. With the whole, like, the contractors on the second Death Star because it was under construction. Oh, well, it's, it's not an unheard of discussion, the, the notion of how many people would have died on the Death Star when blowing it up. It's, it's an interesting thing to discuss. It's part of war. It makes sense that there would be casualties of people that may not very much deserve it at all. It could be... It could have been prisoners on the Death Star, and that would have been a shame for them to have uh, been killed in some way, shape, or form. But to have framed it all under Attica killed the Death Star, you're like, um... Star Wars fans Especially can get triggered pretty quickly with something like that. I, I was actually... I talked to Friggy about this. I said, is there a worse line you could say in, like, all of fiction, actually, that it, it, it strikes the perfect balance of telling someone in the shortest amount of time that you could have reasonably not known a thing, but you should absolutely know the thing. Because there's a lot of statements you could make, but saying Anakin blew up the Death Star is one of my favorites, I think, of all time, of it's all of so media. It's precise good. and short and beautiful. And I can believe someone would say that who it doesn't know anything about Star Wars, but needs to come across as though they do. They know some of the basic names, and they know some of the basic I events. know to call him Anakin, yeah. And it's, it's like, yeah, Anakin blew up the Death Star. And they sort of, like, if they trail off and look at the person, like, right? <laughs> you're like, oh, God. It is called the Death Star, right? Or it's, is it Star Destroyer? I think people making mistakes that are further down the Star line killer. in terms of Star detail, killer. I can understand. Uh, and, and people have said this is possible because he may have just misspoke twice, but it's still very, very fucking embarrassing as one of the primary actors for a Star Wars TV it's show, talking about how much he loved the it's show. It's a terrible the example franchise. of the, the moral equivalency point as well, right? Which is the, the one he was trying to make. That there are ways you can bring sort of moral equivalency into decisions that have been made in Star Wars. Andor sort of does that and does it much better. You know, this idea that there are trade-offs, that you have to make sacrifices to form a rebellion, that rebellions are not these like necessarily nice peaceful like all loving things where everyone's happy and, and morally good all the time like you can do that properly but the death star's like the worst example especially since it literally just got finished blowing up a planet and killing billions of people it's like you okay i think everyone on there was probably at least slightly complicit in the genocide of alderaan um maybe blowing that up isn't like a very good you know counterbalance morally well, it's it's just shit interesting you bring up andor where was the uh hyper racist backlash for that one didn't seem to happen. Those Star Wars fans, they're pretty weird, aren't they, with their very selective hatred. Because, like, <laughs> uh, you know, the the worst ones can say, typically speaking of Andor, is that people find it boring as opposed to horribly written. That doesn't really come up. Mm. Um, but then, of course, you could counter with an alien being unaware of this whole situation, being like, are you telling me that they're saying the Acolyte, Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Mandalorian, like, all of them are badly written? Really? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got receipts. Yes, we can explain to you every step along the way. And uh, These have all got different sets of creative teams, somewhat, at least a mixed bag of different people who are fully in charge versus advising, and different teams filming it and everything, and different eras, different times we've made. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, all of those things, but yes. Um, and it's, it's funny how the reality is the reverse. A lot of people will be like, ah, oh, going in to hate it. So many people went into some of these shows excited and ready. A Book of Boba Fett, uh, w w even that, despite it's... Looking back, right, it almost seems impossible, but people were ready for that and happy for it. 
a Boba Fett People TV were show. defending that. Do you yeah, remember yeah. his episode in Mando season two was really well received, not by us. And then uh, his ending in that season where he shoots uh, Chungo Bib Fortuna, who also should have been dead, if you remember. <laughs> like he, yeah, because... Uh, yeah. um, and then everyone's like, oh, yes, this is going to be great. And then it was awful. Just pure awful. To the point where even Tamara Morrison said he should have... Uh, he shouldn't have allowed it to be the way that it was, and that Boba Fett spoke too much, uh, even from his perspective. Which, when you're the when you're the main actor the and you're actor, saying you have too yeah. many lines, that's um, you can tell his biases on, aren't uh, getting in the way. On paper, though, if I heard Robert Rodriguez is making a Boba Fett show that's I know. about him taking over Jabba the Hutt's criminal empire, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm in. Yeah, that how could you fuck this up? This is a really he made cool. Sense uh... <laughs> Well, and then we, yeah, of like course, we've gone idea. over the nature of um, how much everyone was ready for Obi-Wan Kenobi to be good, especially Ewan returning and Hayden returning. It was fucking insane. And then Mando had goodwill anyway. There's no even need to argue why that one was not gone into with hatred. The only one, and we kind of began this conversation this way, the Acolyte doesn't have any audience leverage, as Rags put it. Um, really does help explain, I think, the era that we're in, as sad as it is for Star Wars. Uh, and we're only halfway through. Unbelievable. Or it'll be remembered forever. <laughs> like, will there be an Acolyte season two? Will there be a season two for Bo Boba Fett, Obi Wan, or Acolyte? What do you guys reckon? I, don't... Uh, I think nose all around. Oh, there's no way do. they might just brute force it. I for, wonder uh, about Acolyte. Acolyte. Yeah. Yeah, they might it, force remember, that one. You always have to go with the worst possible decision. It's like which one would they give a sequel season to? Uh, like, well, the one that everyone doesn't like the movie. most. They're making a rain movie. They so really are. I wouldn't put it past them. Oh yeah, sorry. I completely forgot about Ahsoka. Oh, Ahsoka season two is Ahsoka, Ahsoka season, season two is happening. probably the most. Likely, I don't. I don't mean yeah. it is, it's. It's already guaranteed. I was going to say. I'm pretty sure it's confirmed. What What I mean when I forget yeah. it is I didn't even include it in the selection of just the analysis. I <laughs> that one really does slip my mind every once in a while. Uh, it's crazy because it's just uh, it, no, the, the show is nothing. It's just nothing fucking happened at all. Even the things that happened, there was nothing. We got thrown. That, 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 that's that's what you take away from it. He's introduced now because you know them being, you know them being all on the distant uh, universe or whatever the fuck or different galaxy. Like that, that could be undone in half an episode. So it's not. It doesn't mean anything. The will between worlds getting established in live action was a huge mistake as well. Oh yes, it's all going to well, come see, crashing down. What you see down. is there's a there's a civil war going on inside of Lucasfilm. So Dave Filoni's teamed up with George Lucas to. Get the war between war uh, the world between worlds to re retcon the sequel trilogy. Totally happening. <laughs> sure, it'll be a fucking fantastic idea, but it's still it just uh, it's like checking in with Star Wars every once in a while and being like, how is it? How is it now here? Uh, one of the things that I, I definitely wanted to bring up was uh, you remember everyone's confusion in Episode Four where uh, Osha's motivation completely flips one eighty in the yes. span of seconds. Well, we um, were confused. It happened so yeah, so suddenly, so quick, and awkwardly timed the uh the writer had commentary on this one so a yeah, lot of yeah. this one. a lot of people been highlighting like what the fuck is going on there why is she good now and that's obviously used in a colloquial sense not in the sense she's not a good person obviously and the reply was uh, she's not good in that moment she's just super tired of this pointless what she considers pointless missions and errands her master is making her do and i think the revenge that really fueled her just isn't quite the same when she knows osha is alive so this um, is confirmation so, that it's it was happening. It was genuine. And um, so it's it really is like not, none of this makes sense. So first of all, like, oh, tired of the pointless missions and errands. It's like, hasn't it been a week at tops? Well, it is. Doing a, this mission? And it isn't pointless. Two of the four are dead. She <laughs> killed them. <laughs> well, yeah, the, and, and it wasn't pointless in the sense of her direct motivation was to get them. But... Here's the really the really awkward thing about her motivations flipping just because Osha is alive is so what about all the other witches who are dead who you believe the Jedi like caused that? They're not worth getting revenge for. Only Osha. That, the person that's the person odd. that she tried to tried murder. To kill. Yeah. The one that she tried to kill got away, so oh I don't want to avenge the others anymore. Like, it's just like uh, it's it the, there's there's not even like dots to put no. the string between. It, it makes no sense. There's no connection between just, these things. 
the revenge that fueled her isn't the same because one out of like the fifty people there that she had lived with and, and grown up with and tried uh, to kill. Yeah, like I, I just there's it's weird. It's bizarre that her motivation just flips instantly. And, and, and to make it so, because we talked about this when we first saw the fucking prologue, the nature of her being someone who was fueled solely by the injustice of her sister having died. When we saw that scene, she tried to kill her, so we got enough to just wonder about it. But why is she killing innocent people then? And exactly. why is she using innocent people in order to get to other people? Like, what is going on here? It feels like such an undercooked perspective then, that's not interesting to me at all. It, that you have to conclude as well that she really doesn't have any ideological opposition to the Jedi. She doesn't actually have any criticism of them because of the we vaporates. don't know their ideology. We don't know anything about the Jedi. Well, no, I, I mean, of course, it's got that problem in this show. It's more so just that she doesn't. She has no principled opposition to. Remember how, like, in Episode Two, she was like when she was talking to the the guy, the, the potion guy. It, it, she was like, oh, yeah, peace is a lie and all that. And it's like, well, you don't believe in anything, though, do you? Because your motivation flipped instantly, like, because one person was alive. So you don't if, actually have any actual opposition to the Jedi. You just sort wanted of, revenge. She did, up and up to the point at which she didn't, which is how all good exactly. writing is supposed to work. So, you know, episode one, she, she first bumps into Trinity. Trinity says, the Jedi don't attack unarmed opponents. And she looks at her and says, yes, you do. And it's like, okay, well, that seems like you don't like the Jedi very much. Episode three obviously gives us the, the wonderful clarity of the Jedi are good, the Jedi are bad. And then <laughs> episode four comes along and it's like, the Jedi, I'm going to turn myself into the Jedi. And he's like, they'll arrest you. And he's like, not when I tell them what I know. And so, so you trust the Jedi now and you, you trust them with information that you got from... But you don't know who like the big Sith guy is because we already know you don't know that because you were mind read in episode two, so that, that can't be that. So you're you're trusting the Jedi as a faction, I guess. Well, with not the really because the Jedi when... were behind the the events on Brandok. Well, she says I'm going to go turn myself into the Jedi, and then when the Jedi go to confront her, she says, "No, I'm not going to go out there when they want me." So that's I mean, a little confusing. That well, might be explained by the fact that she's now going to be found with the corpse of Kelnok. <laughs> Which is like, <laughs> whoops, that, that wasn't me, I swear. Which is provable now that somewhat. They think I've killed, because, now that they think I've killed a third person, well, you know, my you're, plan you're, won't you're, work. You're, you're absolutely right. I only it's, had a two-murder plan. The two masters <laughs> already being down means that she was fucked anyway. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. They'll, they'll take you in, and she knows probably as well as uh, a lot of them do that they're not going to execute her when she is actually giving herself up. Um especially if she has information they need. The, the, but the being finding her and finding him like that and then finding somebody, it's, it's all very, uh, it's like, it's, oh, isn't this crazy? What's going to happen next? Obviously, it's the like the mid-season explosion. But at the same time, like we're going to get our action scenes. I, I don't know what meaning we'll get from this. I was actually going to ask uh, for speculation on anyone's part here for how will this season end? What do you think? Um, the both it, the it girls will, are going to be good guys, for sure. May's gonna sacrifice herself to save Osha. Um, she'll be remembered as heroic and a good person who does the right thing, and her murders will never be fully um, accounted for. I think that's very fair. Or, or they'll swap the roles. They'll kill Osha and then have May want to become a Jedi to to make her proud or something. Or to make up for all her mistakes. Yeah. Uh, do you th do you think we're gonna get the the Jedi weren't evil? They just, they're not perfect, okay? There's there's good and bad in this world, Probably. and it's complicated. I don't think that, uh, don't think no that Disney actually wants to, like... No, I think you're right on that. Um, a lot of people Disney assume the show is built to make on. Jedi evil, uh, but you've, you've no talked way. before about how... That's Disney, just the bad writing. The writing just Disney, makes them seem that way. Disney is obsessed with having the Jedi in their stories. They will only ever offer light criticism or inadvertently destroy the Jedi. It will always be inadvertently, never on purpose. Well, and allow corruption within them that needs to be excised, right? right? Like, yeah. Uh, there will never, there will never be a a like total uh, undermining of the broad idea that the Jedi are good because they rely too heavily on the Jedi for their stories, uh, and they probably don't even know how to form and construct real criticisms of the Jedi. Yeah, because like they don't a, understand will, them. They can't explain it to be, us. It will always be the product of incompetence. They will, they will, they will screw up. They won't do it on purpose. <laughs> I'm mean, not sure. I wouldn't be like entirely surprised if we didn't come away. With, like, it's, no, that's a clunky way of putting it. I would be surprised actually if we did come away from season one having reestablished the Jedi as being good. 
I don't think we will do that. I think we no, will get a criticism that. of them. I think Disney's actually quite interested in doing that. I mean, the, the characters it chooses to focus on are all characters who lever, uh, leverage implicit criticisms of the Jedi, like Ahsoka Tano, for example. Um, they're, they're very much hammering in on the, the incompetence of the Jedi as established in the prequels, which already sort of does away with the idea that the Jedi, as an organization at least, are good. And I can very easily see them doing something like, well... Um, Smilo Ren will will tell Osha what really happened back on Brendok, and actually it's the Jedi's fault for trying to impose their rigid system of morality on people who have simply alternative points of view. So it's the Jedi trying to be good that creates the bad people against whom they fight. I can see that being the sort of direction we go down, which will diminish the Jedi's moral force and authority forever, but I think they would be happy to do that. The one thing that's worth uh, keeping in mind is trying to get a difference between their incompetent writing and their deliberately writing the Jedi incompetently, right? Like the yeah. trying to see what they intended versus see what they ended up with. Because we know through what they've in ended up with, the Jedi suck ass completely in many ways. To the point of like like recklessly negligent. Um and and the the wanton use of their uh, their mind reading is is gonna just it's gonna the, the ripple effect of that is huge in their show and in any show to come, um, as well as like the what the past mistake. stuff. Yeah, no, I I think it was a huge mistake to ever make it so that you can read minds explicitly and easily compared to detect feelings and influence a person's uh, well, you know state of being. They, that's that's one of the things that Kylo Ren does, and yeah, I that's think the introduction. That there's of it. a lot of. There's a lot of things in this show, though, that very clearly seem like they're trying to justify stuff that happens in, like, TLJ, for Well, it example. wouldn't be the first like, time. Uh, they used Mandalorian to justify Spine, Rise yeah. of Skywalker. Uh, that that yeah, was one of the most right. deliberate uses ever. It was such a, like, wait, what the fuck? When was this a thing? And then you see it as the, one of the biggest payoffs of the movie. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like the force bubble that, um, like, I don't know, like balding Ryan Kennel say <laughs> that was um, hiding in that. By the way, it was the most hilarious moment of the episode. Or the entire series were Moshe's, or sorry, Mays just kicking the living shit out of a totally invisible bubble. <laughs> stabbing yeah. it and stuff but um but yeah that like to me kind of explains the Mary Poppins thing. It's like, oh, obviously Leia just created one of those. Um, and I and I actually think as well, a lot of people are very avert, uh, averse to the notion that the Jedi can be uh, sort of brought down in terms of understanding their flaws and everything, but that it's more so because I think of who we know is handling this. I think if it were handled competently, it would be much more interesting. In the same way that I think in the opposite direction that Andor has made the Empire more competent, we assume that if they were to handle the Jedi... They would be able to deliver to us uh, a series of more reasonable ways that they are failing in in this way or the other. Uh, I don't exactly know what the conclusion will be, but question for everybody: Do you think Master Soul is going to make it through this season? No, I, I mean realistically, all of them have to die, don't they? I don't yeah. think that answer. I don't. So a lot of people have said that no. it's like as long as everyone dies, the secret can be maintained. But it's already out. It's too late now. Everyone knows. Uh, some of the baffles yeah. me is how much they have official meetings and they discuss these things in the halls of the, these buildings that everyone is, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, this is out. It's done. Everyone knows. Yeah, I mean, Kiari Mundi knows, so, you know. What? Well, so the, the cope with that is that Kiari Mundi is going to uh, be a part of the cover-up. There's going to be a cover-up. And it's it is oh kind of crazy, God. like oh, uh, retroactively right. deals to how the character got so little screen time in the. Uh, it is insane screen. that they've done that. Yeah, man, yes. he's fodder. That's all he yeah, is. He's just sick. hey, we there's a guy we could r do something with him. Oh, maybe, but they'll frame it as he's got a dark backstory. He's not quite the Jedi you thought he was. It's like, boy, you're right there. Oh, how? Did, um, <laughs> that's, um, my I, expectation I, I, is Soul will die uh, as well. By the way, I'm fifty fifty on Soul dying. I don't know why. I'm like, I'm not convinced that I would. I think it'll be part be of. Dead. The whatever they're doing with Osha and uh, May, him dying will be the real sad moment for realizing they've gone too far slash what they've lost. Because he's the nice one out of the lot. He's the nice one out of the lot, even though we got to know the others to the sum of zero. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe we'll learn more in the second flashback episode that's about how they screwed up. You, it, and you know what it's going to be. It's going to be that there's a misunderstanding and then it causes well, like a fight or a chain reaction that causes the explosion i think it'd be reasonable to assume episode five will be recovering from this fight like there'll be a fight episode and it'll just be dealing with fight. that yeah. episode six is the flashback yeah. seven and eight are the two-part finale yeah probably 
And uh, I love how predictable the formats of these shows are. Yeah, uh, it, it's 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 staggering. You know, it's, it's like how episode five of every Marvel show is the uh, the epiphany recap uh, spirit quest episode every single time, and then episode six is where they have the big fight and they get in the costume for the first time. D Disney Star Wars has the same formula, though. Interestingly enough, I guess this show doesn't have the same um, two episode action scene mandate. Seemingly, uh, well. Hmm. Then again, I guess they satisfied in tiny ways, like with the bug that flies towards them in episode four. That's that's a little bit of an action. What's scene, up with that? <laughs> that just like that's happened. Setting up, that's setting up something that'll happen later with the whole oh the bug it's attracted to the light of the lightsaber. So that'll definitely that'll definitely somehow come that's play gonna in mean something four. later. Yeah. Would it be so funny if you it know, never came up again? Hear, it I, I it's not gonna come up again. Happens. Well, ooh. It, You're it going to hear a voiceover again. that says, like, you must defeat the Jedi without a weapon. <laughs> well, and then get the bug to grab him. I feel like that still counts as, like, gaming the system, you know? I think it'll probably be just he turns off her lightsaber and then goes after Smilo Ren's lightsaber and kills him. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, the bugs are going to get me. Or he you might like, be right. Maybe the bugs will get him and that's how they all escape. He uses the force to throw his lightsaber into the forest and then brings it back and they're following like a horde so we can use them as a... Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Don't describe Smiler. Cuts it's cool. down a few trees <laughs> on his way to... He's very cool. He, they, is very cool. Oh, boy. Uh, I guess, yeah. Like, because, again, with the whole... The two sisters, there's got to be a scene where they work together and they unlock the true potential of their uh, force. I'm not going to say it's a force dyad, like that they would say it, but it definitely comes across that way. They're using that shit from fucking sequels again. A dyad in the fourth. I just assume that was what they were because they need to justify it, yeah, later in, in The Rise of Skywalker when it gets mentioned. I, I think it was in a Visions episode as well. They'd create, it's like some people created a dyad in the force. Um, I, I, I'm pretty certain that's what they'll turn out to be. Oh yeah, and they force Skype too. Well, and they've Although done nothing they're, they're to like... make us believe that Osha will get any better with the Force, and she had she couldn't even like influence a small object in Episode One. So, be interesting to see if they and just then... jump her forward to superpower later. Yeah. Yeah, when the time is right, when she needs it most, she'll be able to, you know, do it. Mm -hmm. We already got Power that line in Episode Four. It's like, oh, I, I can feel things again now. It's like, but. How... Will we ever get an explanation as to how she reconnected with the Force in this precise episode, do you think? Or is this just going to be the case of the script needs it to happen now, so that's it? It's because it's a dyad in the Force? Gosh, didn't you see Rise of Skywalker? Um, I want to bring this one up as well. This little, <laughs> this little message. So, someone asked, do you consult Dave Filoni before writing this, uh, this episode? And they said... Not before the actual writing, but after breaking, and he gives notes to all scripts, and he has to ultimately approve them along with the rest of the Lucasfilm team. So if, yeah. uh, if there was any wonder as to Dave Filoni's perspective and feelings and involvement on this series, it's that he approves. Gives it the old thumbs up. You know, something that's been really interesting is I saw like a tweet that conveyed this same information. And the reaction was, oh, the writers are throwing Dave Filoni under the bus. And that actually blew my mind. It's like, <laughs> no, you don't understand. They're <laughs> trying the to bus. compliment him. They're saying, like, he thinks that their story is awesome because they think their story is awesome. They're yeah, not throwing him uh, under the bus. They he is now one mind on this. He's arguably the best authority because George isn't really involved at all as a writer that you can realistically cite as approval of your script. If you say he's approving of it, that's like that's like prestigious. Like, yeah, I got that yeah, guy that, to do it. That's going to be like a defense of the show. Your guy likes it. <laughs> he I never say by Tony Gilroy from now on. They tried this it with is... the witches, didn't they? Didn't uh, Leslie Haddon come out and say, oh no, Dave Filoni gave me the idea that not all witches have to be night sisters. That was de that yes. all of that was his fault. Okay, right. I can believe that actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah, I can believe I mean, it. This is going to be just the awkward thing. Sorry, guys. He is the chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. If that job means anything, it means that he ultimately gets to approve or uh, disapprove of the writing decisions. Otherwise, the title is meaningless. Well, and then I mean, you yeah, have to accept everything a along those too, lines right? of it being meaningless. I mean, the reality is he has a huge amount of sway. He's been there for like, what, 20 years nearly? He's been there for, like, well over a decade. He's now got that role. Um, if that means anything, it means that he gets to decide what does and doesn't happen creatively with Star Wars projects. 
-hmm. he's ultimately in charge or he's not and then it doesn't matter then don't cite him as uh like having any influence or or like well yeah what is the point of him if he can't stop the worst shit from coming out what is the point of him being there exactly I think I think the reality is he probably thinks Smilo Ren is cool. He probably oh, thinks that's yeah. a cool idea. I don't even think there's a question on that one. He probably thought that was a really great idea, and then you're like, "What idea?" I, yeah. He's like, you know, like a mysterious dark warrior. <laughs> like, I can't help but yeah. get the impression that Lucasfilm at this point, especially actually with um, what's her name Stenberg's um, diss track video, it, it seems like the environment at Lucasfilm is a bunch of theater kids who are constantly telling each other that they're amazing. Oh yeah, no matter what they're doing. Well, and, I mean, and no one's the, pushing back. They're not very responsive to criticism because if they were, things would have changed by now. You know, it's been nearly a decade that they've been in charge. Really, the criticism began. Even as early as the Force Awakens, but I mean, obviously, TLJ kind of kicked off. That the, feels uh, like a the conversation. An all-round dumbass culture that's developed of negative is negative, right? You, you know exactly what I mean by that. The so we need to be we need to be positive. No why negativity allowed why, here. Why you, you know. Yeah, like I hate that the way that word has that crossover. It's like positive, positive is better than negative, right? Just just in a broad sense. You want positive more than you want negative. And I, I can see what would be like, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. And it's like, so it's, it usually, they're trading out the word negative in that formula for like critical. Mm -hmm. you know, do you want to be positive or critical? critical? It's negative. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but the problem you, is that then if, if nobody is saying no to any of these bad ideas, you, I mean, the reality like no is saying no. you can't keep doing this indefinitely. You can't just infinitely lose money. At some point, you have to try and make things that people like. <laughs> lots, you know? of, lots of these people trick themselves into thinking that is exactly what they're doing. It's the same sort of person who throws out the word hate as though it's just a self-contained argument. I just want to fucking slap them because I, I really do hate people who use the word hate all the time. But like, uh, somebody like telling me that I'm, I'm mad and hateful and that's why I criticize it because I'm no longer the, the target audience for Star Wars, but the new audience loves it and it's doing fine. I was like, well, that, that's just that's objectively not true. <laughs> not true though, is it? I mean, just look at the numbers. You're not the audience. It's also not crazy. Numbers are you racist. You can't spend $180 million. Like, you can't keep doing this, you know, twice a year and consistently not getting a good reception. It it can't last forever, um, which is almost part of the reason why I just wonder. It's like, so when are you going to decide that you're actually going to start listening to criticism? When are you eventually going to realize that you need to do that in order to I save your company? I'm I'm honestly not kidding when I say that I think their honest answer would be no. We're riding this bitch into the wall. Maybe you might be well, right about that. It's often not their I mean, money. I, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I guess exactly. Like I, that, I think that working for them, you know, they'll like, get a yeah, job somewhere on. else. You, you fail I, upwards, so I, fuck it. I, I if this will... show tanks, okay. Well, I'll just go get a job writing something else. It doesn't well, matter. Well, I mean, you see it. A lot of people will essentially launch off of doing a Marvel movie or a Disney movie into getting, like, an overall deal or directing a film for another franchise. It's, uh... It, it does seem like there's very little attachment to any specific thing when it comes to these sorts of terrible projects anyway. It, I mean, the, the lack of passion is kind of evident in the material itself. Yes. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> yeah. the thing that it makes me think about is you know you know the notion that George Lucas had a bunch of yes men surrounding him for the prequels and that's how they ended up that way. Which isn't even true. Despite that behind the scenes shit where people are clearly uncomfortable with many of the decisions he makes and he's fully aware of that. Even he doesn't believe fully that what he's done is the right decision, right move and stuff and change is getting constantly made. It just feels like that that environment is dead at Disney. There's just no sense that anyone could do anything wrong other than all they got left now are people who they're putting up a light and it falls over and smashes and then someone goes, that's not good. <laughs> and they're like, you, you did it. Up? You were critical. Oh. Well done. Yeah. Okay. How does yeah, it feel? Do that. But yes, I think um, I just don't know that you can create something this shitty if you don't uh, if you if you foster an environment where people feel comfortable, it's so funny. Not to be a broken record again, but when you watch the Bungie Vidox for like the making of the original Halo games, something that they proudly say is that they work in a studio where people feel comfortable being honest about what they think about other people's work. That they will just say this sucks. You should try something different. And the view was that that was a good thing because if everybody's being honest and critical of each other, that's going to allow them to create the best thing. 
just interesting that you see these sorts of philosophies of you need to be critical of your own work. Um, you shouldn't have the attitude that everything is working out constantly and, and that you're doing everything right all the time. Um, that you need to be willing to, you know, work really hard to make something great compared to an attitude where it seems like everybody's just like, yes, yay, woohoo, yes, it's great. Oh, amazing. Yes, brilliant. Oh, wow. Nothing is going wrong. Which I feel like is well, it's yeah, just a terrible environment amazing. for creating art anyway. The constant appraisal, constant praise. It's yeah. just, uh, what are you going to do just, with that? Yes, and each other's terrible ideas. But like, going back to the like the last but one tweet from the writer about May's flipping motives, talking about, you know, it's a, oh, I guess, you know, she's just tired of how pointless everything she does is. And. <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe like the revenge just isn't that. Like, if I took, like, if I was like writing a character for like Judas, for example, and I went into the writer's room and I said, like, this is the character's motivation, that would be an incredibly uncomfortable meeting because people would be telling me how fucking bad that idea is and that I didn't understand the character and that this is no way to actually write something you want people to take seriously. Well, and I would expect to be told off for that. And But these people just get away with it. And now they say it in public and apparently they, they think this is absolutely fine. I don't understand how, you know. how they got hired to begin with. So, you know, there's no... They, they haven't experienced criticism before if they think they can just say this publicly and that no one would take any issue with it. As far as they're aware, this is acceptable. It doesn't even make sense. Why would she only want revenge for her sister as opposed to her entire family? Um, I don't know, man. Maybe she's got some... Maybe her family was really shitty? I don't know. I don't well, know. we know that. Just, <laughs> we saw episode three. That seems like a shitty family that does not encourage you to think independently, but hey. Uh, she seems to take issue with it all. I don't know. I'm sure the next flashback episode is going to make everything make sense, and I'm sure that by the time the whole season is out, everyone who's waiting for it all to make sense are going to be very satisfied. Uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, it does happen every time. I, I think the issue is that they've created an environment, not just within Disney, but without it, where you have, especially on like social media and all their influencers and the shills and everything, that you created this environment where negativity means, like it's equated with being a bad person. If you have a problem with the show, it's because, well, you hate the black people or you hate gays or women or whatever. So you just... So, so that kind I mean, of like, often, I wonder how much of that kind of becomes a part of. How often does mainstream you know, sort of discussions about these shows ever really talk about the minutiae of uh, plot or character as opposed to, for some reason, episode one was the fire. Episode two, I want to say, was like how hilarious it was that he committed suicide, I guess. Like, we, we, everyone just was like, what the fuck? And then episode three, we know what was discussed. That was the crazy chanting, spell casting, lesbian witches whose uh, bricks set on fire or whatever. And then four, uh, was was anyone even talking about anything in particular with episode four? It was such a nothing happened episode except for the fact that we just find out what we don't get to have, being Kelnaka in this game. <laughs> I mean, I, I did notice our, our buddy our buddy Suggs um, seemed to really, really love that force push at the end. Okay. It, it, there was lots of lightsabers. He kind of vaded, you could say. He vadered a little bit. He did a little vadering. On the um. Oh God, though the 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 physical acting that whoever was in the sky, well, uh, some sort of sky, the Smilo Ren suit was using was just very very terrible. I found, or it almost seemed like the helmet wasn't fitted to the actor properly. Well, it just like, looks it shook goofy. When I, they think the a, head. I think that's probably something they want. Like, like he's supposed to be a he's a less he's not like Count Dooku or even Vader and the Emperor. This guy is a proto Sith. He's he's all awkward and weird and clunky, or something. So <laughs> like, or <it's>, something. <laughs> I don't know anything about him. Uh, something that I found amusing when it happened on um, the fourth episode of our coverage and was reflected in a tweet by him later but maybe uh since i feel like it'd be amusing to hear it in, uh, with little platoon do you want to read out this tweet from ryan kennel which is something that um relates to what we were just discussing about the responsibility behind star wars being utterly fucking destroyed yes indeed uh the acolyte has been complete and utter garbage in nearly every way if you're one of the people upset today that they disregarded all the previous law established for Key Adi Mundi, including reference books and materials made to directly tie into the prequels on a whim for, and I didn't click the thing. Shit. Oh. <laughs> I was reading off the preview. Oh no. Bear with. On a whim for this retarded show, welcome to the club. 
It's been happening for over a decade and some people have been calling it out. And if you're one of the people who have been cheering on Dave Filoni, wanting him to have more authority and more stories told by him in this universe, congratulations, you've been part of the problem. Yeah, 100%. You can't keep getting away with it. (laughs) Apparently he can. (laughs) He just keeps fucking going. To the the point when the writers of Acolyte were saying, yeah, he approved of our scripts. The view was, you're throwing him under the bus rather than they're complimenting him. They think they're all on the same page, that it's great. <laughs> Sorry, did someone How just say... Uh, uh, what does the most important YouTube critic Chris Duckman think of the Acolyte so far? He's not reviewed it, so he thinks it's terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's already pretty sinking in, isn't it? Uh, interesting. But, uh, yeah, like, how, how does your reputation survive Ahsoka? Like... Uh. like and I mean, I'm not big on, say, like the Clone Wars or any of the other like previous things that Filoni did, but based on the evidence of Ahsoka, I'm willing to go with Ran and say that he probably fucked up everything else before as well. But after, I mean, surely that was so obviously bad enough that people, even who might have liked the Clone Wars, would come away thinking, actually, this Filoni guy is not all that. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but a lot of people said he's good with animated shows, he's no good with uh, live action, which I find to be so uh, incredibly unsatisfying as an explanation. What's, what's the logic of that? You can tell There's stories also, with animated cartoon shows, but you can't do it with live action shows. Well, that makes yeah, sense. People. Yeah, okay. The, there's that also just a sounds big, like cope. Anyway. There's, I think it's mega cope, yeah. There's also a lot of people who would just blame other people around that person. Like it's never Dave Filoni's fault. It's always the other the other creatives that are part of that are the problem, not him. I mean, well, yeah, there's there's countless reams of um, trying to explain this. It's that he he doesn't actually like any of this stuff. He's only approving of it so he can get to his stuff later. Um, <laughs> the, I don't want to keep spamming the word cope, but I mean... It is. There's an insane amount of cope going on here. Uh, I don't and know what it it'll take. Been... Maybe the movie, the Mando movie, once that comes out and is terrible, people will be like, okay, fine. Fine. Filoni sucks. Because, uh... We saw this happen in real time with Zack Snyder's uh, uh, reputation. It is in the fucking ground now. It's it's nothing. It, it, everyone who liked it, I mean, he's got fans left, of course. But like the the general vibe that Zack Snyder had something interesting to offer the art world of artistry is completely dead. Uh, if he gets to release another set of Rebel Moon movies, he he'll become more clowned than M Night. We were talking about this with the Science E Fat, but it's like it's it's. <laughs> He'll be, he'll be like, what the fuck happened to him? And we'll be sitting there like, not much. He was kind of this the whole time. Uh, in any case, the the similar sort of trajectory for Dave Filoni, if he keeps being in charge of, slash approving of, or directly involved with these inter- in- incredibly bad shows, uh, we'll have to see how it all ends up. But um, yeah, there's a, there's a few things I wanted to check out here, video-wise. Um, no. Two of these are from a YouTuber called Gimbo. They're only uh, three minutes long. Gimbo? That's a a flimp name. Five minutes long in total is two videos. Um, He's he's collected some things from different interviews and appearances in promotion of Star Wars, and I thought it would make for a really great uh, thing for us to look at. They are comparisons of how people take on interviews. Um, I think... It's well. Technically, we could do either of these first, but I think we'll go with the the classic, the one that involves um, the comments about Anakin. So this one's called Two IQ versus Three Hundred IQ, and it is uh, fascinating to compare. But you have to bear in mind this is almost a twenty-year difference of um, cast members giving their insight to uh, a, pro- a project they're a part of. So, um, like, I think all of us are in. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So here we go. But if you can't look and see that Anakin blowing up the Death Star possibly killed millions and millions of people, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. You should just shut up. But that is is the beauty of this story, and it's the beauty of like life that it's. This is. I would. I would have loved to believe, by the way, that she was telling him to shut up for for knowing how much he was fucking up. But I'm not sure that anyone in the room knew. I don't know. I, I. I don't know. I think she did because she was kind of immediately like, "Yeah, yeah, stop talking. So don't don't say anything else. You're if only. you're only going to make it worse from here." I think Wait, in the so previous you... comments, something like I got, I previously got he uh, like the Star Wars celebration or whatever it was, and I think she's telling him to shut up in that context as opposed to shut up. You're saying something dumb. It's sh- shut up because you got in trouble last time. But hmm. this is the thing that gets me. It's like 
None of you? Is it just a matter of you weren't really listening to him, so he said something and you're just like, hey, you're going with the vibe, you didn't really hear it? Because it feels like an opportunity right. to I mean, have some the fun. Right thing to say with Luke, like you would just say Luke, not Anakin, and then he'd be like, yeah, yeah, sorry, Luke. Like, that yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it wouldn't be humiliating. Show. You could totally have someone be like, y you know that Darth Vader didn't blow up. <laughs> you know, and they're like, no, no, yeah, sorry, fuck, uh, Luke. You know, just something fun, but instead it's, it's, it makes it kind of worse that it doesn't really get addressed oh. properly. I think if I were there, I would just say, who's Anakin? Because what would his answer be? Oh, well, at that point, you got to be careful because you might actually make him go, wait, was he the... Wait a minute. And you'd be like, uh-oh. <laughs> don't, don't expose. Because <laughs> this is something I saw uh, Robert Meyer Burnett tweeting about, that he was disappointed in the interviewer. He was, uh, he's met her before, and uh, someone was like, fucking hell, calm down. She's just, you know, letting them talk. And he said that... Um, Part of the responsibility, because he did it for decades, of interviewing someone is to protect them somewhat. You're not supposed to, in these sorts of interviews, invite them to make clowns of themselves. I suppose you could go that direction, I guess. I don't know if you're going to invite it back at that point. But he felt a responsibility, at least, that you should help them out, slash, make clear what they're trying to say when you know what they're saying could make them look completely retarded. Um... So if you believe that he knew exactly what he was talking about, but he misspoke, then you're probably supposed to be like, oh, you, <laughs> you mean Luke? And then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's nice and straightforward, but um, awkward if you just leave it, especially that he said it twice. You believe the gayest Star Wars, I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. And uh, are you That's excited hilarious. about that? Are you Not bracing the yourself? Star Wars. Not the <laughs> In my world, nerds are gay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and are you telling me, with a straight face, that C-3PO is straight? They're a couple. Uh, That's what I think. But <laughs> this is more outward. I think it's canon that R2-D2 is, is a lesbian. <laughs> Jody? It's like, um, uh, like, obviously this is very out of context and everything, but sometimes I do wonder if this is the only world in which they live. They only live in the world of... Yeah, yeah. Modern well, for day, me, it's, this it's identity, just that identity. Why spend so much it, time it, talking about this, doing that, oh, yeah. instead of selling me on the show? Story and characters. Yeah, yeah. about your story rather than yeah. like, hey man, you know when R two D two and C three P O, you know, like you ever wondered? It's just like, nah, not really. I don't care. <laughs> They're robots. But those those would all have been pre-approved, right? So the, the interviewer would have run through the list of questions with the studio for the press junket, saying, "This is what I'm going to ask about." The studio would have probably had input on what those questions are. The show's coming out during Pride Month. I think everyone was just quite keen on having that conversation because they, they think of it as a as an absolutely unique selling, selling point for point. the show, which it is after a fashion. Um, <laughs> but. It's just not selling very well. Can you tell us about your character? <laughs> um, so my character, you know, she's a she's a powerful leader. She's a powerful leader. Yes, yes. You're that one person. Oh, one, oh, person. Yeah, that one person. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Like, please, the, well, buy so, me some more time oh. so I can think about something got, else to say. About we got what you could say a full episode on the character she's referring to. What's the first thing you'd say about her? It certainly isn't fucking powerful leader. You might get the sense that you, 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 that might be an accurate descriptor in the sense that she has complete control and she seems to have the most uh, sort of cogent use of the force to the point where she has to teach the others how to do it because she's so powerful. So, I guess so. But it would never be in a positive context. Like for, for me, watching that episode, it seemed super culty, and that her way is the way. Um, to the point where people aren't even... Remember she told uh, one of the kids that, you know, your your assumption that you'd want to leave our culture is just something you'll grow out of? You're, you're just, you're crazy right now. <laughs> you're crazy and young. You don't know what you're talking about. So it's, it's just fascinating to see this being like, ah, it's, it's she's an awesome, powerful woman. You're like, it's not really capturing it, but okay. It doesn't really show me much at all, honestly. Well, and that's the other yeah. aspect. You're just like, okay, she's powerful. What else you got? <laughs> uh, in a very woman-centered world, which I, well, I was very excited to kind of be in that, because I feel like Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal, so it was cool to have, like, this... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if anything, what I'm, what I'm learning is that we need to fucking go back. We need to bring back the patriarchy, and we need to restart Dude, the great face. golden age of Star that Wars. That guy's face is so I, funny. I kind of wonder, is she basing that on, because one of the most famous lines is, I am your father? No, I just think she doesn't know what she's talking about. It could just be that she has no fucking clue what she's talking she's about. Probably, she's probably just trying to regurgitate all the shit she's been, you know, told. <laughs> 
I just I hear that conversation <laughs> happening. He looks in my like head hey, yeah. he's like, "Excuse me, why is your dress the color of my stapler?" It, well, yeah, he does look a bit like that, but he also looks like the kind of guy who would say, "Like, can you talk about the story?" <laughs> <laughs> he also looks like, like I don't know, man. He's 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 waiting. Yeah, he's he's there. He physically came here. <laughs> so unimpressed. <laughs> woman-centered figure and you know she's really sort of going through a struggle because i mean that's star wars right like we're struggle going through a struggle man i, I mean like and it's so vacuous no like, these women, these i don't know what you, it's, it's like it's so like hollow. sometimes like there there are struggles in star wars there are struggles in stories I so, yeah. yeah, I was about to say, name a story with no struggle. I, I think I'm, I think I am truly <laughs> flawed by how vacuous our comments are. Yes. Um, like it's it's kind of remarkable how it's almost impressive. Yeah, <laughs> it it is a little bit. Um, just the it's like oh yeah no it's yeah Star Wars it's it's a struggle it's it yeah struggle what what the fuck. Don't you have anything better to say about your show that you well, worked on? I don't know, Fring. It's about a woman struggling in this patriarchal space world. And she's a powerful like, leader. You got paid to be a part of it. You don't even have anything to say about it. There, there are many things we've gone over as to, to explain why it is. She has nothing to say. But one of them could possibly be that there is nothing to fucking say. There's as nothing in to this, say. The, what, what can you say to if you, we were tasked to describe I, positively? She could try of course, she could say more. You could lie. But you could lie could and say something interesting. This, you know, like this is. I feel like. Well, yeah, you, if, if you, you can told waffle. me I had to try and talk about that character, I could probably try a bit harder than she did. You can, yeah, like you, you can essentially make shit up. You could be like, she's, uh, you know, using the material, so you're not necessarily lying. But to say a woman who led her people away from societies that would uh, persecute them found a place, managed to lead them to some level of power, and is now facing those very people that persecuted her prior, but she's strong enough to defend herself and her people until... But you could sort of just make up a story that exactly. has meaning. Um, it doesn't exactly. have to be accurate. You could just lie, and you'll just get away with it. That it too. doesn't matter. These aren't for telling the truth. These are promo that's events the made to that, stroke that off the, then, you know, the people well, and yeah, the well. emotional shit. Exactly. And so uh, the, the point of this video is that's, that's the now... Let's see what it was like with <laughs> the then. We have to go back! Hayden's character is obviously the one that's really going through the change, and mine is much more just reactive to that. Padme is a politician. She's been a leader of, of many people. The Naboo system has been invaded by the droid army. This is sort of combining being a woman with being a politician, which is an interesting combination we don't see much of. I think the role is really sort of what the true meaning of feminism in my in my sort of interpretation of it. Look, whatever happens out there, follow my lead. I'm not interested in getting into a war here. So it's not, you know, going into some place and just desiring what men want just because you can get it. And together you and I can rule the galaxy. And so rather than being consumed with the thirst for power as many of the the people around her do, um, both men and women. Um, she she stays true to to her compassion and her um, belief in democracy and humanity. That was significant. that's something. Um, yeah, that's you know. What I find fascinated that's about it is that yeah, it's on the same track in terms of an overall topic you can discuss. But how much more substantive was it? I mean, it's like night and she, day. She thought about her role. <laughs> I have a character, and that character has a relationship with this other character, and this is a way that I will, you know, I will be, you know, contrasted with this other character that, uh, you know, I have this relationship with, and it will show our differences and what I'm willing not to do. I mean, it's it's pretty. It's not, you know, it's it's just this. She's describing a character. I suppose what I find funny Which about I... it is that uh, when you you know, in terms of like what could be said about Padme as a character in the prequel trilogy it's like yeah i mean you know <laughs> that's pretty much it the, the she's climbing the p power ladder but she doesn't do it for reasons that other characters might falter both men and women the search for more power it's that she's very invested in democracy the notion of fairness or whatever and you'd be like well yeah that was captured in the prequels it's not like she has a huge amount of screen time but uh but, she seems yeah, to stick exactly. to that she's still describing something that she uh, views as being accurate to what that character is supposed to be and presenting mm -hmm. it in a way that's cogent 
She is, but then, I mean, again, a qualified defense of, of the acolyte woman, Natalie Portman is probably slightly more intelligent than she is, but also she's got several films, well, two films at least, of backstory which she doesn't have to hide. Like, the problem with a lot of the, the, the press coverage stuff for the acolyte is that I think even the actors say it quite often in the interviews, is that, well, we're not allowed to talk about that. Can I talk about that? Not allowed to talk about that. Not sure if I'm allowed to talk about that, but they have to be mm. vague because they don't have anything to draw on, and they're very, very coy and very careful about not transgressing something which would get them well, in trouble whereas Portman can say everything about her character that's already happened in Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones because those films are already out if um I guess that's fair if she said the 2024 in, in, in the interview that she plays a character who is struggling between two very different worlds one of uh, the one she's come from that's more familiar with and one that which she's trying to craft her own new world as a leader and that this creates a lot of conflict as well as uh, her leadership being in arguable, uh, you know, a push and pull with the forces outside of her control and that she has to find a way to balance the the sort of nature of the people that she's trying to protect and the ones that she loves versus the ones that she maybe doesn't trust as much. You can say something like that. There's no spoilers. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not disputing she could do, do a much better job of it. I, I just think I mean, there's sort of, it's a decline in quality basically all the way through because at least you know, back in the 2000s, you would have had probably much more studio uh, control over what the message is going to be. It will be much more competent behind the scenes. The actors will be properly prepared. They'll know what their limits are. The actors are probably generally better anyway. And they've also got the material that they can, they, they don't have to worry about spoiling. Whereas like my impression from watching, I've seen quite a few interviews for the Acolyte stuff is that none of them have any fucking clue what's going on. Yeah, and no um, one's really telling them either. I guess it's a culture thing too, right? The, the nature of you're sitting down possibly on set or in, a, in an environment where you're supposed to be giving interviews and your primary thing that they tell you to do is tell people things that will make them think I want to see the film in 2005. In 2024, and and the, the the scenario they're in, she's clearly like trying to hype and just say sort of basic things that are like sound bites, and uh, that again could be just an explanation of um, the unfortunate decline of or moving away from what is important about promoting stories. I think mm. anyway. Well, like actually promoting the story itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy notion. Uh, the second video is oh, a comparison so of uh, different. Uh, the, the, well, actually, it's the same for uh, the same acolyte, event. but different same, for, uh, yeah. This would be... Same event, same time. The lady who plays Mon Mothma in Andor. Genevieve O'Reilly. A little chat here. Oh, it's so lovely to be here. Thank you for being so kind. Being here right now with all of you guys is me, like, letting it sink in. I'm like, holy... <laughs> <laughs> I feel extraordinarily fortunate to have had the opportunity to play her at different times in her life and at different times in my life because of Tony Gilroy's writing. The space yeah. he's given. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't you find you it talk curious? About writing. You can you can say the word writing without bursting into flames. That's really the, nice to see. Stellan like Skarsgård has been clear in several interviews that it's Tony Gilroy's writing that attracted him to the project and why he believes it'll be like remembered and he considers it adults. I find it fascinating that on all the other projects, when does anyone talk about uh, as an actor the the quality of the writing? Yeah, yeah. Does that happen? It probably has happened. I just no. like I just don't feel like I ever hear about I it. I mean, casual throwaway kind of sense, maybe. Compared I'll... to how consistently the actors on Andor will say Tony Gilroy's writing, the team's writing, which makes you think like the the idea that they read a script and they get inspired in the sense of like, oh, I want to be a part of this. That's got to be a good sign, especially if they'll reference it in interviews. Even to explore her as a senator, as a wife, as a mother, to look at her as a woman. Yeah. My character, you know, she's a she's a powerful leader, which I well, I was very excited to kind of be in that because I feel like Star Wars is is very like patriarchal, oh, don't so it was stop. kind of cool <laughs> oh. to have like yeah. this sort of woman-centered figure. In every iteration, um, including when Caroline Blexton first originated her... The fact um, that she remembers her name. Yeah, that she, she has clearly... She cares about Mon Mothma, the character, and the need to be familiar with her and her history. The Jedi, she was a bit of a pillar, statue of dignity and of loyalty, and I think 
we're busy carving out a woman within that at the moment. My character is a very powerful woman, a leader, oh, and I'm excited God. for people to see her and meet her. Um, we find in Andor, like all of Tony's characters in Andor, that they're complicated, that they're gritty, that they're messy, that they're passionate and that each of them carries a sacrifice and you know she's really sort of going through a struggle because i mean that's star wars right like we're struggle going through a struggle she's all about what she can trade. conceal the secrets that she can hold of what she can hide how she can navigate her way through an imperial senate she's really kind of like uh in this sort of quandary and that sort of her journey is is to kind of go through this struggle between two ideas oh, very wow nice. <laughs> oh, very oh, nice oh. <laughs> that seems like i did good right i, uh, well, I did that, i did good really felt like good. both of them were like yeah that works <laughs> yeah we'll all right that. well the words have stopped so we are going to carry on <laughs> oh god we're gonna leave that one right there. Our writers and our you almost want you almost want to ask her like, what two ideas is she struggling between? Tell me, tell me about these ideas. Uh, <laughs> this like, oh, oh, you know, of which you can speak. Oh, are using the know. genre of science fiction, but what they're really doing is holding up a mirror to us and our humanity. So it speaks to all of us, and it's very prescient. There are gonna be a lot of fans who feel like they see themselves in a way, perhaps that they haven't before in in this universe. And yeah, I and they need to leave. They need That's to go really away, and they need to leave because what a damning indictment though. that is. Like on the the. The first being the classic sort of storytelling as a way for us to understand more about ourselves. And then the second being maybe you can see yourself as something you haven't seen before. Well, it's the the idea of Mon Mothma talking about the looking in, like the, the inward view of the characters that you're seeing as opposed to... Don't say uh, inward finding, view, please. So, oh, sorry. In, in <laughs> ward, W-A-R-D. So oh, not, okay. Not I word. gotcha. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and an inward view of um, of how you're actually reacting to, or, or sorry, of, of what you're supposed to take out of the narrative. Like, the, the morals are about you looking inside of what the actual truth is. What would you do in those she's... scenarios? Yeah, like, or how does this actually relate to all of us, to, to the human condition? Whereas the, like, I don't know, whatever, um, I, I don't know even the character's name, but mother of the two people in acolyte hers is about reflecting about seeing yourself like it's just like okay well you know it's i know what me. i look like i like what what about what about what's beyond that like what what about the things that connect all of us you know like well it thing, has I, to I be gay like and look like me or else i don't it? expect these things to have crazy insight ever but uh i just appreciate genevieve if that's her name uh answers yeah. a little a little more than the uh you know what i was expecting it's like oh that's kind of neat that she said those things and yeah, I yeah. hope that uh, my journey resonates with people, and that what um, journey? There is no journey. There is no journey. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the journey to the grave. Yeah, if she begins as alive and she ends as dead. That's the, the kind journey. Of journey. <laughs> the journey to the death dog, the ten foot death dog. No, He's not dead. him. He's gonna go on a journey. He's gonna she go for walkies <laughs> to, it, to the it's grave. Not even... It's not even like she has a scene where the place is getting destroyed and Osha's trying to stay and she's like, no, you need to go. And she's like, you told me to never leave. You're like, go, like you're going to die and I love you. Nothing like that happened. Yeah, she or just, she's hey, mourning all got, of those around her dying and combusting got another flashback to go. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. fair enough. That they, that they love her yeah. as much as I do. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you have nothing to say. I can't believe it. Well, <laughs> it makes sense. Going through a the... struggle. Like, what the? what is that? Like, is that all you had to say? And that Star Wars is a struggle. Yeah, it's a struggle. Like, what? Oh, what yeah. The... Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gimbo Ugh. makes these comparisons. A uh, whole bunch of videos for him. You can check them out. Uh, join the comment section. Have a little discussion on how you feel Star Wars is doing. I think these comparisons are super interesting. Uh, and yes. It's uh, almost like uh, we've highlighted all the different reasons why it would have gotten to this point. Uh, it's almost unfair, but it kind of highlights the problems um, in in 
because I think those two videos are good to put together because it's not just a matter of a 20 year difference. It's also a difference in quality, difference in capability. Well, I mean, in this case, you've compared two interviews that were happening like the same day or at least the same week. Mm -hmm. And how much one of them could say about their character and their story that compared to the other one. Which gets us to the uh, final video of the night. This um, wonderful one I've been, I was made aware of. It would seem the uh, Mundi controversy is so stupid, it's laughable. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. This comes directly from John Campia, someone who I don't think we've ever oh, covered. Right. This, uh, title will, this title will annoy you because every single word has a uh, capitalization, including um, is and it's. The, oh, the Kiadi Mundi well, controversy is so stupid, it's laughable. Yeah, every single word is capitalized. I thought you prefer it when it's all capitalized madness. versus when they do it well, like well, randomly. The grammatically correct one would be. It's not, well, the, I mean, there are certain, there are like certain it's not things the worst I don't one, right? like. I don't mind titles because if you have a title, you can have like capitalization on a whole bunch of words, but there are still certain words that shouldn't. No, like, I know Game that. I'm saying there are several versions of this. One is none of it's yes. capitalized. One is all of it's Which capitalized. Is one is worst. correct. And then there's ones where they capitalize some of the things that aren't supposed to be capitalized. Uh, which yeah, be. like I, this isn't, this isn't I think I just worst. prefer it correct out of all. That's I fair. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. My least favorite is all all you people. I don't. If you're in chat and you do this, you can you could make it up to me, and you will say, "Father Rags, I promise I will not do this anymore." People who never capitalize anything, they don't capitalize the beginning of sentences. They don't capitalize proper nouns. They don't capitalize things they need to be capitalized. They just they, it's all lowercase. All of it's lowercase. There's no punctuation. It's just this shitty little plebeian stream of thought with no artistry. There is no grammar to it. There's no punctuation. Fuck that. I hate it. It's awful. Don't do it. You Actually, have an like entire the, um, fucking keyboard. The entirely non-capitalized ones carefully. for videos I often find kind of funny because the the tone they're trying to give off is such a like... like say it's Oh, all... like a highbrow, like, ooh, I'm such a very, very smart everything. And then they no, go... No way. Well, sometimes, but sometimes it's more of like, a, isn't this very internet-ish, you know? And kind of like... Uh... Well, if someone had like, a title uh, that just said the acolyte is really point. fucking bad, I threw up, and it's all in lowercase. I just feel like that would be fun. Yeah, with no, like, the, the acolyte is very fucking bad, I threw up, and it's all, yeah, there's, there, but that's, like, specifically trying to do a thing, so that's, like, the little exemptions to that the That was my point. As as odd, the style. point is that's yeah. artistry. There's artistry yeah, like, in, in the Yeah, in, in those sex, but, uh, but in, in those circumstances, yes, but outside of that, w which is usually not, people just don't give a shit and i wish they would i don't i do not i lament this degradation of language that has been occurring <laughs> due to in large part the internet you weep you go to I, his grave i unironically do i weep upon his uh, tomb <laughs> i cry at night every every fortnight i travel to the grave of, of alfred lord tennyson and 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 then i spit on the grave of ee e. cummings as i go there and Elemental i lay style, flowers man. Flowers it's upon his grave. Cummings is a funny but surname. But it's a good book. Cummings is a, a funny surname. I had an argument on Twitter the other day with someone who said Metroid Prime Hunters, which is the DS Metroid Prime game, was that the was GOAT. The and I was immediately, my immediate response was, wait, you know, justify why you think Metroid Prime Hunters is better than Prime 1 and 2. He's like, well, I didn't mean it was, like, the greatest. I just, GOAT's more of a vibe thing. And I was like, oh, my God. It, I, I, like, I know what you mean. The, 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 I definitely... Something that I, I, it's funny, I think, uh, I think Platoon mentioned earlier the dislike of the overuse of the word hate. I, uh, I'm inclined to agree that there is too much extreme. Uh, Everything's extreme. Yeah. Well, it's either, either, um, cause I remember, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it's still happening when, whenever a game, before it's even come out, it's either gonna be, it's either game of the Shit. year confirmed. Dead on arrival. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dead on arrival, exactly. Rather than, you know, it could just be good. Yeah, we it could, could be save. It we could, could say great. this strong, intense language for the actual examples where that's warranted, right? Well, like that's maybe the point of the words being special, you know? Yeah, most most games are probably like a four to six out of ten. Probably they're in that middle ground of yeah, there's issues, but there's enough good stuff here, and it keeps you engaged. You don't. Not every Assassin's Creed game is a three, right? They're probably all just like five sixes, maybe a seven, but probably in that 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 five-ish range 
or something along those lines. Save the save them for the golem. No, golem's a ten. Which save is kind of funny coming from the... us with how many uh, <laughs> twos and threes we've delivered. Um, but, yeah, but we have reasons for well, that. And, and every it. time we do, we always make it couched in the framing of this is insane. But here we are once again when this but should I'll not be happening. The incendiary. No, that's just where the cookie, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Assassin's <laughs> Creed also about seems. It. Assassin's Creed seems like one of those ones where the longer you play each one of the games, the lower your number for it will get. Like they, there's a lot I of repetitive stuff in it. I like, I like a, it. more Assassin's Creed games than most people. I would say. I uh, I, I probably I, would agree. I'm very I mixed like feelings on that franchise and how it's been handled over the years. But I like some of those games a lot. I've liked I, more than I've disliked, but part of that is because if I start it, like if I start three. And I'm like, oh, this is a 78 hour tutorial and it's not fun. I'm just going to not keep I'm just not going to keep playing this game. And I leave. I, I was still in during three, but the, the new kind of wannabe Witcher three Assassin's Creed's they're doing are just they feel so I, liked Odyssey, okay? I, I, just, I did like it. But I by the time Origins. I got to about 45, 50 hours that I was realizing, hmm, yeah, I think I'm done. Oh, wait. Well, I but, mean, yeah. Origins was kind of where I'm getting this from because I, I played a good chunk of Origins, but it just got so boring later on in the game when they'd start level gating you from areas, which is, is kind of silly because it's like, wait, why? Why are my swords all of a sudden less effective on the same humans wearing the same armor? And, um, I don't know. I, f I found it kind of lame. Because it's, uh, it's an RPG, and that's how what? it often works in RPGs. But that's never how it's worked in Assassin's Creed. Well, that's all right, right? They could, uh, I, I, I'm fine with him trying something new. My issue isn't that it's more rpg -ish. It's that there's like no stealth in the games anymore. Hmm. Um, Fair enough. This is like all the people fucking losing their shit over when Wolfenstein Youngblood had like light armor and heavy armor enemies. And everyone lost their fucking minds as this oh this has never God. been this has never oh, ever right. occurred in the history of video I, games I, before. I had the same issue with young what is though, this? It's, what oh the fuck? God. Enemies oh, are God. broadly categorized into two types, and some of my weapons can be used against each type more effectively than the other, and some upgrades allow me oh, to change no. one weapon type into the other type or be effective against both. What? This is blowing my eye. This is unacceptable. Wolfenstein, I cannot Wolfenstein accept Younger, this. Though, had a similar problem where it wasn't just that. There'd be hard number levels that you need to get. So yeah, like it, other, just like it, your shotgun that blows young, up a Nazi's face were, is just not the same... It, like, it's it's a water gun against a, a, a similar guy in the same armor and like just you know not i i, I just like i had trouble with the young blood for similar reasons basically what i'm saying young blood's issues were that the characters were fucking horse shit and the story was fucking horse shit yeah i, I agree with that anyway Anyway, who's this John Campia fellow? No, uh, so I was going to bring up how I saw a comment in chat that said, you guys need to lower your floor, watch more B-movies, haha. You've got to raise your oh. standards. B-movies uh, just have lower production values. They don't necessarily have worse scripts. Uh, Multiverse God. of Madness, I don't think there's ever been a B-movie I've seen that has a script as incoherent as that film. Um, and we usually judge writing on that, uh, you know, out of 10 scale. We're not necessarily doing the whole package or any particular individual aspect. The thing about a lot of the movies that we review are they are hundreds of millions of dollars get packed into it, so you'd think the writing would at least have some kind of reasonable flaw, but it actually doesn't. Uh, a lot of B-movies have much more coherent scripts, often because the fact that they're low-level productions and so they're lower in scale and scope, and they just have people go in places talking and then maybe one or two action scenes as best as they can make them. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, well, it's just fascinating to scale problem, it. Part of the problem with a lot of um, it it really is just like a a bizarre disregard for a lot of just um, if you if you're not like a really 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 good writer, it's it's probably worth you know pay considering whether or not you're in a position to start breaking a lot of the sort of basic rules when it comes to storytelling of like cause and effect and you know basic character arcs and and. <laughs> And I don't know, it's, it, I don't know what's happened in terms of, like, a lot of these massive $200 million, like, Marvel movies lately and the complete disregard for the most basic tenets of storytelling. It comes across as the, um, as, like, the learner, the student, who gets way too full of themselves and overconfident and cocky, and they go out to, you know, they go to the karate competition and they just get bodied 
because like, oh no, I, I, I took a week of classes. I know so much. Yeah, I'm so good and amazing. Yeah, they, they don't realize that if you want to become the best at World of Warcraft, you have to go into the forest and just hunt boars for like, <laughs> 10 weeks, <laughs> and then you can take on the big bad guy and prevail. And even then, it's going to be difficult. True. Well, we've all seemed to sit on the side of the Chiari Mundi controversy, as it is now being referred to as a, a significant, or rather, a ab an absolute problem. So... Let us learn from John Campier why we are being so stupid, it's laughable. With that down, okay. let's talk about this. Okay. You know, The Acolyte just put out episode four, and I did a, a, an open mic about it the other day. In case there's any confusion, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> I was about to say, this guy in the top right is being really still, and like, he's kind of overdressed. Oh, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> and then I was penguin. like, you know, oh, it's... The guy in the top right looks a lot like Colin Farrell. Penguin. Yeah, I was about to oh, say. Penguin. He's, oh, I didn't yeah. realize he was part of the cast of this show. That's really great that they got the Penguin to join in on the Keati Mundi right, controversy. Yeah, thing, like being a podcast host. Now, if you're somebody who liked it, because I got messages from some people that liked episode four, and if you did, thumbs up. I'm super excited for you. I'm glad. No, fuck you. Uh, if you like episode four, no, it's just it's just calm the fuck like, down. Oh, yeah. Really, are you angry at people who like episode four? Eggs? Yes, I am. It's about time that someone puts oh their foot God. down. No, and, says, Stop and you're like stupid for thinking that. Anyone who like, likes it is chill. <laughs> Anybody who celebrates are, its quality is a problem. No. Oh. You're giving them oh, I was, encouragement. I, was gonna, hey, I, just, I just find it boring to throw in these prefaces constantly of like, I thought it was shit, but if you liked it, good for you. I do, just move well, on. As with, like, just talk the thing it, for me is I, I'd like to know why for the people who do like it. Yeah. And please give me something yeah. beyond colors. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I do get really bored of these sorts of prefaces of just, just like own your position. You think it sucks. And um, whether or not other people like it or dislike it doesn't really matter that much compared to, like, what arguments you have for why you feel the way that you do and what arguments they have for why they feel the way that they do. Glad you liked it. I'm not going to try to yuck on your yum. I, I can't I say that I'm glad people like it. I can't go that far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's how it starts, Smaller. That's how it starts. Yeah, but then I'm... you're like me. You're a grizzled old man on his porch, and you're shaking your fist at all the young Zoomers who like the acolyte. All the little Zoomers that come across your porch who like the this stuff. You get your shotgun out, like, hey! <laughs> yeah, know? my shotgun of negativity. Oh, I'm so stuck on it. Like, seriously, what is the point? Someone out there who's watching your video probably did like it, and presumably they know that you're not trying to steal their feelings on it. So why do you even need to say this? Because he doesn't want to yuck on their yum, Fringy. I, I think it really is just a matter of like, well, here's here's my position, but can I say a thing that will make you leave me alone? And and like, hey, look, right, you still like me? Okay, cool. Just make you, just get going. <laughs> just make you like arguments and talk you out of liking it. I just talked about how I. Okay, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting triggered with every line. Again. Oh yeah, no, it's cool that you like it. I'm just this saying. Not, why well, I the like fact that he said, "I'm boring. not going to talk Maybe you out of liking it." What is even that? What are we? Do? It's not about talking well, people out of. I will. Uh, I, I feeling. I will talk honestly, people out of it's, liking it. Well, the whole fucking point is to discover what a person thinks and feels about a piece of media, not exactly. to convert them into the correct religion. Why the fuck have we gotten to this point? And why why doesn't it address what is much more inevitable, which is when you say things that make a lot of sense about why it's bad, people's opinions change. It's not that you're taking their feelings away, it's that they, through their own critical you thinking, listen them. to what you it's, have to say, yeah, it's and change because their view of the they're story. They're becoming enlightened to the one true faith, because our God is the <laughs> real God, and theirs is a false prophet. It it bugs me how uh, aggressively defensive people can get when they're like, "Ooh, the red lightsaber!" And you go, "Why did you like that?" And they're like, "Oh, what? Okay, so you're I here. Like you're anything. here to just, yeah, you're, you're here to change my feelings. You're here to, you're here to yuck on my yum. We're aren't get you? your yucks out of here, on Mr. My John Campia show. He warned me about you, yum yuckers. I, I think though Campy has been doing this for long enough that I believe this is a hundred percent. He knows that his audience is the type that will flip out if you even think about agreeing with like you or Critical Drinker or something like that. Then he needs so to get a better seen, audience. Uh, I know, but I, I think <laughs> some people get they just they're really just happy to have the audience they can get. Yeah, all right? like I think that's it. It's like well. 
I'm like four words about this show away from just having my entire audience I mean, it, abandon it, me. And so that's goes why back. I think he's trying to prep as much as he is. It's why, like, you know, there's many reasons why I made the Ahsoka video, but the the reaction to several of the episodes being down to the point of colors being recognized as a, a sort of qualitative... Look, red lightsaber. Like, it, it, it doesn't... That means can you get people... more superficial than that? A color? It, it, what's more superficial? Recognizing a color or a shape? Ooh, color. Ah? Uh, yeah. I'm going yeah, with color. Probably. I'm team color. Alright. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually What's making... Your, what? No, I don't know. That's why I was asking. I actually don't... I well, know what develops first? The ability to recognize... Probably color, because I think that was the first thing that developed with eyes, right? The ability to detect changes in light. Light, so, yeah. I, yeah. I think so, yeah. Because... Well, that's the you most... Have, you have two types of cells in your eyes, with rods and cones. Rods, I think, are for low light and detail, whereas cones are more for light and color. As far as know, I'm aware, I'm evolutionarily speaking, the change in light was like the first thing eyes was starting to evolve to, to develop, to, to have it. So yes, the recognition of a change in color seems to be possibly the most superficial thing you could ever praise about a thing. Uh, obviously, someone's going to be like, well, what about when and blah, 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 blah. It's like context would matter for, for a change in color, of course, but I just... Th this was a spooky ghost alternate dimension version of Anakin turning on his lightsaber, and it, it was a it was spooky red instead of hero blue. It makes me very sad, but that's okay. Okay. I personally thought it was completely dreadful. Showed a, a lack of even the most basic fundamental understandings of storytelling, and I thought it was just horrendous and terrible. That being said. It drives me crazy when something is terrible and there's a lot of legitimate reasons to call it terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. He's, and he's going to say, but the Kiati Mundi canon slash Lorbrecht controversy isn't a valid criticism of it. I bet that's what he's going to say. Because well, I've been down this road before, gentlemen. We've, <laughs> we, have, we have trod upon this path in our past. It could also be that it's blown out of proportion, which, funnily enough, I don't know who is to blame when anything gets blown out of proportion in these sorts of scenarios, because yeah, someone can... bring it up and people responding yeah, to someone, it. Yeah, someone can have it as a complaint among many, and then someone else can pick that one out and be like, this is retarded, and then someone else responds, it's like, well, it's not. And then someone else responds, to that, go, yes, it is. And then the conversation becomes about that one, you know, element just because of the fact that people yeah. found it interesting to talk about. It's like, we've well, blown it out of proportion. It's like, well, everybody has by talking about it, I guess, so. It drives me insane then when I see some people making up absolutely asinine reasons for it being terrible. Okay. Because when you Name start them. throwing out complete asinine reasons, not legitimate reasons for something being terrible, it undermines... I'd love to know, I wonder if Campy is one of the people I, that yeah. says it's all subjective, but simultaneously says there are valid and invalid uh, criticisms, you know? Every I mean, he's in that big, you know, pot of people potentially who say it's all subjective, but then they will make clear distinctions between what you can and cannot shit, say. This is good. Yeah. yeah. This is valid. This is invalid. The legitimate criticism about how terrible of a piece of television that episode was. And I bring before you, as I was doing, open mic, a lot of people wrote in with this one thing, and I bring before you the people. People exhibit Kayadi Mundi. Okay. The complaints I saw coming out about this character, Kayati Moody, who makes an appearance this in the Acolyte, one. episode four, are show a, a basic fundamental misunderstanding of how Star Wars works. Number what one. About time. Are you holding okay. Anakin's Oh, wait, in wait, he's picture? saying it it does look kind of like it, yeah. It's more like a game. Okay, so the criticisms of Keanu Mundi 1 show a fundamental misunderstanding of how Star Wars works, so let's pin that one there. That's a <laughs> that's wrong yeah. claim. Strong that claim. is a time. Well, we'll, we'll, wrong see, claim. We'll, see how he'll we'll see how he'll justify it, but that's that's number one. Because he so didn't just say misunderstanding. He said a fundamental, a fundamental misunderstanding. misunderstanding. Time is a thing in the real world, too, though. All right, look, but, right, we need to understand his argument, so let's pin, let's put a pin in that one. So that's number one. So what's number two? And is again, like some things, like episode three was also terrible, but then people made up stuff that was never actually in episode three as complaints about episode three. Like what? So guys, there are plenty of reasons to okay, dislike so, that episode. Okay, Stick so to no the legitimate number two. ones. 
but this okay. Kayati Mooney thing, there's two big complaints oh. okay. that are right. coming out about Kayati Mooney. Oh, wait, this is a different set of the things now. We going to go the oh, wait, Yeah, one. this is, yeah. he's gone, I, th we're, I thought we were going to get one and two, but he's on one A, and two might never happen. So we're going to get one A and one B. So I think that might be the Well, now he we seems to be moving with. on to the two complaints he hears. Uh, so I guess it's a different set of two. All right, well. Mundi. In this, uh, in episode four. That's some unfortunate glare on the back uh, screen there. You think and that you'd catch that when you're setting up your cameras and everything to be like, well, we shouldn't, we shouldn't position the screen yeah, such that it actually, always yeah. is reflecting uh, the uh, screens the way, of Rags, your monitor that this, you're looking uh, at. What you're seeing right here is one of the reasons why films will put green screens on, uh, on monitors and screens and stuff. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, they can do that. But a lot of the times when I talk about it and complain about it, it's just like that wouldn't have been an issue if you just recorded it like a normal person, right? Like in science, like in signs, right? In signs, when they were showing like the TV broadcast and stuff, you could tell that it was like totally fake. When it's like, well, just like you just pop, you just pop in a VCR, you just make it, and then pop in a VCR of it, and then just play it. When you film a CRT monitor, kind of have the thing where like it shows on the frames it drawing, like the, t the I think it can. drawing the individual frames. I think it can, yeah. It I think it depends on the TV and like how old it is and stuff like that. With a lot of digital stuff. I think it's just a matter of, I don't know, a lot of times they do it and they don't need to do it at all, to the point where when I see people just like, oh, someone's calling me on my phone because someone just called them on their phone in the realsies world, and then they just answer it, I'm like, oh, yeah. Because that's, well, my that's issue probably wouldn't be do. that they're not opting for physical, it's just the incorporation of the digital can be so noticeably awful. Uh, yeah, a lot of times it's very can, noticeable. But a lot, there are plenty of times when you don't notice it, though. Yes. Well, vast majority, I would argue. Yeah. Anyway. Both are nonsense. Absolute factual nonsense. Sweet. Okay, holy shit. We, well, we're gonna be some everyone prepared to learn today. We got some nonsense right. that's yeah. been talked about with Kaylee Monday. John Campia, the nonsense dispeller. It, I, I'm sorry, but if you told me I was born in nineteen eighty, that that would be incorrect. I'd be like, no, Mark, no, no I'm, you're I'm not, not heard his arguments yet. Yeah. You don't even know Look, what you jumping ahead. Are gonna be. Said, you think you figured this all out. Blair, when you guys put yourself on cam, but I would have to have a camera facing me, and then a a screen behind me that's. Also, wait, we don't have to do a thing to criticize a thing. I haven't made a movie. Yeah. Also, that it was this energy was for all the stuff we've criticized have... in the past seven years. <laughs> yeah, I would. I I wouldn't. First off, I wouldn't do that because the first time I noticed, oh, the 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 screen I put behind me is obviously reflecting my own screen that I'm using. I should change that because this looks like messy and amateurish. I should change the angle, or I should come up with a different idea, or maybe I shouldn't use such a bright screen of my own. This is the kind of things you catch. I, I am remember curious I was... as to whether his two arguments are going to address the one and only point that he made, which is that the people criticizing it demonstrate a fundamental misunderstanding of how Star Wars works. I'm fundamental. Very I'm very well, and about Star Wars specifically, not about I guess the storytelling. The, is it maybe going to be about canon not logic. really mattering? Is it, is it going to take that route? I could see it Who's being saying? that. Yeah, I'm saying this is a guy who completely hated that episode. <laughs> completely I heard, hated yeah. it. I, I, I heard okay, you. you said it a lot. Don't give a yeah, shit. We, we get it. Yeah. He's yeah. making sure we understand he's not biased, which really doesn't. I just okay. want to hear the arguments. All right. The two complaints are number one, John, they. Broke cannon. Why don't you? Can you no, say didn't. it like in a? No. Can you just say it like normally. You gotta make it in a way that doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Can you say it in a way that doesn't make your mic fuck up? Gotta make him sound true. unhinged. Yeah. He, he, he couldn't even put up a tweet that was in all caps. He's just the, the people saying this are crazy. But but John, hmm. they broke cannon. Correct. In two different ways. Number one. He shouldn't be alive. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of a, that's a <laughs> that's huge big fucking man, deal. Right? Call that a blood it's a pretty dude. big fucking deal, right? You, you can't just say Bill Clinton is in my World War II movie because it's my vision of World War II. Like, I suppose that, you can say work. it, but I, you know, <laughs> you'll get a response. I did not have sex with that fury. Well, I, I think I think what's what's just bizarre is like, okay, so you've said that it's basically completely unfounded, unreasonable perspective. It's pretty simple on its face of, oh, he wasn't born yet. So you're going to have to explain how that's like such an insane conclusion that somebody could come to a Well, the common... Wait, how is he there? That was like a hundred years ago. Common response to this is that the canon people are drawing from for this is not in the films. 
So there you go. Or that it's only okay. established in Legends, and Legends is decanonized. So even if you break it, you're so not breaking you know canon. You're just transgressing something which no longer exists. They, uh, but but yeah. then but then the question would be: Are there no other references in any other piece of Star Wars media that's still part of the canon? Yeah, uh, like, that has I, reference I to see... his race and their like lifespan. I can't see George Lucas having no say at all on what Coyote Mundi's age was and things like Star Wars encyclopedias and stuff that were coming around around the prequels. I don't know why we we don't again, have to go very far. Uh, Wikipedia had to change it because of the fact that the exactly. established, understood lore and world of Star Wars has to be altered to match their new well, thing I, they want to do. Yeah, like it's pretty straightforward. Even if you wanted to say, well, I mean, Legends got decanonized, you'd say, okay, but people still think. Like, people are still going to refer to that decanonized material as being somewhat reliable mm. because that decanonized material was in continuity with the, the stuff argument, that you've kept. The argument so, I was making is that I don't know that it wasn't necessarily just George Lucas approved stuff because Coyote Monday was in the prequel movies. He's not a character that's only in the EU or anything like that. Well, where do you think all you know, this shit came from? Like the actual origin? Because um, we're not, I'm not talking about a particular book, CD or fucking anything. I'm talking about like, where do you think all of that comes from? It's like this, the minds behind all of this that are constructing it. And so, because uh, a lot of people bring up different sources. The, one of the ones we brought up on the Acolyte uh, EFAP TV was uh, a Top Trump card that had his age. There's a the Phantom Men. I don't know if you guys ever got the Lord of the Rings companion books, but they had Star Wars ones as well that uh, listed oh, yeah, his yeah, age. I had them. And then, of course, the um, this alters significantly the nature of his race. Uh, you know that has stories connected to it. And so this, that's why Wikipedia had to do fucking clean house on his profile because now they don't know they don't know what the fuck is canon because I think everyone would agree that uh, typically speaking, the live action movies and then by extension tv shows kind of set the the notion of what what everyone believes to be canon and that's a huge problem we've been having lately in the past few years because they've been so obstructively contradictory to canon that it gets really difficult to fucking realize what the world's about but i want to stress this is only as significant as it's being made by people responding to responses to responses to responses to you know what i mean like that that's that's why this well, yeah, has become because, a thing it's kind of a thing of like, you're making a big deal out of it, to which the response would be, you're making a big deal out of yeah. the thing that I said. And yeah. then it could We're just, just be a pointing out the cycle. fact of the matter. The conversation <laughs> could have been, wait, Keanu Mundi wasn't born yet. And everybody says, yeah. And then that was the end. And then it probably wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But everybody fighting over whether or not it's valid to just say, wait a minute, that seems like it breaks canon, has made it into a big deal. And he's contributing to it. I think there's also the, the the broader question of canon anyway, which is that this is not an isolated incident. So for a lot of people, they'll be saying Disney Star Wars hates canon, it shits on it, it burned all the EU, this is a bad thing. Mm. Oh, here they are doing it again. And so it's not just, they're not blowing up the significance of this one specific instance of it. This instance is just the latest in a yeah. long line of evidence. It's uh, the hot, hot, it's the red-handed evidence it's like the, this just happened we saw we saw it happen with wikipedia being changed in real time and it's yeah. indicative of that that sort of incredibly careless and lazy mindset that it should happen because he's not going to play an important role in the show he doesn't need to be there he is just a cameo but it's like they, they thought well who could well. we get yoda's yoda's unavailable we'll just chuck him in there that's and that's sort of the attitude toward established characters that a lot of people think disney writers have which is fundamentally frivolous and lots of people I, don't like it when you're frivolous with things they like so this was kind of referred to that way by the Acolyte episode we recently put out. Uh, we were speculating on how much they'd fuck this up and how embarrassing it is. And I did see a couple comments going over their point of view on this, and I thought it was quite convincing that he has very specifically been chosen um, because by the time we hit the end of the Acolyte, he's going to be involved in some kind of scene where he will make clear that either he considers this whole event absolutely and utterly uh, a thing that cannot in any way be connected to the line he has in Phantom Menace, or that he will make cover it very up. clear that he's going to cover it up. Okay. But he he himself, the character, will say, like, it is our job to protect this world, and thus we will we will make sure to never bring up that we encountered a Sith, a very definitively, obviously, evil man dressed in black, red lightsaber, knows the Force. You know, And I know there's more to a Sith than that, but I'm just saying that that is probably what's... The, the, he's been chosen. They have broken yeah. canon with him theory. for a reason. It would tie into the lines that so the, like Greenbean has about, oh, we can't let this get out because it would cause a scandal. And so, yeah. yes, it would fit if he were the one to say, we can't let this news get out 
the cause. However, in the Phantom Menace, he's not talking to people who are unaware. He is talking specifically exactly. to other Jedi, no, other members of sense. the Council. And because it would, because I think you know that that would actually have some sense of internal continuity to the show. I don't think they will do it because they don't like that kind of thing. Well, so what's like, really funny they about think this? Far ahead. If they had that conversation as it was in Phantom Menace, and then once uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan leave, that like, Kiadi Mundi, we just have a scene where he's like, "There's something I need to tell you guys," because the fact that this is happening again, I know it's with a it, hundred years have passed or whatever, but still or close to it. Uh, you know, the, the, this did happen before, and it was only one scene in Phantom Menace, and it it was quick. And he basically explained that this is not unprecedented; that there was a time where they encountered something, and that it seems though, you know, now that there's been a hundred years between it, that this this whatever's going on here, it it could be significant. They could then be like, we're going to make a TV show out of that line, and I could totally see that parallel universe. Unfortunately for them, it's the opposite. They've made a whole TV show out of the reverse of the countering line, the line that says this show can't exist. Um. And it looks They've like they've given yeah. themselves an out because like the the same scene when you know he's first introduced has I, it, it might even be him it's either him or the person he's speaking to introduces this concept of rogue orders or like renegade orders splinter orders uh, of Jedi which is like an interesting concept and because it's mm. interesting we'll never hear from it again but that's a really easy way for them to just sort of hand wave it away at the end it's like if they never figure out the person was a Sith and they can just say oh it was some mysterious splinter person that we'll never ever see again ever. Um, they, they've given themselves an out without having to even try it into the Phantom Menace, which will just leave the contradiction intact. I think uh, it becomes blatant, and if we get the references to support this, that they wanted their Sith. They just want a fucking Sith. How do they get one? It's like, you can't. Oh, wait, Why? What, and then they get maybe? from maybe Dave Filoni or whoever else the actual references on paper of what really prevents them from doing it. And he's like, you've got to account for these things, and then you can have your Sith. And that's why Keanu Mundi is here specifically. Maybe Smilo Ren's supposed to be one of the like knights of Ren because Ren, Kylo Ren is not the character's actual name, and they always made a big deal with like, oh, he's not Sith. It's a different I thing. Don't, I don't think they're gonna do knights of up. Ren before like the, the knights of Ren is how many years is uh, Force Awakens take place? Well, we don't know where Kylo's name came from though, right? Like maybe that's like an akin to a Darth, but it's a different evil Force using faction. It well, hey, we learned isn't... the origin story Ugh. behind Han Solo's name, so it only makes sense that we're going to get the <laughs> no. origin story behind Han well, Solo's just, son's well, name. So, because I mean, again, think of all the things from TLJ that is that are in this show. Like Leslie Helen clearly watched Last Jedi and was like, "This is Star Wars." So, uh, I I could see her doing something like that, and the helmet is pretty similarly. Shaped. In any case, um, that would be my only explanation for if we all agreed this had been blown to a proportion that's curious is that it does connect to and relate to a, a huge problem that is the whole premise of the fucking show um and we'll know the answer to that question by the end of the season i just find it fascinating that these connections exist they're important they tell us a lot about how they and how and why they made it but that it'll be dismissed under oh the guy's a bit older now oh no there's a little bit more than that i'm of the acolyte because according to canon and they're wrong. According to canon, he hasn't been born yet. So he, they're, they're wrong. wrong. Wrong is, is so he has been. So he has been born yet. Yeah, wrong is different to the following canon that Disney have don't like or something. You know what I mean? Like, because this is the thing. This is the difference between Legends canon and then canon that's a part of things that aren't in the movies. All right, we're gonna address that. And number two, they. Broke cannon like Batman's back over Bane's knee. Because in Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Kaidi Mundi says, the Sith have been extinct for millennia, and yet in this episode, he knows about the Sith. That breaks cannon. Okay. Well, I mean... It's in, until we get the full season, we can't be specific on how it breaks. Yeah, like, the, but... there's a potential, but it's going to be really fucked up no matter what, in terms of how clunky it'll be. We're going to it's already... Both. Like, it's already... what Once they see, um, on Tatooine, once Qui-Gon uh, <laughs> encounters Darth Maul, they jump to, it's a Sith. Mm -hmm. That's like their conclusion is, oh, it's a Sith. So if they're that willing to so quickly and firmly jump to the idea of, oh... Red lightsaber, black outfit, attacking Jedi, uses the Force, it's a Sith, then it's weird for them to be so on their toes about the proper factional nomenclature when it comes to and this Force user. 
I can't see any ending of this show that would make it so that Kiadi Mundi wouldn't have at least said, Oh, that kind of reminds me of Smilo Ren. That happened about a hundred years ago. Remember that? And then they're like, yeah, we remember yeah, that because you told us eventually yeah, because why the fuck would you have hidden it from the High Council? <laughs> and how does this work with the rule of two thing two. that the prequels talk about? I, uh, so I've heard some theories that that is not necessarily a rule of two and that there are only two Sith in the galaxy. Is that every group of Sith can only be two people. Uh, I don't but know about I, that. I, I can't, I can't if Ryan were here, he could explain it better. Because <laughs> uh, the, the, the six movies really don't uh, lay that out as complicatedly as uh, you know some of the other third-party stuff does. Both of those. Let's start with the charge that it broke canon by having him be alive in the events of the Acolyte when he should not have been born yet. Okay? Let's talk about that. To address this point, we got... Oh, and for the record, all the things that we've said that could explain why they dragged him, you know, into this when he shouldn't even be alive... You didn't, you didn't actually need it to be him, even to provide some bullshit context for why he says what he says in the, in the Council in the Phantom Menace. You don't need this character here in this scene to be him, at least not yet. We'll see what they do in future. Could have been anybody. i got to go all the way back and talk about a certain guy at Lucasfilm by the name of Leland Chi. His official title, at one point, is the Lucasfilm Continuity Database Administrator, or as they sometimes called him, the Head of Canon. Now, in an article in 2008, in Wired, not some Gus's gas station movie reviews dot fart place, but in this interview in Wired, talking about... Would that have mattered if his interview was with Gus's fart station or whatever? But it's, it seems, draws a lot of weight the, the on the fact that it's a Wired interview. But I, 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 I think he, an interview, I guess, right? I think he's just trying to set the likelihood that this is a, a totally fabricated interview is lower if it's a, if it's an actual publication as opposed to like someone's website or blog. Oh, you'd feel like it would be confirmed by him. He's like, hey, I didn't give this interview. This is, this is whack. I don't know who Gus is. Addressing the issues of canon, Leland Chi said the following. George's view of the universe is his view. He is not, as the primary filmmaker, he is not Is his beholden... argument seriously going to be that someone said at some point, yeah, canon doesn't matter that much? Oh, there's so many counters to this, I'm just going to let him finish. <laughs> this this uh, will be mm. interesting, for sure. To like what it. has gone before. The careful trending, the careful tending of the Star Wars continuity has yielded great wealth, but the key to a productive farm is to leave some fields flexible. Again, this comes from an interview with him back in 2008. To me, this is nothing. Uh, you, have to, you have to develop this into something else because this doesn't tell me anything. Yeah. I feel mm -hmm. like some and flexible are doing some insanely heavy lifting. Well, yeah. this they're not, they're not only mean. doing heavy lifting depending Valuable on the reader, right? Like sentence. if if he twists them into supporting whatever he wants, that's one thing. Like I, I don't know what this guy actually felt about this necessarily. We'd have to because the thing is, I actually would posit that there is some you know degrees of continuity or some things that are established that you can either recontextualize or Re twist yeah, somewhat to. Um, give more meaning or to upgrade in a sense something that was previously kind of eh like there are totally yeah, instances so. of storytelling where that's on 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 offer all the stuff we recognize like okay that wasn't the that wasn't what they thought it was at first but i really like that they've done that with this like that sort of thing i mean this is the empire strikes back is kind of built around that idea like we are going to recontextualize and add on to a new yeah. hope in a way that doesn't break canon or break what came before we're it, just going to discover more meanings and more information behind a lot of the stuff that really expands and fleshes out the story and the characters. Well, Empire totally... Strikes Back did break something that came before it. It was a splinter, a splinter of the mind's eye, I think it's called. It was the first Star Wars novel that came out after the first movie. And I think it, it basically kind of followed Luke and Leia on an adventure where they sort of it developed a romance so it, it really doesn't work with the rest. That doesn't mean they can't be brother and works, sister though. Like, I think from ah. what I understand how the canon system at Lucasfilm used to work before Disney decided to shut it down is there were essentially I think it was like three tiers of canon you had like gold, silver and bronze tier of canon oh you're in, like, you're in luck that's going to be what's coming up oh fair enough I'll wait Orton understands something here that Leland's talking about it's like 
before the Star Wars prequels came out, other expanded universe Star Wars content came out. And Lily and Chi talks about in that interview that George would break that stuff all the time. But we oh, already know guy. we already know that George Lucas has broken oh, yeah. his own canon. I, I, we're aware of that. Yeah. Why is he saying this like, aha, gotcha? Well, so this is, I actually think this is a little bit fair, because depending on who you talk to, George Lucas, whatever he says goes. We don't, we don't do that here. We're not mm -hmm. the, definitely not of the opinion that whatever George says goes, go, because I, every time this comes up, you just bring up Greedo. Like, nobody agrees that whatever George yeah. Lucas says goes, goes. <laughs> That's not a thing. It's obviously about a careful balance of retcon slash uh, reinterpretations being something that we think is within reason and uh, supports the story, complements the story in some way. The, we're talking about canon here. This is a very big and complicated thing. There's no one rule that captures everything permanently in the best way possible. We try our best to accept and work with things. Let's say, for example, someone adds a storyline that has a hundred different instances of adding substance to the story, but one instance of breaking something minor. It's not like it gets discontinued and, and ignored by everyone forever. More than likely, fans will accept something like that. However, yeah. and I think this is important, the the living nature of Kiadi Mundi is very much intertwined with everyone's assumption that they are trying to use Sith earlier in the timeline, which completely undermines and fucks up the Jedi in Phantom Menace. This is a significant issue that we need to deal with, and you're not going to deal with it. You're instead going to have Kiati Mundi say something dumb as shit near the end of the season, like, well, gee, Jimmy Welkers, this is, that wasn't a Sith. No Siri. Oh, oh. Nope, that means that they, yeah, technically, <laughs> from a certain point of view, I, I, I wasn't wrong in the prequels. But that was his purview because he was the filmmaker. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor. It, it's his oh, purview wow, because really? he was the filmmaker. No, that's just because of his. Oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm just stunned so. by just like part the way sudden through. sponsor. All right, now let's talk about the sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, like right yeah. in between two sentences instead of a. And now a word from our sponsor. All right, let's that's how it gets you real way. Like, you're like, oh, I gotta stay for the rest of that sentence. After today's video. Game time. My wife Ooh. Ann and I love going to events, whether they're comedy shows, concerts, an LA Lakers game. I mean, just the other night we went to go see Ronnie Chang and it was awesome. We oh, love yeah. having these new experiences nice. and new memories. And our sponsor yeah. Game Time makes getting tickets for concerts and events faster and easier, even if you don't buy tickets right away. Because prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to the show start time. With killer Whoa. last minute deals all Damn. in. That's right, because they have all those empty seats and they'd rather take a small <laughs> amount of money for no money that's right in prices views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying event tickets i couldn't believe how easy and most importantly uh, okay uh, so cool. i wasn't i wasn't gonna say anything but like um are you noticing the like it his microphone really picks up like the s sounds and the yeah like, it's, it's kind of harsh yeah i don't like the harsh s uh sounds and right and, now that you said that i'm gonna just... not be able to not notice it I Sorry, don't like it yeah. when I'm listening to someone and I notice the thing that Fringies noticed, the harsh <laughs> S noises. It's, I was going to say... Very harsh. I was going to say, it is a really cool tip for really everybody, but uh, if you don't want to do uh, really terrible, uh, in, uh, uneven scrolling, like, is, uh, like, like what's here, what you can do is instead of using your scroll wheel up and down, you can actually hold down the middle mouse button and then move the mouse up and down a little bit when you're on a page. And that will scroll the video or the page. Well, um, That'll scroll the page that you are actually currently on. You can click it, right? So and it makes a nice move it smooth. slightly, and yeah, it's, you, you don't even have to. It's like yeah, auto you, then. Yeah, you hold down your uh, you hold down the middle mouse button, and then you scroll up and down. The uh, the uh, sorry, not scroll, but you move the mouse up and down, and it makes a nice smooth scrolling motion. So it's really good for you do you know, sometimes a forget video, how so. many small tips and tricks one may use on the internet are things that most people don't even know necessarily. Uh, one that when I was told about it and I've never stopped using it since was uh, Control Shift T to bring back a URL slash browser window that you just crossed off. Um, so many yeah. times in my life I will cross off and they'll be like, "Oh fuck, I needed oh today. shit," but Control Shift T brings it back. So if ever, that's right. Yeah intuitively the entire app works finding the event i was looking for couldn't have been easier the way it lays out the map of the venue letting you know exactly where the seats are that you're looking for and how easy this the brand process new feature. <laughs> 
Buzz to choose and buy those tickets. So don't worry if you think you're too late to get tickets to that big event you and your friend want to go to. They have last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last Ooh, minute noticing, sports Wallet. concerts. You're noticing those harsh sounds now? I'm trying to ignore the it. The scrolling. The, ru <laughs> the, the S sounds, the rough scrolling. This is, this is what makes a good high quality sponsor segment in between his two sentences comedy, theater, whatever. So guys, take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code CAMPIA for $20 off your first purchase. Wow. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Can we get tickets for the John Campia show? Can we go live to an episode and we could choose our seats? And, and uh, then when he says, you're all in the stupid in for thinking this, we go, boo. Boo. <laughs> to and redeem I paid code for this. <laughs> Campia, C A M P E A, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You also have to understand this that during the time that Star Wars was still owned by George Lucas, mm -hmm. canon was a very nebulous thing. I very don't nebulous? think we could ever if nobody thinks of it as a not nebulous very thing. Very nebulous. The fact that it was uh, the fact that even I, I mean, know about like the different levels of categorization seemed to be that it was it was very well understood and that things were categorized into their levels of canon. Yeah, generally you speaking, if nebulous? you've got a tiered system, it's not nebulous because someone has taken the time to clearly define categories. Yeah. Nebulous and tiered are often like basically <laughs> opposite when he to each nebulous. other. He's not describing because like the Death Star blew up. That happened in Star Wars. No, canon. that's nebulous. That's <laughs> nebulous. Remember, did Anakin do it? I don't know. Yeah, really. Ah, uh, true, true, true. But we're right. a little hazy on the details. Yeah, yeah. You know, some things are just lost to time. At Star Wars, there were actually different degrees of canon, and that always drove me crazy, because something... So I don't think this is... What he's about to explain, I don't think that's necessarily special. The only case of being special is it being like written down as a set of definitive standards, as opposed to in our own heads, and I'm sure chat can understand this somewhat, who blew up the Death Star is hardcore, 100% golden canon. You, you're not going to be able to fucking retcon that. However... How old is Jar Jar Binks? Yeah, I guess you could probably move it, depending on certain things, but only in the context that it doesn't then relate to something significantly important, nor is it representative in microcosm of an attitude you have, which is to essentially retcon at your will. Uh, I think that even the prequels would have had criticisms for how they would have changed the perception of certain things, right? You go to the Plinkett reviews, of which we went through the Revenge of the Sith one, once upon a time, was that episode 166, I think? Ooh, um, yeah, that was a while ago, but... And you know, the perception tiny times. of them uh, when they came out is, is changing particular things, but how much anything is moved in any particular direction uh, is all going to be treated in different ways. My point with that was just that when you hear there's a change happening on a huge degree versus a small degree, we'll all have different things to say about it. And so the idea that he's like, did you know Star Wars has different levels of canon? It's like, well, everything does. It's uh, the significant events of any particular given story. I was about to like reference how John Connor's story is like definitive gold standard core canon, and then you know they've retconned that <laughs> like in universe. Well, con consider if you have novelizations of um, movies, right? You already have a different medium, and within those two different mediums, there there just will be differences, even if those differences are a conversation in a book extends for longer and goes further than a conversation does in the movie mm -hmm. that could be a contradiction in terms of actually this was the conversation that was had or the conversation continued as it probably realistically would in many conversations that are cut short um, when a scene transitions in a movie so already you're dealing with essentially two levels of canon but because one is you know, not meaningfully different, or it's just a bit additive. I think you know, but not confirmed, but additive. It's it's not an issue. It's not a problem. You're never you're never left with this sense of distrust that at any one point important events or species information or you know the history of the world is going to be changed and upheaved. I think Doctor Who might capture it best. There's uh, plenty of episodes that people adore in that franchise that do change things in a significant way. That's because that's another aspect. You can 
retcon to many differing degrees, like uh, how smoothly or how roughly you get it done. But, you know, changing where the Doctor came from and who he is, that's huge. Changing the motivation of the Predators for why they do uh, hunt, that's huge. Changing the origin of the alien, it's huge. Changing that John Connor would be the savior of mankind, it's huge. And these, these have all been things that have been changed. And just, like I said, in those universes, all of them, there are smaller changes you can make that fans will be absolutely okay with. So maybe it's worthwhile trying to figure out why it is everyone uh, has an issue with Mundy. And I guess his, his theory is that everyone's just mad. Just mad and we're clinging onto anything. Yeah. And if Dude, we're getting to the point where when I watch a show, if they're willing to do this, I'm wondering what is the meaningful purpose of its connection to being a Star Wars thing? Is it just because you want to levy the iconography to I, sell tickets and to make money? Because if you're just going to break canon, then what's the point of it being Star Wars if it's not connected to the universe in a consistent way? Uh, my theory is that if they were answering you earnestly, the people making this show would just say, look, we we could only make this show if it was Star Wars, okay? Like, fuck Star Wars. Who cares? It's our show. Like, oh, yeah, I, I think that's think the motivation. That's what they tell you if the microphone was off. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's the Halo thing, you know, which captures well, that's it probably insane, more, better than anything else. When Leslie Halloween was asked what her favorite, like, Star Wars thing was, she said all of the Star Wars. Uh, yeah, that and that means nothing. That means I I can't like, even remember anything well enough to cite something. Canon or it's not. It's like saying a girl is sort of pregnant. No, a girl is either pregnant or she is not pregnant. There's no sort of pregnant. But at well, Star Wars, and this either. is important to understand <laughs> as we're talking about Kai Adimundi being alive in the events of the Acolyte. Okay, at Star Wars. There are different levels of canon, different levels of importance of canon, and some, some stuff that was really canon and some stuff that wasn't. First of all, there was G-level canon. That's what they called it. That is the highest true level of canon. That was G-canon because it was George canon. For example, the movies, episodes one through six, the released films, overrode anything in the movies, overrode anything in any other level of canon. So you could have a story in a comic book at that time, but Leland Chi says George wasn't beholden to that. He could come into a movie and make something that completely overrode something that was in something else. This is kind of how it works for everything. Most franchises, especially if they're movie franchises, their, their movies will override bonus canon anywhere else. This is not like some kind of special Star Wars thing, other than the fact that it was written down. It's also, this is, actually, this is the topic of the conversation, though, isn't it? Which is, it does Ki Adi Mundi's inclusion break G canon? It's like the highest tier of canon because Ki Adi Mundi's presence here would yeah. infringe upon canon as established in episode one, unless they are very, very, very careful about how they resolve his storyline, which I don't think they will be. So, like, that seems to be that it's more important to address rather than less important. It's not like asinine if you're accepting that this level of canon exists and is important. Because I, I guess only. The the thing I really wonder is if anyone on set said, hey, um, Kiati Mundi shouldn't be alive right now. She was just like, who cares? It's someone they'll recognize. Yeah, I actually think that's probably what they said. His movies were G-level, and those take priority over anything else. Next, there was what they called T-canon. That was television canon. The canonicity level comprising of the Clone Wars, which George Lucas also co-created. Um... Is it? I don't. I genuinely don't know. Like I've never heard it before. I don't think. Even if it's not life. a word, I guess it could just be that they're like, "Yeah, but you understand what it means, or something." I don't know. The canonicity. I, okay. <laughs> I mean, how does that resolve Clone Wars versus Clone? Like, the original Clone, Clone Wars, Wars versus the, Clone uh, Wars. Yeah, because yeah. they're they're sort of not. I, I guess I don't even know why he's saying all of this. Like mm -hmm. to me, this seems like why even bother. Oh, back when George Lucas owned Star Wars, which we recognize as different from now, where Star Wars is owned by Disney, he had these uh, methods of, of tiering the canon of what's important. It's like, okay, Kiari Mundi wasn't born yet, though, so, like, that doesn't change anything. All you would be saying is, yeah, he wasn't born yet until the show decided that he was, and that could would be the, your um, argument. Could the shitty, the really shitty argument be, well, The Acolyte's just a television show, so even if it does contradict canon, it doesn't matter because it's superseded by the G-canon, so oh my you can God. do whatever you want on the TV show. 
I think you're he's probably as soon oh, as George right, <laughs> as soon as George signed the contract, everything that had, had he left when when he left, everything became G canon. Right? Like all the tears <laughs> of what he made, now it's all G. I think that... Little Platoon though nailed the reason why this is on screen right now for us to, to clearly read. It's I a TV it show, so yeah. Anything who goes. Cares? Anakin can blow up the Death Star because the movies supersede it. Basically meant if they did something in Clone Wars, George was still totally free to contradict that in the movies as the primary filmmaker. So as Frank well, said, what the so fuck he, is the he, point then? I would bring this and up. And also, here's your big problem. You would say that, but if there was something that people were particularly big fans of that happened in the TV show that got contradicted in the film, people wouldn't people would express their problems with it. Mm-hmm. Um, even even if someone came back and said, "Yeah, but don't you understand G canon and T canon?" They'd say, "I don't give a shit." Well, you know, good old Sutek. Um, he makes clear yeah. in the show that he hasn't encountered the Doctor since the Tom Baker era. Uh, there were third party sort of or uh, Big Finish made stories with encounters and stuff with the Doctors and Sutek in between those areas. It's like, well, they can't be canon anymore. Bye bye. It happens, and uh, certain fans will be annoyed depending on how good those stories are. Mm -hmm. After T canon, the next level down was something called C canon. And that was continuity canon. Most of the materials from the expanded universe, including books, comics, and video games, and by the way, CD-ROMs. You're going to see how this all ties into Kayati Mundi here in a second. So you got big canon, the real canon, G canon. The real right canon. Right below that is T <laughs> canon. Know, then you terms. start dropping. Then there's C canon. And then there's S level canon next, secondary canon, elements introduced in continuity that wasn't contradicted by other material. Then down below that, that was, was D level canon. That was what you said. Called... That's what's on screen. So which is it? Was or wasn't? Did you catch that? He said well, yeah, any we, element we've introduced already in making... continuity, Karen, well... that wasn't contradictory, and it says was. So which is it? Is it was or wasn't? Which one am I meant to believe? What he said or what's written here? Also, <laughs> like the uh, when he said like encyclopedias and he said CD ROMs is about to come up. I feel like he's about to bring up a like a prequels era encyclopedia that came out around the time of the movie. And I don't know how you can resolve promo materials for a movie not being canon to the movie. detours canon and then way at the bottom was n canon or non-canon stuff like what if stories such as the first 20 issues of the star wars tales of the comic anthology so you had all these different levels of canon right so they yeah, should so adhere not very to nebulous canon. at all then yeah so they should first and foremost adhere to g canon basically yeah like it's not it's contradict when, yeah do not yeah. contradict g canon it is the alpha canon well, and everything that George gave them when he passed it over should be considered G canon once he's done with it. As in, like, yeah. when he's making it, he's got his standards. When he passes it to you, and by the way, there are quotes throughout fucking all the time from all these people involved who have said we'll respect the hell out of everything George made. They obviously don't. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Liar! Sea level canon was not a priority. Material from expanded universe stuff. Man, books, I, I don't know comics, the, the stuff he's saying. Like, oh yeah, what? it was not a priority. It was not a priority. Of these things that people worked on. I don't know what it is. I don't like the dismissiveness of it. I mean, to a certain extent, I almost didn't even like this premise of like, well, yeah, you know, we rank the video games below the TV shows. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. It's just bugging me. This standard Especially that exists here. That that says Book of Boba Fett is more important than Knights of the Old Republic. Book of, exactly. This I don't like. I I already don't like the idea that it's being separated by well certain mediums. I understand the film one, but like the idea of well the TV shows matter more than like the books or the video games is kind of just a bit weird to me. I don't know why that with all of the stuff comprising Star Wars as an IP and as a universe as a franchise with how expansive it is, like you really had to break canon in order to do the thing you wanted to do like really the, are you exactly, that hot that's, shit that's, i mean i feel like it's something he has to address which is you know you could have avoided anybody saying why is kiati mundi there if it wasn't him and it was yoda or someone yeah. else who was around just, at that time if you just did a google search if you just, just look been up like on wikipedia who would have been alive by then and then just have them well, instead. Seriously, i think they would tell you, well, like, you no, it needs to be him because he's the one that says the thing in phantom minutes we got to get him to account for that well, you yeah, could have I mean, you could have just had a Jedi Master on the Council who was a, a a Jedi guy here, but not later. 
well, like the, the 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 council changes over time as you know people retire or people die or whatnot, and so you could just have someone who is no longer in the council when the prequels rolled around and we never see them. You can invent characters that don't break canon. Well, they probably never wanted to invent characters. They wanted to pull somebody from the council. But again, why not pull somebody who is alive? You can avoid all of these problems of people fighting over your canon by just adhering to what people understand to be the canon. Like I said, though, I'm sure they're picking him to make him counter what he said or contextualize Yes, it. yes, probably, which is worse. Because that really needed to be recontextualized. If, if anything makes problems that you need to have somebody alive to recontextualize what, what, uh, it instead of having someone who's just not around anymore. Or it's, it's you what, should have just written a different already, story, period. It's what's already been said. We are dealing with an issue of contradicting G canon. So what's this guy even talking about? You know, like, whatever's happening I've, with Keanu Mundi and what he says potentially could create massive problems but, with what he accepts I, I think as the he's primary going canon. To, I think he's going to make the argument that Kiati Monday's age is only shown in C canon. So therefore, T canon overrides it, uh, is what I'm... Uh, I feel like he's going like there who, once he mentioned the CD the rule. rule that existed in 2008, and it's now under Disney. Do but they like, even use this system anymore? But it's a... I don't no. actually know if they do. They they don't no. use any when system. It's convenient. Let's be frank. They don't they don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, um, no. Yeah, I doubt they but use any system. It does there when is, they can use it to explain their decisions. I think that as far as I know, I would imagine that this system of canon is descriptive based off of how stories are written and isn't is it necessarily like a prescriptive this thing is written to be this canon, this think, thing is written to be this canon, or is so this just sort of way of organizing different installments of a vast franchise? I think the answer is really simple. The impression I get is there was stuff that other people may have been making in between the pre, uh, the OT and the prequels, but when George wanted to make the prequels, he basically wanted the freedom to mm -hmm. tell the story as he wanted yeah. instead of necessarily adhering to specific well, books that people had written it was it was purely from this perspective i imagine of well i want to i want to have a blank slate here so that i can kind of carve out the prequels as i want not and episode not like, two episode mm -hmm. two does it overrides how cloning functions in the thrawn books which are sort of the most beloved yeah, books to this day my guess is that it wasn't a system redesign so well in 20 years from now when they make the acolyte um, they'll be able to just basically do whatever they want in terms of making it that Kiati Mundi, you know, is yeah. like this age so that he can be here in this story. Well, well, it feels like a, it feels like a cop out because you almost want to say, oh, when they make their show in 20 years, they can do whatever they want. They can just call it whatever canon. So some technicality means some technicality, but they're presenting this as a very massively budgeted big star wars show that is produced that is created that is marketed by disney who are now the canon holders so at that point you're basically quabbling over it, it's almost like a, a like a cop-out like a like an attempt at some get out of jail free card we can do whatever we want because we'll just call it something but it's not going to matter to everyone who watches it it's just going to instill distrust exactly i was going to bring up how ultimately you can just say disney said it is this way so it's this way they have the rights you know yeah you could make that argument doesn't change the fact that everyone's annoyed and then uh exactly y you have him laying out all of this as if george couldn't counter his own g canon with g canon of course the I, I'm just surprised by how confidently he's presenting this, like, see, gotcha. This doesn't mean anything. Nope. If anything, this cre- the, I, I was gonna say it earlier, earlier, I had to use the loo and get a drink, but you- I would make an appeal to this idea that you should adhere to, which is, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you feel as if wikis need to be constantly edited, and where- information that you believe to be factual true and set in stone about a fictional universe can just be changed essentially on a whim you don't want to put yourself in that position you want to have this level of trust and um, dependence on like let's take what a wiki is right you want to have some sort of a place that's a repository of knowledge that everybody right can go to so that everybody has basically the same facts straight that are all in alignment so that all of this confusion about this person's age this event were they even alive what the fuck's going on 
is this even possible or not, are not questions that need to be asked. You can have things that are ambiguous, and mostly that's because they're simply not explained. Most of the things in a universe are generally going to be that way anyway. We just don't think about it because that's just generally going to be how universes work. But you don't want to have that mistrust. You don't want to have this, this, this feeling that anything can be undone at any time, which is unfortunately where we're in. Any show of a TV show could come out. The episode five could come out next week. Well, it is. But episode five comes out next week and we learn who, who knows what new thing could be broken. And now it's just like, well, what, what's the point of it being Star Wars if anything's just up for an instant change arbitrarily? There's a couple of um, questions about this. First of all, what is our perspective on what defines canon ultimately? And we've talked about it before, but no reason we can't again. There's two major types as far as I'm concerned. One being the rights holder, the other being your own personal perception of what actually happened. For example, which is another funny thing to add to this. Imagine we were all complaining that Luke never fucking did what he did in TLJ. That never happened. And then John Campia says, well, it's G canon, so it happened. It'd be like, uh... It's like, wait, what? <laughs> there's no G. Well, there's what no George mean? Lucas, so if, if, you, you, if you want to call it D canon, as in, like, Disney canon, I just feel like, that doesn't really do anything. Because we, we don't really care. Um, it, it, there's something that's so out of reach of the canon that's established, it's just never going to happen. Um, so I tend to go with the, the, the reason why we care about these um, installments, including all the franchises I was mentioning earlier, is because they're license holders. If they were random people writing fan fictions on different forums and stuff, uh, we wouldn't, as you know, we don't go and find them and complain about their problems slash uh, praise them for their strong writing. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, there's sort of like we would appeal to the to something being official uh, as well as it being strong it's like it's like a a unique fine what i'm trying to say is with with this kiati mundi problem i think it could exist in a show that's really good it would still be highlighted it would still be an issue we would except we would our attitude might be one of disappointment yeah Confused like why too. like of all the stuff all the work and all the effort you put into us y you you chose to do this like really Why like you, we know you're better than any this. other guy well, it was like we'd say we know that you're better than this and you disappoint us instead of us going oh this is typical behavior from the people who write this crap and we're going to point it out like with all the other you know stupid stuff in the show which yeah. wouldn't change the thing itself but it would certainly and change this is the not... attitudes the prevailing opinions of people who you know ingest the content this is not an alternate canon, different timeline, what if, or uh, adaptation. This is in line. This is 100% supposed to be taken as part of the history of the universe of Star Wars. So, uh, there's no escape hatch here. What should this, sh this video should have just been, yeah, they clearly changed that, and they're probably doing it to try and account for the problems that are coming for the completed version of this season, in terms of fitting in with Phantom Menace slash the prequel slash the universe of Star Wars. Yeah, but instead, we're doing all this crazy shit, which doesn't change anything. Yeah. Things Why not make a video about whether, when is it acceptable to break canon? How big of a canon should you break in order to get a payoff? What kind of payoffs are worth it? But I guess this is the video that really needs to be made. Well, and, and yeah, I, I wanted to acknowledge that because a lot of people are saying they don't think Disney canon is canon anyway. And it's like, that's totally fair. Loads of people don't think that. And that's, that's fine. I don't, we've talked about this before. When you see the OT, do you believe when you're watching those stories that, oh my, the future for these characters is, and you think of the sequels? I certainly fucking don't. No, no, no. no. Not at all. No, no, not even a little. Free to be when contradicted. That would then become S level canon because that secondary canon, elements that were introduced but then later contradicted by either T level canon on television or G level canon, the George canon. Why is that important? So just by the definition of S canon and secondary canon, the fact that something can be contradicted is built into the definition of what kind of canon that is. So I mean we're so we're done, basically. I just think this is a very uh sort of laborious way of explaining we got loads of projects getting made, they ain't all gonna line up. And I guess if you wanna the answer to which one you have to take, it's just Movies triumph overall. Whichever uh, one you feel, man. I mean, ultimately, yeah, that is actually the answer for a lot of people. Suit your own vibe. Um, Decanonizing legends, for example, there's plenty of people who just don't agree. You know what I mean? Here's why it's important. 
because Kai Adi Mundi's age that everybody's running around and clutching their pearls about, screaming that Kai Adi Mundi wasn't alive at that time. Well, I mean, if you say that they're screaming, then I guess yeah. they're screaming. If anything, yeah. this seems to highlight this element of there seems to be a very unified and strong amount of voices that are rising up to say that there is a there is an agreed upon age for Kiati Mundi that generally the fans have taken this th this information that's technically external to the the movies and it is agreed upon that that is what the truth of this world is and you you generally don't want to break with that kind of a thing well um from my point of view it's all been funny i've just seen people laughing at all the fuck ups that's kind of the attitude oh I yeah see. like oh yeah people no one thinks that I mean, no one's going to think about the Acolyte as something that actually happened in the Star Wars world. It's like, it's it's not hard to think the same thing about Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, or even Kenobi. It's like, no, obviously that shit didn't happen. No, that's stupid. No, yeah. that, that did not happen. And us laughing at it is not, like, it, it's because it's, the whole anger thing. There's going to be angry feelings here and there, but it's usually more so a meta thing. Like, they made this. They used the money and the talent for this. This is what the yeah. Star Wars has become. That sort of stuff, as opposed to individually, the fact of Kiadi Mundi being older than he's supposed to be, is not something that yeah, out of love keeps us awake franchise. at night. Was never canon. <gasps> it was never canon. Kiadi Mundi's year of birth was never once mentioned in anything T canon, television canon. Knew it. Nor was it ever mentioned in anything G level canon the movie level canon imagine that there. this is your imagine this is your like design philosophy when it comes to establishing the continued uh facts of a universe as the franchise persists through the decades at this point right if your attitude was well even though everyone thinks that it's this thing and it, it, a lot of stuff is kind of relying on this thing, and it would be weird if this thing was changed. It technically wasn't said in the movie, so eh, fuck it. And whatever problems, let, let them let, come what may. Doesn't That's, matter. It just doesn't even fit. Like, the, the thing he just laboriously laid out for us was like a six-tier level of canon. Something falling below the top two tiers of canon is still a form of canon, it's just able to be contradicted by a higher tier of canon, but then he just said it's not in one of the top two tiers, so it was never canon, which kind I, of makes the entire preceding thing yeah. pointless. My argument too would be like, show me George Lucas's notes where there's a character sheet on Kiari Monday. Like, a, a, oh, we all know, we all know it would have been like George approved of the vague age reign and the history of his species with the little story. Like that, that's very much something that was. But that's what John would say. He'd be like, "It's it's it's a uh, you know bronze level canon or whatever." So that means it was never really canon. But like, I guess he's just banking on this being this. I thought also his species is not supposed to live very long. Wasn't that another thing that someone mentioned? Well, that's the whole point yeah. of him not being able to be alive. No, no, no. But he's like Eclipse. doesn't live very long in general. His species is dying out, and apparently he has some kind of like license to breed, even though he's a Jedi. I never got a license to breed. I just and it's the way to do it. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. The 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 thing for me though is any individual factoid about a uh, canon that relates to someone's age. Blah 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 blah. It's is always going to be the knock on effect that people are more interested in. I think than any individual fact. Uh, obviously, the knock on effect is really funny. Of you've got a person in a scene that shouldn't even be a sperm cell yet. That's funny. But also the. The nature of Kiadi Mundi, everything surrounding him. He was being discussed before the show came out because of his line in Phantom Menace. So it's like, th this is what I mean. I would have, this would make a lot more sense to deconstruct if we had the last four episodes because he's going to say something. He ain't there for no reason. You know where it came from? This is where, what? this is what everybody's clutching their pearls about. The birth year of Kiadi Mundi and his birth age literally came from a 1999 CD ROM. Okay. Yeah, that was released. I don't know why. Movie promo okay. Why are we denegrading yeah, it? By, why are, yeah, why like are we the, denigrating it because it's CD ROM? It's into the Phantom Menace. Like, yeah, it's got from 1999. It's like, yeah, when Johnny Wendy first showed up. Yeah. It's in several other media, like yeah, this trading cards thing. and other guides and things like yeah. that. And and it does form because Ryan was explaining this on FNT yesterday, but it also ties into, you know, Key Addy Mundy's entire character and every other depiction he's ever had 
is born of the fact that his exactly. species is short lived. He gets all these exactly. exemptions. So it's just not... by changing the birth date, you've not just changed a birth date, you've changed the nature it's of the species. person who operates in the universe. That's what I meant by the knock on effect stuff. But the people care way more about the nature of this is what I mean. Like, why didn't he look into this? Why do you think people are uh, so mad as, uh, from your point of view? Because this text here says it's the only place uh, Mundi's year of birth of age is ever mentioned. I already know that's not true. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't have a collection of his fucking age references, but I, I know. Saying as such, it was never true canon. Like, what? What is this true canon? Why does he think that this is compelling? Wait, but isn't okay. this fucking hilarious? The G canon is the true canon. The acolyte isn't even G canon. I don't it's mean George TV canon. Show. I mean it's, so it's a TV possible. show. Yeah, yeah, it's a tier exactly. below. So, yeah. So it can't so even acolyte rise even high enough. Canon. So what are you even talking about? This is what I mean. It's like, what is Why the point of this? Say, like, <laughs> And, and then, of course, like, the brazen confidence of they don't understand how Star Wars works. Well, They're they, so fundam stupid. they fundamentally misunderstand Star Wars. That at a I core, intrinsic level to what Star Wars is as a concept, they do not understand it. It's just funny that, believe... like, you were saying it in such an incensed way about how, like, wrong and dumb they were and how they don't understand it. And this is his argument. It doesn't matter because it was in this one place that I don't think matters. And it's not even true. I would, I, I typically don't go into the, like, the true fan kind of, you know, the titling and labeling and stuff. But it, I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to say that if you fundamentally misunderstand something, you are not a fan of that thing. You're a fan of, a fan something, of something else, else yeah. that you think, yeah, you're a fan of something else. So essentially what Mr. John Campia show is saying is that the people who have an issue with Kiati Mundi's age lore break here are not true fans of Star Wars, which I mean I think the line of logic is pretty easy to follow there. Um, I also I don't like this denigration of CD ROMs. I don't know why he says it like that. Like if something is on a CD ROM, it's like worthless. Uh, <laughs> I I think that's it's it's bizarre the way that he has his inflection to call it a CD ROM, but also. I don't want to be going around taking a crap on things that came before to build up Star Wars into what it was. Remember, episode one was a We've big talked fucking oh, deal. forever about all the options they had. They didn't have to do it this way, but they did. Well, when I when I buy my Star Wars episode one insider's guide, CD ROM for Windows 9598, came and it's right like officially it's got the LucasArts logo on it. It's like an official real deal thing. I don't want to read that and go, yeah, they might change this later though. Yeah, no one. I want to have some confidence that the information that. here is the real oh, deal. Rags. The That's writers at Wikipedia had that confidence until they had to scramble over the Wikipedia. Like, it's <laughs> funny. People have said, like, that's normal for any w w uh, Wikipedia page. And it's like, well, to be fair, it's normal to update pages with new information or new context. It's rare that you have to scrub the information that you painstakingly wrote down as part of uh, canon to then delete it and replace it with other canon, to the point where they listed his birth as pre the age of, of the Acolyte, because now they yeah. have no clue. So they, have, they have got nothing. First basically redacted. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny. And the thing is, I think uh, no no shade to the people who run those things, because it, it's a fucking nightmare, probably. But surely you would put uh, pre-Disney, this was the can like a pre-Disney page, or pre-fuck-up. Like you'd you'd have like in brackets like it used to be this according to these references but now it is this according to these references because uh i'm sure they adhere to this canon rule but i find it so amazing that we've adopted it for disney when they clearly don't fucking run this whatsoever like whose canon reminds... supersedes the other disney who now have the rights and have made the sequel trilogy or george's original g canon six films do we because those films don't fucking coexist with each other in a million years. Like, which one do we take to be the true representation of uh, I mean, storylines and characters? Most Star Wars fans would probably say anything Filoni approves now. I oh, guess fuck off. he approved the acolyte. Like, but I mean, who else is it? Yeah. <laughs> it was the clunky Called... thing, and it was always going to be the clunky thing about you know saying that you were decanonizing all of the expanded universe, shoving it into legends and things like that. Is that the rest of like the Star Wars universe, Star Wars media, and Wikipedia probably being the, the best example of this, doesn't begin with like this year zero thing where every piece of information that isn't in the films is completely wiped forever, as evidenced by the fact they had to go in and change the birth date. Much of this stuff remained presumptively true. 
because that's you, you exactly. still have to have all of that content building out your universe. You can't just wish that away and say, ah, oh, we've started again completely, because there are so many contingent events that you then have to break your wiki completely if you're going to actually faithfully represent <laughs> that. So like, it was just a clumsy thing to do from the off. And I kind of feel, yeah, I feel a bit bad for the Wikipedia guys for having to struggle through with it. But at the same time, you know, they did choose that job. So Well, and it's a categorization um, thing, right? Because apparently they do have a legends format, which makes a lot of sense because the amount of fucking work they would have done to have that, they wouldn't just delete all of it the second Disney say it's not canon. However, uh, what happens... Like the primary Wikipedia pages for these individual characters, I guess the information on them gets either turned into Legends canon or deleted outright if uh, Disney contradict it. For example, if the next film says Han Solo never had a pistol of any kind, never, never had a blaster, what what do they do? Well, remake the OT. I mean, I just, but just like, just like well, well, he did though. <laughs> it's like, nope, never did. Like, okay. I don't know if they you know, would uh, uh, add a note or something. This reminds me of when we were covering Madam Web and we went to the wiki and we were reading all the stuff in there and people were changing it. And it was like a joke and stuff and I definitely don't approve of that. But it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Some of the stuff that got written in there by by people we <laughs> who might have been listening to us. But this, 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 this attempt to keep the Wikipedia straight when you're just given you're just given yeah. no help at all for the people who actually kind of like quote unquote control the canon and you're just scrambling to make sense of it all and you're like god don't they give a don't they give a shit like i said Shouldn't i think you it's... have someone who determines this sort of thing like an actual lore master or part of it's got to like... be the surrounding elements like it, they can't get away with it as much because of the fact that everyone has such low expectations that seeing something like this it's so easy to translate to other people as well such a fail. Star Wars Episode One Insider's Guide CD-ROM is the only place that Kayati Mundi's year of birth or age is... I love the idea that the Insider's Guide is specifically the one you cannot trust. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, we okay. can't trust the, the... We can't... The thing that says LucasArts Entertainment Company presents Star Wars yeah. Episode One Insider's Guide. It can't be trusted anymore. And it's like, I well, gee, thanks! I don't buy that official promotional materials for a movie don't count as G canon. Because they've like, well, got I mean, a... George Lucas would obviously have at least given these things a glance, like read, well, the, it's read like, the summaries. Um, it's, it's like the Star Wars books we all had as kids, the one that had all the like the, the visual dictionaries, those ones. Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah, those... gotta be like G canon, right? That, well, isn't that like the whole point of them? Is, uh, I'm arguing against that not being G canon, but I think that is Campia's argument. The He's thing like, about well, it, it comes down to is material, if but... George made another prequel, say there were four, and he contradicted something in one of these, but not the films, then he'd be like, yeah, whatever, it supersedes it. Because he's like, I don't know, fucking hell. I... This is the thing. I think every writer is capable of this, especially with the universe as big as Star Wars. It's just the using this uh, as an explanation, as opposed to us all acknowledging a retcon. Why can't you just acknowledge the retcon? It's there. They did it. And there's uh, one. There yeah. was material that said that he was a certain age and they changed their mind on it. As was mentioned, as some people said in chat, didn't it change from uh, the difference between a thousand generations and a thousand years um, from the OT to the prequels as to timelines well, of the Republic and stuff? But yeah, that... Uh, or, or like, from a certain point of view, no, that line is that obviously true? invented specifically to account for the fact that continuity has now changed, being with Luke and Vader. I've, I've seen people say, and I, I kind of agree, the nature of the Star Destroyer and Vader being above Tatooine, like, if that were, if the story were the six movies from the get-go, which we know it wasn't, then uh, there would obviously have to be a scene of Vader acknowledging Tatooine. That's huge, you know? Yeah. And I think that would have been really cool. Imagine just a, just a scene where he's looking out the, the window and you can see the planet, and he's just staring at it, even for a few seconds. And I think that would go a hell of a long way in terms of convincing us that it all is coherent. But the payoff is so strong in terms of what it provides for the characters that there are breaches that we accept and uh, move on with, sort of thing. It's, uh, like this, this is this is all it comes down to to me. Uh, we'll wait to see how Acolyte does all of this stuff. But why are we pretending like this isn't a fuck up of some or, or, or a retcon? It obviously is. Yep. Was ever mentioned. As such, it was never true canon. 
Fuck it you. was actually <laughs> S level canon, or at best. Wait, was it S level? Is it S level now? Now it's because just because of acolyte. Because yeah, what? Okay. Argument is that well, so this is another thing. As canon. There's so another you, thing you, happening you here that he hasn't movie. included as a tier, which would be Disney supersedes anything prior to Disney. But the thing is, Disney yeah, supersedes Disney. Disney. Isn't actually on here. I think Disney have walked yeah, all over Disney's their own canon several times. It's whatever. Like, let's be honest. That's the fucking ultimate rule. Whatever's the newest thing that was said is the canon. Yeah. Flavor of the week canon is what exactly it which sounds like here. eventually you get down to individual hours and you're like, what is the point of this? None, I can't hold on to any of this. I can't build anything. It's just fucking pointless. It was only ever C-level canon, which George Lucas himself established was totally ignorable. You just said not Debatable. true, now it's totally ignorable, meaning it's still canon? I mean, I he guess has totally to that a, it if it gets retconned. Yeah, or is but, that in but the what category if it's, of not true canon, but in his mind? But only if it's retconned by something higher than it in its hierarchy. It doesn't have to be newer necessarily, right? Like, would he? So, if it were retconned by something that was also C tier, would he then say it's a problem, or would he just say, "Well, it's Disney's canon"? Well, they said it was true. Like all these weird, boring arguments as to why nobody should care about a thing. Gee, thanks. I definitely want to be making these arguments. George Lucas himself said that level of canon is totally ignorable, and anything in television and the movies can override that. Star the whole the whole argument that people are crying about about Kayati Mooney's age was never a canon thing. Well, you got it. Was no, canon. It was. your argument. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah, you're not switching it. It was canon. You're just saying it didn't matter as much. The word which... canon still appears in the phrase S tier canon. Exactly. So what do you, so this is a bit slippery right and, here. This is some and slippery by... shit. And by I, his, like by I, what he put on screen, S canon means it's there because it was superseded by something else. So it was, and then it got bumped down to that, but that would have only happened because the Acolyte came out. And it's This leads tea. me to... Yeah, so it used to be... I mean, it. I guess in technicality, it would be an extended universe canon, but it wasn't. it wasn't contradicted by anything from G or T canon, if anything, G and T supported it. But now that Acolyte has flagrantly contradicted that, it is now bumped down to S canon because it has been contradicted by something from a TV show on the second tier. They could have just Google searched it before they spent their 180 million fucking dollars on this show to be like, is, should this character even exist in this universe? Whatever. Do you think Put him like, in. W Wikipedia editors like spent years sitting there thinking, "Oh, do, do you think? Do you think the people who make Star Wars ever read our site?" <laughs> oh shit! I guess they don't. Fuck well, it. we know one person did. Tony Gilroy. Well, the one who did got. Yeah, we covered that one video. Yeah, or that one goober. And he got fucking like, shamed Tony, for that. Tony Gilroy read Wikipedia to learn information about his universe. What a dick! <laughs> what a loser! Why didn't he just make everything S canon or whatever? Amazing. Um, yeah, he didn't realize that he had the D, and with the D comes power. Well, that's that's kind of how I think everyone feels about this, is they do this very brazenly. They don't care. And I think it's a little bit rude if you have sort of writers that are... Do you remember the... Um, we used to talk about some of the stuff that got written in the novelizations of the sequel films. But every time they try to fix everything from, let's say, TFA... TLJ would just contradict it anyway, and then they try to fix the TLJ stuff, and then TROS would just contradict it anyway. And it's, it supports the notion that we all, I think at this point, believe to be true, that they don't give a fuck about writing or continuity at all. No. Like, all this effort to simp for Disney and their systems with continuity that they definitely 100% have taken from George and are working with and respect. It's like, who are you kidding? That silence means nobody. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, uh, don't look at me. <laughs> it was never true canon. It is a piece of information that came from this place. By the way, I'll say the most impassioned defense of the canon discussion is coming from John Campia, who seems to say that it's it's okay and there is no issue whatsoever. 
So that's interesting. Well, I also like that the most impassioned defense comes from the guy who said that the episode was shit anyway. Uh, that, that is kind of amusing. Like, Akali ain't getting defended by this. A CD-ROM. Looks Why? Okay. Stop more, denigrating CD-ROMs. The, the more you say it like I... that, the more convincing it becomes, okay? Why did, the, what did CD-ROMs do The more it undermines him, really. So, it, like, in 1999, when this film came out, you couldn't really watch a video on the internet very well. In fact, I think I remember the episode one trailer in, like, 240p or 360p being a thing that you could download from the Star Wars website being a really big deal. So a CD-ROM like this would effectively serve the same function that a website with videos you can watch explaining the content would. Oh, these things are so I mean, really exciting for Star Wars an official Wars piece of promotional material for a movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, but I mean, you know, I grew up in the age of where, like, these things were, like, a thing. You'd go and you'd get CD-ROMs, and CD-ROMs would come as, like, the demo discs and stuff like that. I mean, that was the way of the world. That's how technology progresses. Because if we want to put on our inflections and denigrate it, we can talk about how stupid it is that we have these things called books where we mulch up trees and flatten them out into these thin little things. And I could go into this whole diatribe about we, we put ink on them with these symbols. And yeah, we make it sound like it's, it's, it's a shitty lesser form of media. But I believe that a CD, you know, a DVD is what many of us watch these movies on after VHSs. Oh, do we want to talk about VHS tapes? The originals that came out on VHS tapes? Oh, Yeah, I mean, not yeah, even in a theater. You're watching the it on cuts. the flimsy little video. It was like a sick CD-ROM, though. It was an awesome... I had this thing. I <laughs> had fuck this CD-ROM. You cannot so it's awesome. it now, <laughs> Yeah, but it's aw Stop. You can't denigrate it by saying, it's a CD-ROM, but it was awesome. <laughs> like, well, which one is it? It was yeah, a very good a bit of that. Just, oh. Yeah, bouncing back and forth. You'll be like, hey, look, all right, all you shut up. Your arguments are invalid because this is a CD-ROM. But it was good, though. It was good. No, I liked it. it was oh, yeah, good. it was great. It was great. But it's yeah, just a CD-ROM from Windows 95. It came Ugh. out in It came out last century, the CD-ROM. I mean, but it was so honestly, good and awesome, and I really loved it, and it was really great. It would honestly be like trying to win an argument about Force Awakens with an archive of the Star Wars website the week it came out that had information on it about a character or something. I, I it, like you can't argue that that isn't a valid source. Like, no, this is an, an official material as supplement for the movie. Everyone involved in the movie must have had well, at least taken a look at it and been like, yeah, that's OK. No way this kind of thought actually went into the decisions from Leslie Headland. She'd just be like, it's, she'd All probably right. say the same thing. She'd probably be like, what is CD-ROM? What, what is that? Yeah. LucasArts was getting into the interactive stuff. Yeah. Using the digital technologies, that they were always. Okay. A, oh my god! <laughs> so that's let that puts that to bed. That's charge no, number one. It doesn't. One. It doesn't okay. at all. But our guys have been around one. for like okay, seven right. years it's, at this point. Like, like, yeah, this is not a new point. company in 1999. In the same way that you can send a kid to bed at 7:30 p.m. and you're like, yeah, they're definitely falling asleep. Yeah, sure, they're definitely to bed. Yeah, you got it. They broke canon by him being alive in that era. We've just firmly established they did not break canon because it was they never broke, you, true. You, 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 but, uh, I can't. <laughs> this is such a stupid argument. Like, I'm actually kind of floored by... This is like some weird meta, like, oh, yeah, I'm immersed in the film industry, like, kind of weird argument that just doesn't address people going, it's weird he's there. Like, he... I wanna... He was it's alive just for Yeah, like, that. tactically speaking, the, the decision to make this, like, a video, to be like, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to go and make all these slides and everything, and I'm going to do some quote-unquote investigation into the canon to show all those people who are upset about this canon break that it isn't actually. And they should, I don't know, maybe later in the video we'll get, he, he'll tell us what we should really be angry at, maybe, or what the real issues are. He hasn't actually said anything about what the real It'll issues are. I assume he did elsewhere, maybe, but. Even by the old Lucasfilm standards, which, I mean, sorry, wait, why even would that, by, why that, was, even, that was all he was using. That was entirely based on the old standard. You have no idea if they're even using the same, this standard. Was, was the implication yeah, of by, the statement by the there that by the new standard it would be dog hat because fuck it? Like, uh, it, who cares anyway? Well, I mean... I guess it's just so, as much yeah. canon as it isn't. Like, is yeah. that where we're That's going? That's how I feel now? about Disney. They don't like 
anything they don't give a shit anything older than a couple of years maybe even half a year is like it's out whatever yeah <laughs> they don't give a shit does it make sense does it, it wouldn't does it surprise me anything i don't know does it have gay people in it all right yeah let's do it, it it wouldn't surprise me if in like five years from now someone at lucasfilm suggests a boba fett tv show and then they're all like wait i think i think we did that it's like we, well, we, we, we did that? It was like, yeah, we did that. It no, was no, terrible. No, no, we did yeah, the we did Mandalorian. That. That was literally we That's did. not Boba Fett. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, fine. Well, I want to do one on Ahsoka. I think she's a really interesting character. And, uh... They'll be like, they'll say that, oh, no. They'll, they'll say that we're mistaken. They'll say, oh, Boba Fett. No, he was in the Mandalorian show. And they'll forget that the Boba Fett had his own show, of which Mandalorian was like in. They, they mixed him up. They give enough time. Crossed. Someone there will suggest a solo Han Solo solo movie. <laughs> everyone, like, still everyone loves him. We could, and they're like, we could cast. Uh, I don't know, all the Reich, He could be <laughs> like, he kind of looks like. We'll, we'll go with that. Well, it's wouldn't like it be YTT, so cool? Natalie Portman thing again. It's like, have you ever been in Star Wars? <laughs> I was in the first one. It's fine. No, it was that was only like C tier <laughs> canon. It doesn't matter. Oh shit! Yeah, that was Taika Waititi, right? He was Taika like, Waititi. "We can get, yeah. I can get you in a Star Wars movie." And she's like, I, <laughs> "I was kind of in three of them, man." Gosh, his birth year was never canon, never was. I mean, it I mean, was. It was. It was. Pretty, it, was it was basically by, canon. By his own argument, it was canon. Yeah, so his own I don't argument. Know why he's saying it's not? Yeah, I mean, when when Lucas Arts is releasing the official Insider's Guide, like I don't know, man. Well, like don't and, you see that carries it. a lot of fucking funny, weight to it? There are things. This is funny, right? The Throne trilogy was uh, was mentioned. The the campaign in Star Wars Battlefront Two. I would argue Star Wars Bounty Hunter. The you know the, from my own experience, but everyone can mention their own respective ones. There are things that you enjoy, you watch or read or whatever, and you're like, man. I really hope this stays canon, and then one day Disney fucking fart all over it, and you're like, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> so let's go on to charge number two. All and right. John, they broke canon yeah. by mm -hmm. Kayadi Mundi in The Phantom Menace saying, the Sith have been extinct for a millennia, and yet in The Acolyte, he's talking about Sith. The Sith have been extinct for millennia, says Kayadi Mundi in The Phantom Menace. Which is a movie. But here's the thing. Uh oh, what is it? What's the thing? They never broke canon. Oh. Why? Fuck you. Because in the acolyte. Because Sith is never mentioned. <laughs> they don't say the word. They don't say the word. Okay. So it yeah. doesn't count. I'm telling this you, is not. Be the order there are of Ren or some shit, and like, that's how they explain it. There might be some ways to get around this that make sense, but it's it's one of those like you created a problem that you're gonna have to escape, which you can. But it's like, well, why'd you do it? Will but, whatever. The We're there. So, we're the there, funniest there now, I guess. The but... funniest fix will be in the last episode of Acolyte, Caddy Buddy, after they've defeated Smiler Red and established him as a Sith, they say, you know, if ever this comes up again, we should probably maintain in fact, if this comes up in a meeting, I'm gonna pretend like this never happened, but we'll talk right after that I pretend that it didn't happen about how it did happen. Yeah. Yoda's not gonna have any idea that I'm lying because he's, <laughs> he's an idiot. Look, from, the line. All I'm saying is that from an outside, if, if outside observers were to maybe sit in on our meetings, yes, uh, we would want to present to them the idea that none of this could have ever possibly or did actually. Yeah, let's ever say, for happen. example, if Liam Neeson were to come up to us and talk about some creepy, s scary man that he fought dressed in black with a red lightsaber in the force, we should probably tell him say, nah, that's not a real name. That's not. That's not. Yeah, he made up a Star Wars name, Liam Neeson. Yeah, so Liam silly. Neeson is like, yeah, it's a Star Wars name. It's not a real name. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, yeah, the, uh, they're all agreeing, like, yeah, we should pretend it's not real and it's never happened before, and then we'll discuss it seriously the you know when he's gone just on the considered a possibility point i'm pretty sure the line in the acolyte episode four is could it be a splinter order or something worse well something worse dark side force user red lightsaber wears black and a helmet what could something <laughs> worse possibly be I... assuming that we know that in the in the next hundred years nothing worse than the sith happens it's, it's, That's why uh, in the Phantom Menace, when they were on Tatooine, in Darth Maul, this this robed, hooded figure with horns attacked Qui Gon Jinn. They said, "Oh my God, is that a Sith?" Qui Gon Jinn said, "No, it wasn't a Sith. No, this was a lesbian Force witch from a faraway planet who tracked us down to Tatooine and got a lightsaber and wants to make sure that." I don't know. So, this kid is killed or whatever. This is the thing. If they run with Acolyte 
or whatever the fuck word you want to describe this thing that is not Sith, then that should have been brought up, brought up by Kiari Mundi in the Jedi Council. However, and uh, Gary just mentioned this in chat, if they go the direction they could, the, they do the cover-up, the classification, yeah. the blah blah blah, where they like, we cannot mention this for political reasons, whatever the fuck they say. Uh, it still doesn't work. Um, you, you, this, this is too important not to mention as history for breaking down what the fuck is happening at the time. It would be declassified, especially being fucking hundred years old. You'd be like, okay. Um, besides, why would it not get back to the High Council ever? I still haven't gotten over that in this fucking show. Well, there's murders. It's there's insane. A blood trail. Two, You've got a well, three Jedi masters poison. are dead now, and they're in different locations. There are different groups yeah. surrounding them. And they're all like mysteriously they, a part of remember, one mission that happened a while ago that the, the investigation involves the sister of the, the only survivor of that very mission. You know what I mean? It's like anyone with yeah, this salt looking bodies. at this would be like, what the fuck's going on? And, and they were, um, in, the ep in episode four, they specifically had that Wookiee Jedi there at that post or outpost for whatever reason. And they kept up with that one individual in the forest. Don't you think that these other groups of Jedi... The ones where uh, the the first lady was killed in the first episode, where Trinity was killed, where Torben was killed, all of the Jedi surrounding those groups. Like, obviously, it's going to get out if they're well, keeping if you, tabs on individuals like the Wookiee. If you remember, Rags, I think you, you made the point. They've updated the information for the characters on who May is, but they've not updated the motivation to stay quiet. Because the original motivation. Exactly was that she's an ex-Jedi who's gone crazy, which looks bad for us, which isn't very good on its own anyway, but whatever. That reason can't be used anymore. She's not an ex-Jedi. She's crazy. Yep. If anything, she should be overjoyed, lady. tactically speaking. They're like, yeah. yes, she wasn't one of ours. In fact, it's someone fucking evil who was raised by the Sith. This is a reason for us to get more power and respect and authority, because look what happens when Force users run amok and they're not properly trained. They turn evil well, and um, cringe. To be straightforward about it, because someone just mentioned it as well, they die, any of those three, or all three, and then Yoda goes, ouchie, I, uh, that, that hurts, that's sad, I feel no, death on the... No, he's in episode nine. What? <laughs> he's he's going to be in the, uh, the unreleased episode, they'll address where he is and what he's doing. No, ouchie, he's in episode nine. Oh my god, Darth Uchi, yeah, I Ooh. remember. Um, <laughs> no! <laughs> Call back! So, uh, well, uh, yeah, so Yoda would have those feelings, and they'd be like, so what's going on? And then he, the the basic sort of questioning as to what the fuck is happening would get him all the information he needs. Oh. Well, but... Uh, Someone in chat... Go ahead. Someone in chat brings up a good point. That wasn't a Wookiee, Rags. He looked like one and spoke like one, but never actually said, I'm a Wookiee. Ah. So it's very true. It's not actually canon that that's a Wookiee. I see. So there you go. And so, uh, yeah... I actually want them to get silly with this to the point where the High Council are brought in, but that everyone in the Jedi Order agree to cover this up. Every person. They even get the this Senate to cover it up. From... Everyone agrees. They, everyone agrees to <laughs> never mention this whole thing happened. They go to Dexter's Jetster's <laughs> diner, and they get him in on it too. It's like, now if anyone ever comes here asking about Kamino Saber darts or whatever goofy <laughs> stuff that you know about, you gotta make sure that you don't tell anybody. It's like, oh, okay, but you gotta buy twenty servings of hash browns, or, or I'll, keep <laughs> I'll keep your secret. I'll keep your secret. I won't tell anyone about the totally not Sith that went and murdered all those people. This is what I mean. Why? Why bother with this? What's this stupid video? Why do you just admit it? It's stupid, and it's not gonna make sense. Even if they tried, they wanted to have their Sith. They want to have Smiler Red waving his red lightsaber around. That's what they wanted. Because ooh, red. Look, it's red. It's red and glowing. And I, I think like Star Wars. Had this existed one to one as a problem, but the show itself had amazing character writing that we were all fully invested in, including that of uh, Smiler Renz, we might be sitting here saying, "Yes, this is a problem," and hopefully they address it properly. We wouldn't need to be saying, "Guys, it's not canon." Like, that's what we do. We whine. Is never mentioned. Or even ever considered a possibility. In Fuck that off. Not, never I mean, considered not, a possibility. It's, it's, it's absolutely got to be considered a possibility. If it's not, it's, and that's a problem with this show. Oh my God, yeah, it should be very very possibility. Red lightsaber. 
Just like Darth Maul had a big red lightsaber, which was what they needed to instantly conclude that the Sith were back. <laughs> no, no, so you missed the part. The idea that it's not when yeah. Darth Maul jumped to attack Qui Gon, he said, "I am a Sith." And, uh, I am a Sith. I'm a Sith. I have a accreditation. Yeah, and he put down yeah, a sign this, that said, "I am a Sith." Too. I have a degree. In order for the argument to stand, he has to essentially make the case that the acolyte is is terribly written to the core, and it doesn't even solve anything. Because it's like, don't impugn the Phantom Menace with the taint of the Acolyte and all of its problems. Phantom Menace has got problems all of its own. Oh, yes. I think, isn't it still canonically true as well that to get a red lightsaber, you, you basically are going to have to be a Sith because like, the way the red lightsaber is produced it's is like, there's edgy, a process called yeah. bleeding or something, isn't it? Like you pour all of your uh, negative emotions into yeah. it. And it's like, now that might be shit, but I think it's still canon. <laughs> and if it is canon, then there's only one way it could possibly that's go. Well, that's no, what Star Wars well, is. It, it might it, be it, shit, but it is canon. Thing, <laughs> you need to confirm whether or not it was in a film, a book, yeah, or a TV or show. Or CD-ROM. Yeah. 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 Or a CD-ROM from 1999. Yeah, especially because those that, that shit's worthless. Um, yeah, this year I started high that was the year of if, lies. This is the thing, though. It doesn't actually account for it. if if it were a dark side thing, and that the Sith are just one of many dark side orders, and that one of them is the Glugs or something, and that would be brought up. It would have to be mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be like the Sith haven't been seen for a thousand millennia, and then Yoda's like, "What the Glurbs? What are, the Glurbs? What about them? <laughs> Were they it's extinct? Like, oh, yeah, or no?" Up, and, um, <laughs> uh, like, is, is Yoda Romanian? What the fuck is that voice? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Wikipedia might have some more updating to do because I did just look this up and under the heading Sith lightsaber, it describes the process by which the red lightsaber is made. So, um, it, it kind of is. Oh, it's is it like Sith only? There's no interpretation. It's, it's, yeah, in the construction of a Sith lightsaber, individuals partook in a process known as bleeding, etc. Well, what yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't understand is it's actually a really dark orange lightsaber. That's true. Oh, mm. it's very different. In that yep. scene. Oh, by the way, someone, the um, yep. so, so, uh, someone posted this in the Discord. I guess it's on the, uh, the back for the info of the CD ROM. Is uh, that it's got exclusive interviews with George Lucas? Yeah, well, yeah. it's st even if thing. George Lucas says something on a CD Rob from nineteen ninety nine, it doesn't count. What if it was? What if you went to the movie theater and it plays the movie, and then afterwards they say, <laughs> "Stick around for an exclusive interview with George Lucas." What if and you, it's like a ten minute long interview? What if you watch the movie on a CD Rob? <laughs> what happened? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. lots of people did. That's I how, mean, that's it's how you pirated movies. It, fucking, thing, it just breaks canon entirely. You'll never know the last time you burn a CD. Or even ever considered a possibility. In that scene, in the Acolyte that... By the way, if it's never considered a possibility, then that means the Jedi are profoundly retarded. Yes, and wow. This is like, it's 1943, and one of your Navy ships was destroyed. And it's like the Allies would never consider as a possibility that it was the Germans. Well, and also just what a miss on the part of a significant portion of the audience, huh? They're all mistaken as to the the nature of the situation. That's crazy. Well, yeah, they. It's it's like a bell. It's like the you know it's the Sith. You know, oh, I heard Sith. It's got to be a Sith now. The, that's why I say we talk about this all the time when we watch shows that have no confidence whatsoever in the audience. Mm. Everything has to be spelled out explicitly. It's trained in the minds of people this idea of if a word isn't explicitly stated, then it just it can't, it can't be the case, right? Because they would have said it if it was the case. Kayati Mundi is in that you can see in this picture. In that discussion, those Jedi standing around concluded that whoever is training May must either A, be from a splinter order of the Jedi, or B, She's being trained by a Jedi. Here's, here's, a, here's a big old if question, you, though. Well, what are they going to think now after they've met Smilo Ren? We're obviously talking about Smilo Ren, Ren, not Ren, uh, May. Yeah. What are they also, also, He is missing out the bit where they explicitly say, or something worse, so like he's, he's not yeah. quoting that directly. That's true. Actually, the or an actual Jedi is the tacked-on thing that Greenbean comes on with right at the end, which isn't supported by any of the preceding evidence because she is also retarded. So it's Unless, it could easily be a Sith. This is why, by the way, a lot of people believe that Smilo is just going to kill everyone in that forest, because otherwise, because how do you swear away that yeah. they met a Force user with a red lightsaber and didn't conclude that he was a Sith? 
Which is why it'll be funny if he does kill everyone. It will be funny. <laughs> how they... How yeah. they... Ooh, do you think the next episode will start off where they're all dead except for Soul? Oh my god! Well, no, they promised their big fight, right? So... I, we yeah, need, but that could uh, just be Soul The big fight him. could just be Soul and... Oh, uh, yeah. true, true, yeah. They might... They might be like, you know oh, what? Fuck it. Rags, it all of them... suggest that. The, the idea that they'll kill... Because it's very real. They'll kill, this like, is, listen, young Ted Jedi this is off screen. T-level <laughs> canon. <laughs> yeah. They're about to make it T-level canon, Mauler, that in between the episodes, they... <laughs> all the Jedi got fucking killed, and you're not getting Yeah, like, sad music it. is playing yeah. that we fade in and it's just loads of corpses that have got lightsaber strikes on them and you hear Ryan maybe yeah. say, you hear a scream and then it, it shows the the... soul on the floor like out of breath and he gets up and pulls up his lightsaber it's like everyone's dead it's like yeah i could totally fucking yeah but they smilo do that. ren is standing there not huffing at all yeah he's fine he's so cool so oh yeah cool. he's yeah. so cool and very good and then he, at he fighting says, you want to know how i got these scars all right and, and then and then, and then he's about to do the killing it. blow on soul and then uh and then osha's like no may no may comes out and blocks it with her lightsaber that's right oh i guess because so. she's a both changed, of them she's a changed woman she's different now she's going and on her then arc yes may you know, may is gonna get like struck down maybe and Osha has to pick. No, no, no. May has to die. To oh, that's what's gonna happen in the next episode. Here, I'm calling it. Okay, this is T level canon, um, or it's gonna be, is that May sacrifices herself here in this forest next episode because Smilo Ren wants to kill Osha in front of May, but May's gonna be like, no, -uh. you know what, I'm gonna Rag? save her. That's a prediction. I think that is absolutely not going to happen. Yeah, no, they're I think right. Oh. Until the finale, absolutely. Yeah, May and Osha, oh, okay. they're the main, okay. they're making it to the finale, because the finale, the show's going to be yeah. all about them. That's why I think Soul is much more likely to die even in the next episode than they are. Possibly. The other Jedi with him were referred to as red shirts in the script oh, yeah. process. So, like, lots of them are going to yeah. die. Although, I think the trailer footage has... What's her name? The green one with the light whip on the on the same planet they're on. I think oh, that was right. So okay. like, I don't know if we'll be leaving Dude, there immediately. For all we know, this is the finale. You know what I mean? Like it's it's four episodes and it's just yeah. on this fucking planet. Half an hour each or twenty, oh, 20 minutes. minutes each. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Go back and watch the scene. In those Jedi's minds, Sith is not a possibility. Because no, they know that there's ridiculous. no ridiculous. That's that. stupid. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, then the then the then Jedi they, they are stupid. They haven't been doing their history homework. And then his response would be, "Yeah, and I said this show sucks, but still, Kiati Mundi, that's not canon. His age. Be they like, see, okay. they see a black robed what? guy what? with a red lightsaber instantly jump to Sith. Mm -hmm. And yet here, hmm. Well, and remember, Soul would have seen what he looks like through May's head. He couldn't see his identity, right? Like, because he... I'm, I'm assuming that's how that fucking works. I don't know. Have we got proof that you can see imagery, or is it just knowledge? But then again, how can you know what he doesn't look like? You know what I mean? Is that something mm -hmm. you feel? How does that work? I, this is what I mean. They made how it do you know fucking what complicated. Like? Don't, don't yeah. trust your eyes. They'll, they'll, they'll lie right, to you. Right. They'll lie to you. But 99.99% of the times, it's pretty trustworthy what you see. Like, surely, because now I'm thinking, like, surely Soul would have read in her head, the man has a lightsaber, it's red, he wears all black. Like, these would be things that she's come to understand and know that make up Smiler Ren, whether or not he visualizes it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, he would have pulled that so from pull her, that but image he didn't to have that to give to the Jedi, I guess, for some reason. Yeah. because. I, I, I think the show's because, really is, bad. Is it because whatever, whatever Soul gets from his Jedi powers is uh, sea level canon? Is, is that how that works? He pulled a different canon out of her mind because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't explicitly stated in the movies. It's not technically. What, what, what is said is G level canon. What is thought is uh, T level. And then what is pulled out of thoughts is C level. We have V, can v canon for verbal canon. Then mm. we have M canon for memory canon. Um. And, and and why not? Why not? So they conclude in that meeting that either a splinter order might be training her. Or oh, like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? That could be it. The splinter order? I got it. A splinter, because... Or a Jedi might be training her. That is what they conclude. So this...
crying about they broke Kanan because in Phantom Menace he's holy crap. Oh, why are you doing this? Crying. Like <laughs> yeah, you're you are the most animated and emotional about this that I've holy seen shit. actually. Most people are just like disappointed slash annoyed. It's well, they're funny like about mild it. Mild frustration. I feel like most I people mean, are like, funny about it. The, 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 uh, I think you're pre yeah, you're pri right. Like, oh, of course they did. Of course they they put Kiati Mundi in a story where he wasn't even alive yet. Of course, this is Disney to a T. Well, canon. I mean, like, who? I don't understand who he's appealing to. Is it like the, the if you're a Star Wars fan, you shouldn't care about this because fuck Star Wars? Like, he's the same people they appeal to when they talk about oh, people don't like the protagonist because she's black, or oh, people don't like Finn because he's black, or oh, people hate women. It it's the same. Shit. It's those How same people. The thing is, I don't know a lot about John Campia. I just know that he's cringe. <laughs> that's that's about it. I mean, so far, that's this is all I know about him is that he's pretty cringe. It's also it's just, if you ask any individual person who has complained about the Kiadi Mundi thing, like, do you have any other complaints about Episode Four? They'll probably hmm. say, "Fuck yeah, it's awful that's what all I was the saying. way through." There's probably uh, a list like, of a hundred things, and they plucked this one and been like, "Why are you focusing like, on well, this?" Because this yeah. is the only thing that I think he thinks he can defend and sound like he actually believes it. But the same I thing happened in episode one as well. It's like all those people who were saying, oh, the, you say it's a shit show, but the only thing you have to complain about is a campfire in space. It's like, that's, that is not the only thing I have to no, complain no, about no, in no, episode one, actually. Things. No. Why? What is the end game? What's the, what's the end goal here? Why this? Um, why make such a big deal out about uh, of this element? What's the point in defending the show in this manner by trying to discredit this pretty obvious you know, fuck up. I'm trying to wonder what's his, what's the angle here? I, I think he began this video saying he doesn't like the show because he wants to maintain some of his critical integrity. But he also needed to be defending something really, really hard because he he's an access media guy, you know? He goes yeah. to premieres. I don't know. I think if that were the case, then he wouldn't be criticizing it that much at all it might just be like a case of like group signaling and distancing yourself from like okay i have to admit this is really bad but lots of people that my fans don't like also think it's really bad so oh I'm yeah gonna, it's like, and, I don't like, like but i'm not like them yeah i'm not like those biggest i like i, I like hate the them. show for legitimate critical reasons not because i'm a terrible person or a whiny baby they hate the show because they're racist so the bin why why is kayati moody lying he's not how do you in know acolyte, he's not lying? Kai Adi Mundi and all those other Jedi still believe that the Sith are extinct. So he's already written off a reason for his number two explanation. They 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 aren't lying about it. Very curious how this video is going to hold up once the next four episodes are out. <laughs> I have a feeling that he's going to get undermined by a uh, T cannon. Probably. Actually, probably. Their conclusion that must be another Jedi training her. That is what they conclude. Therefore... So the Jedi are profoundly stupid. Gotcha. So yeah, they don't even entertain like, the I mean, possibility. That's assuming that all of these Jedi Masters just have read nothing about the past several thousand years of their the history of their own order and the major wars they participated in. That would be like people in the military today having no idea who like the axis of evil was. What is like, Well, I mean, you know, they, I kind of heard a little about them, but... It's kind of worse, there, right? There's because no there's only that... a specific set of people that can even do the things that she can do, and she hates, explicitly hates Jedi. It's like, hmm. Mm. Do you have anybody who kind of matches that in history at all? And it's like, nope. It must be a Jedi that's Aesthetically that and thematically, hmm, oh well. I would check the, the Jedi archives for it, but like, you know, nah. that's that's just CD-ROMs. So it's, <laughs> it's, fucking... like, it's a bunch of CD-ROMs. It's C canon, who the library. fuck is? Crying about they broke canon because of his whole thing about the Sith being gone for millennia. Well, the record they break canon constantly, all the time, in yeah, loads of ways. Yeah. Like this, this is isn't... just another example. This is the latest in a long line of breaches of continuity. Mm hmm. Is completely like we were talking about her switch in um in motivation. That was essentially a canon break, a canon that was fucking five Fair minutes sense. ago. Yeah. The problem is, that, again, he probably thinks of canon in a very, like, meta sense, rather than, well, canon and continuity is the same thing. Like, he probably views it through the lens of essentially the idea of corporate, like, what a corporation approves yeah. of, right? The, the, I don't, I, I just definitely get that sense.
which is really unfortunate because if you develop more of, I guess, a um, organic view of what canon is, then you're probably not going to run into these sorts of errors. Continuity is canon. Like, the story making sense is canon, if you want to use that term. Wrong! It's just dead wrong! You have not, you Charge have number. really, <laughs> no. yeah. you have done a terrible job. Um, Your information, kind of yeah, the information you've presented, John Campia Show, to support your argument seems to imply that your argument is literally not possible. Well, I mean, to summarize his arguments, the argument is, so number one, you're wrong about the age-breaking canon because I have ordained that this, uh, this piece of material that even I say is canon, it's not canon. And then number two is, well, no, it, it's it's not a, a, a breach in continuity, the Sith have been extinct for, you know, a millennia, because he was too stupid to realize that this might be a Sith. That Those are his arguments. Yep. Like, lol, nah, it's not canon, and, well, he's an idiot. Well, it reminds me of uh, <laughs> Luke is completely out of character. This is insane. It bre breaks all of canon. You go, he's old. Like, what, what, what the yeah, fuck? We don't know what happened to him in the last thing. <laughs> He's years. old. Shut up. Got you. Maybe he did decide he doesn't care about his sister or his best friend or their nephew. The, his nephew. Like, what have they done to Indiana Jones? Well, he's old. Well, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> Son died. You know? Old. Old does stuff to you. Number one, that they broke canon by his age being there. His age was never a part of actual canon. Are you changing the word? Legitimate canon, actual canon, he's real he's canon, like, true canon. Does, he, he's being slippery because it's canon. It is. It was material that was released by Lucasfilm. Now listen. It's, God. Now listen. You don't even really... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. You don't even... Because generally, I think the average person when they're watching Star Wars would assume, unless you indicate otherwise, I assume that... You know, whatever alien is generally going to be aging on a time scale that's comparable to a human being. You know, it's kind of like Yoda's noteworthy because he lives for a really long time. No Whereas the average person you'd be expecting is like, whoa. Well, I mean, presumably they're not living for more than a hundred years. Typically, that would be an assumption. That's not as you know concrete as what actually existed, which is definitively this is how old he was. You know, it's fun but to the point where to the point where Yoda's very long age or very expensive age is like one of the most noteworthy elements about exactly. him because it is such a deviation from the norm exactly let's say um with the main movies having come out some guy makes a game where the age of fucking yaddle is established that little goober yoda girl yoda from uh, in phantom menace and go the, the the game is like really well liked and then another game comes out, and they've got profiles on Jedi's, and uh, Top Trump's come out, book comes out here and there, and they're all basically, for whatever reason, there's an opportunity to label Yaddle's age. And so they do, and they're like, well, the game says that, that's good enough, game says that. And then one day, someone just comes along and says, I'm making a story where Yaddle's going to be a billion years old. Done. And, and all those pieces of continuity, it's just like, thanks, man. We all copied from the guy who you've said just gets completely overwritten randomly on, on whatever you decide to do. This is what I mean. If you have no other choice, if you cannot, like, you cannot have the payoff of Vader being Luke's father without having to uh, sort out things you're going to have interrupted here and there, right? And they, they did their best to sort of uh, seal it right in. This Kiati Mundi one is not necessary. And it just shows a sense of, I don't give a fuck. I'll do whatever I want. It's like, Okay. Yeah, it's very dismissive of established, you know, what it what seems to be very quite firmly not ex I mean basically explicit because of the the scene ram and the everything but like, you know as close to explicit as you can get. There's no harm in being like, oh, that's been established in something else and other things are using it. All right, I'll try and make it work within my thing as well. Yeah, nice. show a little Go bit of Go back and watch my open mic from yesterday. If you want to look for some legitimate reasons to crap on episode four of the act. Oh, like, I, I love it. I, I love it. The open like, mic oh, from yesterday, can you know, look, all right. If you want the real arguments, come watch my shit. <laughs> <laughs> this video is terrible. <laughs> Why would I want to watch you again? <laughs> it's just <laughs> funny to me. Because, like, what are you, what are his arguments actually going to be? Do you, like, I, what, do, what do you think he would say about the reason why it sucked? Uh, probably nebulous allusions to how character motivations are not well established and that people don't behave all that intelligently. But I don't know. That's mm. the thing. I have no idea. I, I and I think... wonder how many other defenses of canon breaks he would make concerning all the other Disney stuff 
if if that stuff would get a pass or not if this apparently does um someone asked would we have the same problem if it were george behind all of this instead of disney and i think the answer for all of us is probably yes yes probably. yeah everyone yeah. Yeah. we uh, are we're pretty uh when the special editions came out well we did mention stuff. earlier george to us is not the be all and end all of star wars canon i can't uh he might have been at some point if he were more reliable but i don't think he is <laughs> so it's he is uh, not for me, it's not yeah, more it's not exactly so Tolkien, is it? with the state of Star Wars, and this applies to a couple of franchises. What's canon is in my head, you know, and I assume it's the same for all of you now. With Star Wars, it's too fucked up to be able to take the standard of. Um, you can't take it seriously. No. I think Kenobi was a breaking point for a lot of people. The sequel trilogy was a breaking point for a lot of people. Um, yeah, it's it's six movies and then some other stuff. Around, I'm happy to have Andor be canon. Uh, you know, probably some other stuff. I guess Rogue One's probably all right. I don't know. I can't yeah, really thought about it much. There's but... things to take and there's things to lose. Yeah, uh... some of the games and stuff, but yeah, which I not, absolutely uh, yeah. detested. I, I'll, I'll give you a full laundry list of true legitimate things to go cry about. <laughs> don't true start legitimate. complaining about things that aren't real. This is it's real. You've established you it's real. Into it. You've established. Yeah, yeah. yeah, your your evidence was basically that you can't have evidence. It's it's unreal to be like uh, he keeps flip flopping all over the fucking place. Don't start complaining about his age. Never can in the first place. Yes, it was. The you said it was. <sighs> yep. You yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Canon. Again, uh, just George, to remind everybody. Again, the summary it. of his argument is: lol, it's not canon. It, it but it is though. But it's not. <laughs> and they're dumb. The Kiari Mundi and the dumb, Jedi and you're dumb. stupid. He's also like he's also you're, giving. Yeah. Up He's given up the premise that there are tiers of canon as well. Like he, he's not even saying it's a lower tier of canon. He's saying it was never canon. Yeah, well, he's and not. Th that, that's what I find so weird about it is he laid out exactly how it is part of the canon, how there were rules for where it would fit into the canon, only to say that it it wasn't. Extinct. He never oh. said otherwise. So, yes, this whole gitamaru about people crying about. Gidamaru? Is that a term? Is that, is that an Gee, American Willikers. thing, Rax? Oh, uh, which he, term? I'm sorry. Are you trying to convey like a rigmarole or a, a... Gidamaru? A get? He already said yoink my yak or whatever it was earlier. <laughs> yank, <laughs> yuck, yuck on my your yum. Yum. Yeah, yuck, yuck on, on your yum. yums. Oh, yeah. I've never heard that before in my life. It's... I do not claim him to be one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this no. whole <laughs> about <laughs> Kiati Mundi, it's just ridiculous, okay? Kiati Mundi, my God, people, find some legitimate things to complain about because there are- What makes you think they're complaining only about this? Like, no, why this, why yeah, do you that, think that? This is a great, I, I, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a false dichotomy? What What is this where it's like, yes, this, the this, only uh, thing that anybody is saying about the acolyte is Kiati Mundi. That's no, Fringy, <laughs> Fringy this, is, this is just a lie. It's not complicated. It's this just is just a, a lie. lie. <laughs> we've come across these before. We know what this is. <laughs> we've seen we've seen one or two of these bad boys out in the wild. For a lot. And when you complain about this, Ooh, it was brown. The thing he sucked up was brown. Sucking on that brown. It was going to be green color. Maybe... the color of the uh, the cup, but I guess not. Yeah, is I think it's like the the light colored straw kind of made it it's seem that way. Concealing the truth of what's mm, actually yeah. contained inside. Maybe it's it's probably like coffee, I would imagine, because he's getting pretty animated this and very energetic nonsense. about this. This irrelevant nonsense like this that isn't even true. Well, I mean, you stop saying that. <laughs> yeah, you thought it is relevant. I, I, something can be wrong, but relevant. But relevant, I mean, exactly. Maybe when, I, uh, I almost feel like he's hoping people are tuning in and out of the video, and then just the the last thing they'll remember is it's not true. It was never canon. It wasn't canon. They're, this they're arguing CD over ROM nothing. that I mentioned and held up and that I told you that I owned. It isn't real. <laughs> it's not. It's real. not a thing. Andy it doesn't it exist. Too. He Do did. Think... He even gave a positive adjective for it. Do you think we're at the point where Disney get to write his memory? <laughs> like that's what was to what's canon. <laughs> it's like, you know, I used to remember holding this, but now I'm not so sure. It's become sea level now drink the brown goo and the legitimate criticisms about that terrible piece of television that was the acolyte episode four anyway yeah i don't get the angle i don't get his angle here i don't know why he did this 
I'm sure some of you guys will have some thoughts about that later in the show. Oh, if you yes, they did. Iron some thoughts. But what do you guys think? I mean, listen, you're maybe idiot. you're one of the people that actually enjoyed episode four of the Act Light. And if you do, I'm Nothing jealous. Do. I'm glad that you said you're earlier. jealous. Why would you be jealous of somebody who enjoyed the Act Light? Because he wants to be shit. able to say everything's good. But why would you this be jealous is, if your own brain convinced you that it It doesn't make sense, sucks. and it's all because of the stupid thing we talked about earlier, where being positive is positive, being negative is negative, and that's... So you just you yeah, got to find a way right. to be positive no matter what. I'm Normalized jealous. Normalize shitting on positive positivity, all yes. right? It's bad. Yes. It's yes. not good for you. It's not good for the world. It's not healthy. <sighs> And I'm not trying to undermine your enjoyment. I'm just letting you know I personally thought it was. But you're terrible. trying to ruin you'll, my negativity. Yeah, you'll never. They'll never say the reverse. <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin your critical thought. They'll never put it that way. Yeah. Well, you what just you just called a bunch of people dumb. You basically said if you think that there's a problem with Kiadi Mundi's obvious canonical lore break here, you're not a real fan of Star Wars. What, what if your hobby is knowing shit about Star Wars? What if that's the thing? Well, he that wouldn't you know what that's fun? like. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. He doesn't know what that's like. Who oh. would do that? And I talk about why I thought it was terrible, but this whole thing about Kayati Mundi is such a great example of people who want to hate something, and instead of spending the time to actually find the legitimate thing, spending the time. They want oh to yeah. Hate yeah, 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 yeah. You, you spent the time. I, John you, you the time. I, you I, know exactly. It's this is exactly what it would be. He watched it, and then he like talked about it, and that was it. It was just whatever was on the top of his head was probably the extent to which he was critical about the show. In all likelihood, it's almost like he's implying, like, yeah, I said, you know, I sat down and I. I figured out my criticisms of the Acolyte. Did you, though? I, I looked up my I, old CD-ROM that convinced. I had on the shelf beside me and found out that it's, it was the first ever source of Kai... God. Ah, Kiati Mundi's age. Ran out of air. It happens. Oh, they I'm make shit up to complain about that isn't even real. So... The CD-ROM isn't Stop real. saying it isn't of real. Our imagination. <laughs> It's it didn't actually exist. He's, you know what he's doing? It's a shared hallucination. He's, he's character assassinating John Campia from the canon of five seconds ago, where he said it was real in canon, but it got decanonized by it's superior a, canon. Yeah, it's not a contradiction because it's uh, the tears of canon, right? He's uh, well, I think it's John not Campia. real. Remember, he keeps well, saying it's not canon. It isn't canon. Not that it's a lower tier of canon, but that it's not canon. That not was, even that's no longer canon. Like he might be making the argument that because it's not canon anymore, yeah, I, I thought he made that argument. That this is like canon. legends or something. This is legends, so doesn't matter. That we had no information for real. Well, this but is he's not like there was never canon though. It's like why are you going yeah. that extra mile well, in your language? Not only say that it was never canon, but to lay out exactly where it would fit in the broad categorization of canon that it is. With it being it's, fairly high up, it's not even all that low on the list. And, and none of it even just addresses the fundamental of why did they pick Kiati Mundi then? Why'd they do it? Why didn't they just true. go for someone else then? He's a guy you recognize. And wouldn't it be funny if we had the one who looks like well, a I think uh, Ryan was saying that Plo Koon would Your have dick been... dick looks like um, that? Like, he would have been... Uh, <laughs> Almost precisely. Yours doesn't? No. Oh, wow. I think Ryan, Ryan was saying that Plo Koon would have been, uh, he would have been alive around that time, right? So they could have picked him. Yeah. Yeah, but Obviously, they don't know that. Know. They wouldn't have yeah. checked. Plo Koon uh, isn't course, as I, visually that's distinguishable. Is, uh, that's going to be striking well, people as well. Jedi power is, battles, though. Like, it's something that would strike anyway. people as well, is yeah, this is your job. Should. You got paid a lot of money to write this. Um, and you didn't, and, and you know, like, people who are just fans of the series don't get paid to be invested in it, they knew these things just off the top of their head or with research. How come fans know? Yeah, fans know this for free, fans and the know people that you, you pay that's to part of do what's this annoying shit. About it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that whole situation. Whatever you guys think, jump comment down in below. the comment section below. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a dirty dog. <laughs> And let us know <laughs> your course. comments thoughts. below. Hey guys, thanks you so sir. much for watching this. Oh my god, you're Maybe different. Fat episode. Has he, oh, look, he's got the Celestial there from Eternals. Oh, he does. And oh. he has the Mandalorian helmet. And he and has Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. And Deadpool. Look at those, wow, look at all those those Disney. Dead. Look at all that Disney. Look at all those Disney. Look at those uh, dead Funko Pop eyes. Oh, uh, look at them. <laughs> They're like Staring black circles of... The, the, well, there are they're just they're just black circles. 
We don't even have black circles. One of us does. This video, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, yes. and subscribe to our channel. Like it. And don't and forget, comment. we have a daily podcast called the John Campy wow. Show podcast available on oh Apple goodness. Podcasts, Spotify, yeah. or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today what? so it'll be YouTube? there. YouTube is it. on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Back I down. Hope so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's is funny. It? Your favorite podcasting app is on YouTube. The <laughs> no. John uh, Campy Show. John Campia is here. I assume he has videos, right? Podcasts? I mean, I'm assuming he goes live on YouTube as opposed to like Twitch or Kick or something, right? Well, he says, well, it does. Well, he, it better well, be, it on could be on his own YouTube, website. Because that's my, that's my app well, of choice. Well, oh, yeah, you have maybe. to like pay to subscribe to. Yeah. He said, but. It could be Nebula. Live. Oh, po he has a oh, podcast yeah. tab. Oh, God, Open mic, right? That's what he said. Open mic. Oh yeah, one we day ago. Nebula episode. If we, if it were nebula. <laughs> oh, okay. Episode, well, hey, yeah, it's on your favorite podcasting platform. Okay, there you go. It yeah, is. yeah, it is here on it your is. Favorite podcast platform of choice. It, I do yeah. love the whole like, yeah, comment. Let me know what you think. It's like it's not because I want to get boosted in the algorithm. I'm an I really, fan. I genuinely <laughs> want to know your thoughts on Keanu Mundi, even though I've already concluded that you must be wrong. Like and that, there's no possible argument against your position. But anyway, let me know. Yeah, which, uh, well, that, that brings us to the end of, of, of this uh, particular EFAB. What, a, what an epic journey through, what was that? The Acolyte, uh, and an Acolyte assorted topics. Um, it's clearly uh, doing yes, wonderfully. Right. It's only half out. It's awful. As uh, you can see, the discourse is very healthy. Everybody's yes. really jazzed about it. You can imagine that... Uh, <laughs> There's nothing but excitement for the remaining four episodes. It is, it is actually kind of surprising. Before the show came out, I uh, I had the impression that it was going to be a low impact uh, Star Wars project. That it was going to be the kind of one that nobody cared about. Um, it turns out the opposite is the case. <laughs> it's being talked about a lot, which is surprising, but, but also not when you think about it. Yeah, I think so. There's, there's so much cultural conversation happening that's so much more interesting than the story of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose that's a fascinating thing about it is what have been particularly prominent parts of the discussion about it? Kiati Mundi, fire and space. Like, <laughs> these sorts of things have been very prominent parts of the discussion of the Acolyte. Well, don't forget episode very two's obsession with uh, Torbid's age <laughs> being 20 Oh, to 50. yeah, that's right. Oh, God. And, and so little of it is people talking about how they find Osha and May's story really captivating. How they're brilliantly Why? characterized. A lot less of that. Mm. <laughs> they're seems. sisters. They have a secret handshake. They got separated because one told the other she was going to kill her, and then presumably died. Oh, and then of course Why everybody, uh, everybody arguing about whether or not Episode Three destroyed the Force as well. Thank gosh. It was that too. That's how I separated. It's, it's really, that. it's a show that promotes <laughs> you know interesting conversations about Star Wars. I, okay. <laughs> I think it less destroys the force because I, I'm kind of okay with a, a different culture and a different part of the galaxy having, you know, a different word for the force or something. I think that's more or less fine. The I think it would be is, bizarre if there wasn't. Mm. Yeah. It, I think the issue that that sequence had was just, it was the virgin birth stuff, right? Because well, it's now, just like, now I don't believe that, that's how they would do it. I, they just, it doesn't seem to fit or make much sense. And, and they squander what little potential you could have had there. And this whole, yeah, this, this virgin birth element of another life created through the Force. It's like, why, why are we doing this? Why, Except why do we have to constantly time. shit over the specialness of, you know, what, what Anakin was and, and, and the originals and what got us here? How come we couldn't do something interesting? But uh, it, it, I don't, don't mean to butt in and steal time, but I, I've got to go at 6 o'clock. It is 5.56. I do have to head out. I'm sorry, I got something. I wow, you're going to miss the part where people um, say what they're doing. I can't believe it. I'm, you know, what I'll do is I will watch this back later on, as I often do. And, and you will I'll, nod. You will nod your head. You'll and go, nod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. As I do <laughs> you when will nod you know, I do it live, I'll just do it with a delay. Like this cat. But, oh, it. Let me, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's kind of how my face is. Yeah, that's not, that's not an inaccurate. You, know, you gotta show people the cat. You gotta show them. Right. I think All right, I will. I will, 
I gotta go. I will catch y'all later. So catch you. Uh, I will talk to y'all later. And goodbye, everybody. Uh, Thanks for being here. Goodbye. Bye, Rags. Look at that! Look at that cat. It's great. (laughs) Well then, uh, Mark the Cyborg. What are you up to? Where can people find your brand new off the the press's uh, cooked content? Well, I'm at my channel. It's Mark the Cyborg. I'm, I'm probably going to do some streaming tonight. I uh, don't know if I'm going to do Elden Ring or just chill out and play some uh, Unicorn Overlord, which uh, is a pretty fun game, got to say. Very beautiful art. But uh, yeah, and I'm working on a video on the, the Hades games, Hades 1 and 2. We... All righty. And uh, Metals Forge with, with you every Sunday? Is that the time slot for you guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow uh, we're going to be talking about the Steam Next Fest demos that we played, as well as some House of the Dragon. It's going to be sort of a variety episode tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern on Metal Commander's channel. Awesome. Mr. Little Platoon, who, thank you very much for coming on a very short notice. Appreciate it. Um, I think there's yeah, something very... Oh, well, both of you, cool. <laughs> I was going to say, Little Platoon was a little shorter in terms of oh, notice. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was going to say, there's something very simple I had imagined for you to mention that you've been getting up to recently, considering the stream we just did. Yeah, I'm coming off of a, a nice few hours talking about the Acolyte. I'm getting back to um, talking more about the Acolyte, so... I have to go finish a script on episode four. It's the most boring fucking thing in the world. Um, <laughs> yay. Yay. <laughs> That's yay, indeed. It. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, one through three already available for your viewing pleasure. Thank you both, gentlemen, for um, helping us dismantle and understand how stupid we were for thinking about Kiadi Mundi at all. <laughs> um, myself and Mr. Fringle are providing Acolyte episodes as soon as we can each week. Uh, the right. reason episode three came out super fast is because we had three people working on it and no sleep. Um, that is not normal, nor will it ever be. All right, you get them as fast as we can make them. All right, we'll, 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 we're, we're doing our best. Um, mm-hmm. I think the coming Wednesday shall be a night's tale. Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else of of particular note. More things on the way. Lots of stuff happening. Lots of work being done. You know yes. the deal. Um, I'm half considering streaming, like, a new run of Elden Ring with the DLC, but I'm also half considering Nox, how long that would take, and how little time I don't, I don't have a lot of time for gaming streams, even though I'd like to. First boss I thought was pretty tough, gotta say. Well, I mean, I wouldn't mind just doing the game again to get familiar with it, because it's been a while. Uh, You know, I I thought it was going to take me more time than it did. I guess, like, I don't know, it's just one of those things that, like, you're... You, did you mess do, up um, on controls for a Souls game you've not played in a while, and then you play it for 10 minutes, and you're like, okay, I did remember. You, did you, you know, like, with games that you've gotten killed the final boss, can they access DLC, or is it too late at that point? So I believe that at least my save file had me right outside of, like, Radagon's chamber at the Erd Tree, so I, I was stuck with my Chaos-branded character, so I've got those glowing red eyes, because that was the, the last playthrough. Uh-huh. But I don't know, I might have actually just went into my save file, copied one before the last thing, and then no, known that I would finish it, get the achievement, and then I w- would want to still be in that playthrough, as opposed to having to go through all the new game plus four again, but... uh or three, three. I'm on two. That might be why it's hard, but man, that uh, I fought this lion thing and it, it was it was tough. I beat it, but it was not easy. All right, fair enough. Well, that's it from us tonight. I will re-edit it so that the other stream gets attached to this one. Don't you fellas worry, and it'll be back up tomorrow, I would assume. But for now, we shall bid you all a good night. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See you later, everybody. Bye. Have a good day. No Bye-bye. puppies today. <laughs>